Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shadowverse Buddy System All-Stars 2022. I'm your host, Joe Zija. I've been with Shadowverse since 2016 as the voice of your Dragoncraft leader, Rowan Drag Spear, as well as a bunch, bunch of other cards. With me today is the illustrious man in the kitchen, Wonder Chef. Wonder Chef, thanks for being here today. How are you? I am so happy to be back on the buddy system. So glad just in general, the buddy system is back. Uh, it's been almost a year since the last one. And we have, of course, some very special guests today as our players. But, you know, we can talk about them later because we also have, of course, my good friends that I'm so used to now here on the buddy system and other things. Noir and Zones. Hey, welcome, yeah. you guys. Yeah, really glad to be here once again, casting with Zones and working with Chef and Joe once again. Uh, yeah, we, really, were, we were the dynamic team in 2020. Yeah, I, yeah we were a team uh, back in All-Stars 2020, um, casted again in 2021, an excellent event back then as well. My favorite part about these events is always the interactions between all the different players and all the different coaches coming from all these different backgrounds, and it's always so much fun, so really looking forward to the rest of today. Yeah, absolutely. And Noir uh, took the words out of my mouth. Uh, but, you know, it's always fun to also see how the players interact during our exciting mini games. And, you know, I kind of want to see what the team has cooked up this time. Uh, no pun intended, Chef. <laughs> I'll make all the Chef puns you want. That's what we're here for today. Today is going to be a pun filled day. What are you guys most excited about? Uh, I mean, I am really excited to see, we've kind of revamped from last time, the whole like create a your own leader with the voice actors type thing, uh, which I'm sure you you might have a little bit of experience, you know, voicing a leader. I don't know why. I'm not going to judge from, anybody but... too harshly. You know, this will be, be fine. We're all, we're all friends here. Uh, that, that's what I'm looking forward to, though. But of course, you know, there's a little bit of a game called Shadowverse that I'm really excited to see, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Pictionary as well. We saw some really, you know, interesting depictions uh, last year, and uh, that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Looking to, forward to see some crazy stuff this time around. Yeah, I watched the Pictionary game from last year, and I was just kind of astounded at, first of all, some people's MS Paint skills are, are off the charts. <laughs> yeah, astounded in a good way. Yeah, in a good way. Yeah. And the second thing is, it's like the, 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 the coaches had this giant catalog of cards in their heads where they're like oh yeah those two sticks in a line that's definitely wandering chef again no pun intended <laughs> so yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a, a great great day let's take a look at what we've got going on today with our formats and rules seeing what the buddy system is all about we've got players paired with a pro as their coach uh we've got it's, it's kind of a matchup between an inexperienced player and a very very experienced player talking them through two best of three matches. In the middle of the day, we're gonna have one crazy team match where it's all the coaches versus all the uh, players. We'll talk about that more in a second. Each game one's gonna award 10 points. In these best of three matches, there are varying levels of coach influence allowed. In game one, you have no coaching restrictions. The coaches can talk to the players at any time. They can say anything they want. And in games two and three, coaches are muted on even turns. So that's where you get to see how well they've coached prior to the tournament because the players are going to be on their own on the even turns. Chef, tell us about this team match that's coming up. Oh, this is new and this is wild. It's going to be teams of all four of our players against all four of our coaches. So uh, those who were once allies are now enemies and they will be using very special decks. And I'm really excited for people to see those decks because, you know, we got to even the playing field. This is four pros versus four people who are maybe a little bit less experienced with the game. So, you know, something's got to even it up. So stay tuned and you will see exactly what that is. Uh, but then, of course, we have what we were talking about earlier, the mini games, which are always so fun. We've got two different events for mini games. Number one, Shadowverse Pictionary, where players will have to draw a card that only they can see and their coaches, the pro player, will have to guess which card it is. Uh, some players were surprisingly good at that last time. Uh, and then design a Shadowverse card, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, each of our four main players is going to have to design themselves as a card and then maybe create their own voice lines, I guess is that's way to put it. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to see that one. And you will be getting points for those mini games as well. You cannot just be good at Shadowverse to win today. You also have to be very creative and clever, which I am not, but these four definitely are. Awesome, awesome. Well, that takes care of everything. Let's meet our players and teams for the day. Starting in the top left corner, we have Rosamie, Lovelock, and KSLVD, 
forming Team Brosimi, a fantastic, fantastic name. On the bottom of them, they have Ike Evelyn and Momo Jelly together forming Ike and the Jiggly Peach. Talk us through the right side. Oh, and then we've got Millie Parfait and Pot Washer. Pot Washer, of course, used to be on this show. Miss it very much, but it's for Team Millie is smart. Pot Washer said so, and none of us ever questioned Pot Washer. And on the bottom right, with uh, I think you mentioned earlier, they're the, the they're ready to go with those looks. You know, Shu Yamino and Frost making up Frosted Flames, and yeah, they are looking ready to win for sure. They are looking fierce. I get the feeling this is not just a game for the bottom right team here. One hundred percent. Not just a game. Let's take a look at each one of these uh, individually here. Yeah, so our first team, Rosami, is going to have Rosami, Lovelock, and KSLVD. I'm going to talk a little bit less about, of course, our Ninja Sanji EN VTubers today because we're going to have them on the show very, very soon. I'll let them intro themselves. But just a little bit of information about KSLVD. Uh, a very strong player for quite a while. Took a little bit of a break from the game, but is back. And I'm very, very glad to see him. A uh, previous coach on the buddy system, which uh, I, I forgot about this, but apparently the team uh, or the coach of the team that took you and Noir out is that correct? I don't know why you had to bring that up. I mean, like, it's been two years, man. We can we can it's just let, let bygones. I'm not mad. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. It's okay. Just blame your coach. Just blame your coach. Bad coach. <laughs> yeah, that's it. it was noir. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we can see that clearly KSLVD was a good coach, right? And so we're glad to have him back for sure, of course, coaching Rosemi. And then we also have, I mean, honestly, actually, every single coach today uh, is from a previous buddy system. So they're all professional players, if any of you aren't familiar with them. Potwasher, we're going to talk about Potwasher, who's teaming up with Millie Parfait. And Potwasher got second place at Worlds. And for any of you who aren't familiar, uh, the World Grand Prix for Shadowverse is a gigantic tournament with one million dollars on the line it's not that, that's not an exaggeration pot watcher second place in the world so uh, a very very strong player very well known for a very long time and of course like i said can be teaming up with millie parfait who uh, I, I actually got to see she uh, she streamed a little bit last night uh, congratulations on a uh, 300k but uh said like i don't know why i'm here everybody else is smart but hey if you're if you're teamed up with pot washer and you you beat pot washer in training that makes you the best in the world right i think that's how it works beat second and best in the world you're the best. But then we move on to Ike and the Jiggly Peach, where we have Ike Eveland teaming up with Momo Jelly, our only other VTuber here as far as the coaches go. But Momo Jelly is so well known for a very long time in the Shadowverse scene, uh, not only as a player, but also co-leads a team, Dawnbreakers, also has casted, you know, the official uh, Shadowverse Open Esports for Shadowverse, has been a coach on here before, was here for our last buddy system. Uh, Momo Jelly really just kind of does at all i think in the shadowverse scene and we're very of course glad to have her back but we'll see how uh her and ike do against the rest of the competition uh like i said i'm glad that we don't have any new coaches today because everybody knows how to you know work with their teammates and then our last team is going to be Frosted Flames, which, of course, with the, the more serious, ready-to-go faces, is going to be Shu Yamino teaming up with Frost. And again, for anybody who isn't familiar with Frost, uh, our former Buddy System champion, which is a very, very hard thing to do. Uh, I'm sure everybody in here knows that, as everybody's been a part of it. But a professional Shadowverse player has just done a lot of uh, really good placements in the past, I guess. That's really the only way to put it. Uh, Frost is... Very, very well known. I mean, really, realistically, pretty much all of these players have been very well known for mm -hmm. a long time in the Shadowverse uh, scene. So all of our VTubers today are in very good hands. Yeah, Frost and I have a bit of a buddy system rivalry uh, in our matchup, so uh, <laughs> glad I'm not facing him. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, you don't have to worry about that today because the, all these teams are just going to be playing against each other. Of course, we're going to start off with our first two normal matches of the day. Then we're going to move on to the Shadowverse Pictionary and then the Exhibition Team Match. After that, we're going to go to the Design a Shadowverse card and then our final two serious matches of the day to see who our winners are. And uh, are there any matches that any of you are a little bit more excited for? I know I'm... Uh, of course, excited a little bit more to see like the Luxium, the two from Luxium play against each other, which I believe is going to be our fifth match of the day. But uh, is there anything else, like even maybe just like matchups from the coaches that any of you are excited to see? 
I mean, I really want to see how this shakes out in a team match. I'm, I'm very excited about that. I got a little bit of a sneak peek at the decks that were going on there, and I'm just, you know, you, 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 uh, not to make a too hard of a pun, but you play the hand that you're dealt, you know, and you really, in this case, are going to have to play the hand that you're dealt, and we'll see how that shakes out midday. That is going to be very entertaining. I, I can't wait to see how they uh, make mountains out of molehills, both of them. It's going to be, it's going to be a great match. Uh, from a from a gameplay pers perspective, uh, Sword and Buff Dragon can be a pretty interesting matchup, especially mm -hmm. with the uh, coaching restriction. Because Buff Dragon is a deck which is pretty straight, has a reputation for being straightforward. But like a lot of the complex decisions that do come up in that deck come up on even number turns, like whether or not you ramp on turn two, how to sequence your draws and buffs on like key Evo turns, and then usually if you Evo once, you have um, you, you can have a Rowan uh, plus you know a two drop setup, which is pretty important. Um, but then uh, whether or not you can play like a Draca to clear a board can be interacted with by an Erica setup on the other team. So I want to see some of this back and forth there. That can be really, really crazy. Yeah, that's going to yeah. be really exciting. I I'm excited to see that. I play a lot of Buff Dragon myself, and uh, it it's always a challenge up against Rally Sword. So it's, uh, if they get to move fast, you're, you're toast. For yeah, sure. Personally, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing some FG Shadow because I know one team did bring that deck and mm -hmm. uh, Joe already knows that deck is really, really <laughs> tough. I think even for pro players, it's a very, very challenging deck. Very few people can play it, you know, at a high level. So to bring it to a tournament like this where the coaches are not always going to be there for game two and game three, it's brave to say the least. But if you can pull it off, it's really, really strong, and it's going to be really impressive for that Absolutely. team. Absolutely, yeah. That takes some serious guts. Noir came on my stream just to try to help uh, untangle <laughs> that deck for me, and I still am not totally sure I fully understand it. I'm not much of a Shadowcraft player myself, but even at the end, it's just, there's so many paths to a win condition, and there's so many branching paths for each one of them. It's just a lot of options. So, okay, guys, we are going to give away a ton of card packs today. All you have to do is make a tweet featuring the hashtag SV Buddy System. That's all you gotta do for your chance to appear on stream and receive a digital card pack. Your tweet's also gonna get entered to win a physical set of promo cards, which is really cool. If you've never seen the Shadowverse physical cards, they are really, really neat. I mean, the art in Shadowverse is just one of the highlights of the game in general. You put it on a physical thing, you dress it up with some cool sheens and stuff like that, it looks fantastic. We have our first winner of the day already ready for that full set of physical promo cards. Congratulations, Regan! You just won one set of Shadowverse promo cards. Congratulations, that is super, super cool. I wish I had a pack of them myself. That happens all day. So that's for our questions and answers. That's for everything. Anything you want to tweet about the tournament, about Shadowverse, about the weather, I guess, if you don't have anything else going on, you just hashtag SV Buddy System and that enters you for a chance to win. Yeah, and I really want to, you know, uh, like remind everybody, uh, you know, you just said it, but the Q&A, there is going to be a QA, and a of course, with the four Nijisanji ENV tubers. So if you have any questions for them, use that hashtag SVBuddySystem because you're going to have uh, no better chance than right now to get a question in. And I would, I would suggest saving some questions for later because we always have some fun things and people like to be like, oh, why would you do that? <laughs> or, what were you thinking? And there's some pretty good questions from later on. But yeah. uh, I'm excited for that. That's going to be a little bit later on in the show, of course. So we're going to have uh, matches before that. Yeah, we got a full pack day ahead. And yeah, I'm excited to just the, the question, what were you thinking? Would be a, a great question to ask <laughs> after, later in the day, because I'm sure it's going to be full of chaos and fun. Um, okay, so that leaves our players. Are we ready to meet our players? Are you guys ready to meet our players? I'm scared. I'm terrified. I'm a little, I'm a little intimidated, to be very, very <laughs> honest with you. Uh, they all have... You know, like the their their art's fantastic, their uh, personalities are fantastic, and I'm excited to say hi. So let's say hi. Hey everyone, welcome to Hello. the buddy system. Glad to have you here. Hello. Hi. Look at these shiny Hello. faces. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you guys excited to play some Shadowverse today? Have some fun. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm a bit nervous. Cool. Especially excited. <laughs> Me too. I'm actually super nervous. <laughs> I'm especially excited you can't, to see. You can't be nervous. You get an opportunity to beat up all your friends, and that's always the best thing about video games. I'm pretty sure, at least. You know, you can oh, see a of a bunch of people. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not for your friend buddies. It's beating yeah. your buddies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just making sure 
you're not on the receiving end of that. And it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that's absolutely. What that's always the trick, right? <laughs> so I, so I, I don't know about Chef. This is my first time meeting all of you. Rosamie, it's really nice to meet you. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about yourself. Uh, nice to meet you. So my name is Rosamie Lovelock. I'm from TG Sanji Ian's Second Wave Obsidia. Nice to meet you all. Um, I do play a little bit of card games, but as for Shadowverse, um, my knowledge is kind of like... Mm, eh, you know? <laughs> so I am a bit nervous for today, but it's gonna be really fun and I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Yeah, that's okay. You got a great coach to help you through. So there's no reason to be nervous. You're in, you're in good hands, as, all are, as are all of you for today. Absolutely. Uh, Millie, hi. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Nice to meet hi. you. Nice to meet Tell you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What are you excited about? Oh, hello, everyone. My name is Millie Parfait from Niji Sanji's third... Uh, third wave, Etheria. <laughs> um, I think I'm a third wave. Uh, yeah, I'm a third wave. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I'm excited uh, playing Shadow <laughs> That's all. You are a gem, Millie. You never change. I, I'm not the smartest one in the crowd here. I don't know why they put me. I think I'm, I'm the comedic relief, so... Um. Well, according to Potwasher, I think you'd have something to say about that. Uh, I think you are indeed smart, and I think Potwasher said so. Yeah, he, to he totally said that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, he said it. He <laughs> Okay. You know, we, we got accepted yeah. for truth. We got accepted for yep. truth. Yeah, it's. Yep. I mean, it's. Paul Washer said so. So I, I take everything he uh -huh. said as gospel. Ike, nice to meet you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Welcome to Shadowverse Buddy System. Thank you very much. It's nice to meet you too. Uh, hi, I'm Mike Evelyn, I'm a virtual novelist from Niji Sanji En and part of the group Alexium, which is uh, Niji Sanji En's fourth wave. And I believe that's the case because I am too bad at counting. <laughs> I've never played any sort of like uh, digital card game in any way, shape, or form. So this is kind of uncharted territory for me. But I'm all about sharing new experiences with the world. So I'm very excited to what's gonna play out here today. How do you feel like your uh, coach prepared you? You said you didn't have a lot of experience beforehand, but I'm assuming you guys have been working pretty hard before this. Oh, yes. They have been incredibly kind. They have been very understanding and accommodating. And I'm feeling I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Maybe not confident, but I'm feeling good. Optimistic. Fantastic. Good to hear. Shu, welcome to the buddy system. Tell us a little oh. bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Shu. I'm a sorcerer from the past. Um, I'm also in the same group as Ike, uh, the fourth wave Luxium. Um, and in terms of card games, um, on stream, I tend to make a lot of mistakes, and I'm sure my fans know that. <laughs> but hopefully today, uh, my coach is here to help me out and not make those same mistakes that I usually make. That's well. There's no. There's there's plenty of room for mistakes here. That's what we're here for. That's what the buddy <laughs> system is all about. So. I know your coach and you That's have true. been working hard at this, so uh, all, all mistakes are good mistakes. That's how we learn, right? I don't know. It's just got very Mr. Yeah. Rogersy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you all. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, nice thank you guys you. for coming by. Yeah. We're gonna let you get ready for the day because there's a lot of day ahead of us. So head off to your your green rooms, have, get some drink, some water, drink some coffee, and get psyched for some Shadowverse. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Oh, they're great. They're great. Uh, I'm so excited to see them all uh, all today. Like one of the one of the coolest things about this show is that we get to listen in to the t conversations between the coaches and the players, and then of course we get to see them do all the mini games. So we get to see a whole lot of our guests, and uh, yeah, these four are all super funny. I'm, I'm about it. Even before the show, they've all been really funny. Yeah, this is really cool. Like I said, it's it's my first time meeting all of them. Uh, and uh, this is uh, really cool. I'm excited to, as you said, basically just set a sort of eavesdrop on the, the conversations between any. I mean, Ike said he, he hadn't played Shadowverse hardly at all or card games hardly at all. So coming into it very green. Uh, but I know that the, the coaches are going to do a great job kind of getting them ready for today. Yeah, well, one of the coolest things I think about Buddy System for, and of course, you know, uh, welcome to any of you who haven't, you know, seen either Shadowverse before or Buddy System very much before. Uh, but this has been a show that's been running for a very long time. You know, we've had to, been able to do these like really cool, like yearly ones right now. Uh, but even before, the really coolest thing about this was seeing players who maybe weren't as used to Shadowverse and 
you, you'll, you'll see them make plays and you'll be like, hold on. That was so smart. Wait a minute. Are they geniuses? Why are they not playing Shadowverse like competitively? And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we, we see some people that we didn't expect to be suddenly like these like just ridiculous like goats of Shadowverse. And uh, th- those moments are always really, really good. I'm sure we'll see at least some of that today or we'll see some funny mistakes, which is just as good. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for both of it. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. Like you said, when the players actually come in with minimal experience and then make like surprisingly good plays like i've cast a buddy system in the past and i've seen a lot of matches where the player on their own on like a coach muted turn by the way make a really outstanding turn that is unconventional but also really effective like surprisingly effective so like she mentioned like he's gonna avoid trying to make mistakes but i've seen some you know extreme plays on the other side of the spectrum as well i've seen a lot of really good plays coming out from these players completely out of left field so i'm looking forward to that yeah, you mentioned unconventional. One of the, the cool things about having sort of new blood in, in any kind of uh, sport, art, whatever it is, is is they're not bound by what they've seen people do for the last so many years. You know, like you get involved in the meta and you're like, okay, you're supposed to play this like this, like right. this. And every once in a while, they just mindset. come up with something like, yeah, it's fresh. There's there's something totally new. Uh, you know, you can play you could play one card the way that nobody really ever thought you could play it and come up with some really innovative, neat, win cons or at the very least confuse the heck out of your opponent which is always good too (laughs) yeah yeah uh, especially with uh, with how this plays out. But you know what? Actually, why don't we see which cards they could potentially be playing in some funny moments because we actually I have see it. the first deck ready. And this is going to be Team Bro Zemi. Their deck name is going to be called Royal Flushed. Of course, that's for Zemi and KSLVD. And we're going to have our first Swordcraft deck of this match. And uh, we'll, we'll see the second one later. But tell me a little bit about this. Why don't we start with Noir? Yeah, so Coach KSLVD, I know he loves... The, that flushed emoji, so I, I can see where he's coming from with that one. Uh, this Rally Sword deck, it's a really straightforward, uh, board-based, aggressive deck um, with cards like Cat Admiral and Leod that just pile on a lot of direct damage. Um, it's just very normal uh, type of build for this deck. Nothing too out of left field here. Uh, just going to build up Rally just by playing a lot of followers, and then that translates into more powerful effects. So why don't we, uh, you know, kind of simplify this for players who maybe aren't as familiar with Shadowverse in particular. Um, first of all, would you consider this like more of like a, a fast deck or like a slow deck or kind of like the mid range? Oh yeah, so this is definitely like a fast deck. Um, that is how I would categorize it, I guess. But uh, it does have some mid range tendencies. You've got cards like Musketeers. You've got the Victorious Blader, which can sort of create the shield for you and your board. So the deck can play a slower game sometimes, but it is primarily a much faster deck. You can see the curve. There are lots of one, two and three drops. So they are looking for that early aggro curve. Yeah, the curve curve here, uh, I actually, I'm I'm curious. Now, Frenzied Core Master, you're you're looking to invoke it for the most part, right? Victorious Blader, you can use to summon, you can increase your rally count by two. Is there a a use case that you can use it at seven play points? Yeah, you're not really looking for that. mm Um, it is a bit situational, but as I mentioned earlier, it is uh, a way to get that shield. It reduces the damage that you and your board take by three. Right. So against multiple instances of damage, like for example, uh, against like Dragon, it's very useful, um, assuming they can't clear it. But of course, every deck in this tournament, as far as I'm aware, does have some way to deal with Victorious Blader. It's just going to be up to the players and the coaches to, to determine whether or not they'll have to Uh, really play around that is it can be a very very big wall to get over i think the best use case is actually in the mirror if you can invoke a core master on the same turn as you play your victorious blader that is uh takes a lot of resources for the opposing sword deck to clear Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, again, a question for, uh, you know, realistically, the the players who, again, are newer to Shadowverse. We're going to actually need to know this a lot for both of these decks. Uh, what is Rally exactly, if uh, maybe anybody could explain how that mechanic works? Actually, why don't we go to Zones this time? You didn't get to talk too much. Yeah, so Rally is just when a follower comes into play. So, you know, you play it from your hand, you make a token, or even in, not something Swordcraft can do, but Burial Rite, right? You put the follower to play and then it immediately hits the graveyard. Uh, So all of these things, anytime you have a follower hit play, that is Rally plus one. Um, But it has to be, so it counts the Rally count before that follower hits play when it's a fanfare. That that can come into play for cards like Erica 
Um, and so you, it, the way you sequence your followers for the deck becomes important to make sure you get the rally effects that you want. Right. So realistically, the whole goal of this deck is to play a lot of like quick creatures, uh, aggro a little bit, and then build up that rally count by playing a lot of, you know, multiple type creatures. And then eventually that rally count, uh, once you reach a certain rally count, you are going to get some extra abilities on the cards, and then you're going to get some really, really strong threats. But uh, the reason why I really wanted to go into that and the mechanic is because, of course, we have a very similar deck here from Ike and the Jiggly Peach. Their, their very long deck title is Pen Pen is Mightier Than the sword uh, in the description it said the pen may be mightier than the sword but what about a pen pen that must be twice as mighty and uh, do you think this deck is twice as mighty as the previous one we saw and what are the differences really uh let's, let's go zones again yeah so uh I've, there's some really interesting tech options in this version of the deck they've cut all the royal summons um which is a powerful card draw and tempo gaining tool uh but in return they've added albert who adds a lot of mid game Uh, burn potential, uh, just like straight up like seven points of storm damage um, by uh, getting his plus two and then it evolved. The monochrome endgame is also really strong um, for contesting the board. And the one of Golden Warrior is pretty interesting. I don't know if it'll get evolved, but finding one of your two spells, either Musketeer's Vow or monochrome endgame, can do a lot in terms of like just supporting your tempo plan. So you think the Golden definitely. Warrior is just set up to, to tutor the two spells? And that's, I mean, that's the purpose for the, having that in the deck? Yeah, because often the the Alexandrian light that it creates, uh, the Arthurian light, my bad, that it creates, um, can make a lot of damage, but the board slot that takes up actually often is weaker for your game plan. So evolving it is kind of like a very spicy play that we might see, but most of the time it's just a spell tutor. So if we're looking at this deck as something that's a little bit more strong mid-game, as and the previous deck is probably a little faster, what do you think this? Uh, what do you think the the pen pennies mightier than the sword can do to kind of mitigate that early game aggro from the other sword deck? I think the um, monochrome end game. You have an option to make uh, white chimera. Uh, so the chimera is a one for ward who has a uh, clash effect that makes a token every time uh, she clashes. Uh, which is to either attack into another follower or be attacked by a follower. And that mm. can uh, speed up their rally and also slow down the opposing deck's plan. So I think we're definitely going to be looking for Hamera to uh, gum up the works in favor of Ike and Momo Jelly. So would you say that one of these two decks has... Well, okay, actually, I want to talk about two things first. Would you say that one of these two, if played optimally, has the advantage? And then also, would... Uh, I really think this is a question for, for either of you casters here. Uh, would, would you say that either of these decks would be slightly easier or slightly more difficult to pilot uh, for these maybe not as experienced players? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, to start with your first question. So Ike and Momo Jelly's deck definitely going to be favored in the mirror. Um, the main reason why some players play EVO version of Rally Sword is for uh, that advantage in the mirror because you have Monochrome Endgame, it's so effective against the tokens that Aggro Rally is going to play. All right, looks like our players are ready for game one. Let's tune into the field and see where we're going on the mulligan. You see some pen pens drawn for both teams yeah, already. Pen pen already in the house. <laughs> a pen a on bump- each side. That's it. Um, and a bumpkin recruit. I... Yeah, oh, so man. good mold there from KLCVD and Rosemi. It's yeah, gonna get that one, two, three curve. And actually, Eveland and oh. Momo Jelly are gonna keep both the bumpkin as well as the, the pen pen. Maybe keeping the pen pen just for the, the aesthetic value there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but double bumpkin recruit is ridiculously strong. That is one of your best cards to play at any point in the game, really. Unless yeah, you and need to hit. Pat Admiral off the top as well. Really strong for going second with that incredible evil effect. It's going to summon two other followers, one of which has ward. And Cat Admiral is one of those cards that has that extra rally effect when you have rally seven. So a total of seven things have come into play. Then at the end of your turn, you're dealing two damage to the enemy leader. And of course, it's at the end of her turn, so that gets to count herself plus the tokens that she summoned, so it's very, very easy to get her effect active as early as turn four. Mm-hmm. All right, and good thing this is game one. There's actually a bit of decision for you for KSLVD and Rosami. The Great Shield and the Victorious Blader are both pretty good plays here. The Great Shield uh, can buff the Penguin uh, 
Guardian by one defense, so it survives a trade with the Bumpkin Recruit, and then uh, on the next turn, it will generate a token of its own. I think this would be a good time to crash it in, cash it in. Um, but the Victorious Blader is just a faster plan overall, so... Yeah, what it's actually here quite tomorrow? nice that we already have like a, like a relevant decision here. And I think mm -hmm. the biggest key for me is that do you want to hold on to this Victorious Blader to potentially play on turn 7 because uh, Rosemi are going first and in the Sword Mirror, that turn 7 Victorious Blader can be so annoying for the opponent to deal with, but Victory it's also just nice. much faster as in terms of Rally. And that's relevant because uh, the rest of their hand is relatively light on Rally. They have the Frenzy Core Master Accelerate there, but Liad and, G and Gino are just one follower. So I think I can respect this play just to get the Rally out. Steady. Yeah. We retreat. All right, and we have another set of decisions. There's so many cards lit up for Ike and Momo Deli's <laughs> turn. <laughs> Um, perhaps uh, they want to capitalize on the pen pen and make it actually as strong as possible. If that were the case, then it could be a bell ringer on turn two here. And that is yeah. what they're going to go with. A penguin guardian, when you have rally five, it becomes a 3-3 with ward and 3-3 for mm -hmm. one play point. That's just ex incredibly efficient. So that could be a part of their turn four swing there alongside the cat admiral. Absolutely. And I think we're going to get a... Pretty straightforward turn here. Another development from Rosemi and KSLVD. Um, let's get ready to listen in on Ike, Evelyn, and Momo Jelly's next turn because this, I don't think their next turn is very straightforward. Uh, and they want us prime their Evo. QB. Mm. I got a good old rally of two right now. Um. Uh oh. <laughs> probably just play like a uh, tempo Octress here. Um, yeah. Next turn's probably going to look like. I think Octress uh, Cat is pretty reasonable evolve. here. Certainly, you don't want to play the Cat um, Admiral just yet. And Pen and Bumpkin Recruit, probably. Right, they're at um, the Rally. And we don't want to throw out two. Erica here, I don't think. So. Yeah. Um. So just three three stacks <laughs> okay. um, with Octress. Right, so with Rally 2, the Penguin becomes strong next turn. The Octress, and just no to just... use points and... effectively for the turn, is pretty interesting. And no attack. Yeah, I think that's fine, because you would rather save the Pen Pen for the Cat Admiral turn, and then if you're not playing that, then you might as well just play uh, yeah. the Octress for three there. Um, it is slow the... Rally on this turn, but you are making up for it with like five followers yeah, in one turn spooky. on turn four, so that's perfectly okay. We did get okay. the Gilded Goblet um, yeah. from um, And then Octress, the Truth later, so we can even a, hold a on to that for a little bit because we have Erica in hand and that's obviously going to be a really strong burst combo where Erica just gains attack every time uh, something comes into play. And Quick Blader as a 1-1 Storm is like the perfect thing to combo with Erica for maximum burst. So definitely that's something sweet. to think about. And the tech card for Rosemi and uh, KSLVD here, um, and that Gino can actually cash in for a lot of damage here, but I think, and that's what they're gonna do, wow! Yeah, yeah so the tempo with, Gino is gonna come out interesting, so, yeah. you know, usually, um, the way you might use this card is like, for example, Quick Blade or Evo Face, and then you play Gino, it destroys a random Evolve follower, um, whether that's on uh your side or their side but this is an insane amount of damage because mm -hmm. they got to trade off their own follower actually gonna push face for six here that's actually a very big swing yeah and it's gonna make the cat admiral awkward because uh neither of these decks play um a another card that would easily trade into the Gino. so now cat admiral having to trade herself into Gino is just not the best value play that you would want to get to you putting so that prevents two damage also from Ike and the Jiggly Peach. That's right. I think like turn four going first, you know, is probably the most ideal time to play it in the mirror. You know, um, both sides are going to be playing out tokens in the early game. And a lot of times, especially going first, you have, I guess, uh, the final say in terms of how the trades are going to go. And so you can... Oh, wow. Okay. I'm actually going to... Evolve Hemera possibly into that Geno, I would assume, and then actually just gonna have it survive at one defense because she does buff herself yeah i wonder i mean so it's a good this... time to play the pen pen 
Yeah, Pen Pen is out here. So this does mean Cataclysm is not going to come out until next turn. And this also means that the enhanced chromatic endgame is off the table now. Uh, when you enhance it for six, it summons both Hemera and uh, the other queen, and they both automatically evolve. So that's going to be one power play that Ike and Momo Jelly do not have for now. As we see another Victorious Blader being drawn for Brozemi, and that one could potentially be saved for turn seven. Okay. Yeah. Um, let see i think th i want to see the liad played this turn but since ike and momo jelly are going to be on the rocks here uh, um for whatever play that rosemi and chaos we decide uh, let's see if we can get another listen in on them because they are not on even footing and this is going to be a tough situation to deal with um with this liad i think um the Team Brosme doesn't even have to make a trade here. They can Great Shield the Liad just for extra uh, value if they really want to. Yeah. Let, but yeah. This is definitely the best play. Oh. Yeah, and I guess gonna trade, trade into the Hemera. It just prevents some damage. Yeah. Yeah, you might as well. Um, <laughs> and this Liad is really, really effective. So when he's evolved, he's gonna deal three damage to all enemies at the start of Rosemi's next turn. Which means that 3-3 three, three Pen Pen is not going to do a whole lot. And, okay, that's a good play. So actually going to trade mm -hmm. off the 1-2, which means that these 1-1s one have no choice but to hit face. Let's get a Nilsson in right now on even Momo Jelly. An Icon Momo Jelly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, we could do the mirror thing and do the same thing, like Evolve Liad. Okay. Um... But I don't know if that's any good. Um, can you click on Cat Admiral? I don't think we're gonna play it. I just using her to check our rally is at seven. If we evil pen pen face, he survives the little kerfuffle mm. that Liad will do. But I don't think that's actually good for us. Um, because if they like top deck a Musketeer's vow, then they get to heal a lot. So I think we should play and evolve Liad. The day of reckoning is nigh. Move them later. And then uh, everything goes face. No one gets past me. Play the gilded goblet and target our face. Face, yeah. Um, and then. You can toss out Bumpkin Recruit. I'll be a royal knight someday. I won't give up. We won't give him an inch. <laughs> All right. Wow, that Eric off the top, very impressive. From yeah. both of these there. Um, <laughs> Both teams with Erica's now. Yeah. So Momo mentioned that uh, they did the mirror thing. We're playing Liad into the enemy Liad, which it, that is one thing that you can do in the mirror to sort of try to get that board control back. But this is a huge amount of damage. It's like the, the, the life differential between the two players right now is very significant because of that, you know. And uh, they're very close to lethal with this Erica. Um, I think it's they do one not... off, isn't it? Yeah, it's very... Yeah, I believe it is just one off. Um, yeah. That's terrifying to be... <laughs> like, if, like, if they had, like, two Erika's or something like that, that would just be game or an extra quick later. But their rally count for Erika's evolve effect is a little too far off. And the Great Shield uh, dude, the 1-1, one -one, actually kind of hurts their plays. And this is why board slots are such a premium for the Swordcraft deck. They can actually restrict your damage potential somewhat. I will not back down. But I think they're gonna yeah. kill Erica anyway, because the killer instinct is too strong to pass up. Let's get this party started. Oh, oh not actually gonna not gonna play the killer instinct. They're actually just gonna go with the type of team here. Interesting. Okay, and I'm actually gonna pre-evil this so this survives the Liad, and it does put the token in uh, or, or oh. rather it lowers the token to zero. 
Yeah. That's going to allow them to have the strongest possible turn 7 with the mm -hmm. Victorious Blader. So that's really what uh, I guess uh, KSLVD is planning for, is to have that big turn. Um, they have the opponent at 3 health, so as long as they can draw like anything within like the next couple of turns, they are in a very, very good spot. Isn't, is this lethal for Ike and Momo Jelly? Erica, Quick Blader, Wait, quick wait, later. they have double Quick Blader. Killer Instincts? Oh, yeah, wait a... so that's one, plus two, 3 four. to Erica. 5, 7 oh. plus 1 plus 1 is 9 plus 3 from the Leah. That's lethal, right? Oh my god. Can I see it? <laughs> I had to check it like a couple of times myself. Yeah, I, 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 I actually wasn't sure if there was... Um, it's so like it's so nerve wracking in these situations. You don't know if it's there or not. It's like <laughs> let's also remember that during these situations, you know, the coaches are talking through the player's uh, ear mm -hmm. to tell them what to do. So in tough yeah. situations like this, we got to play They're a lot. Which looks it. like they might they might see it. Oh, it looks like yeah, it. I think they see it. Oh man, Dude. what a turnaround! Oh, <laughs> not oh, playing the... the killer instincts. Oh, wait, I think this works too. Yeah. Yeah, th this definitely works. This is the lethal that I was thinking of okay. with the Cat Admiral. This is actually max damage. Oh, oh wow. the danger circle's closing in. Oh. I think they've got plenty of time here. Yeah, that, that, that circle's a bit of a debate. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> one right. over lethal. What a turnaround. Wow. Ike wow. and Momo Jelly bringing it back from an insanely strong turn for Geno, pushing six damage. Um, but turning it back around with the Leon Evo into that big Erica combo. We mentioned it earlier about how strong Quick Blader is as part of these Erica combos that it could come up later on. And it came up actually quite a bit sooner than we expected. The uh, Victory Blader not even coming into play at all. Yeah. What a turnaround. That was an incredible game one. I, I thought they were toast on turn four. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I thought they were toast as well, to be quite honest. And yeah. the really surprising thing for me was uh, the decision to not play out the killer instincts there. I'm not sure if they ran out of time or if like mm -hmm. there was some sort of uh, if something went wrong there. But um, allowing the Erica to come in first is definitely uh, a big issue there, because even if they sequence it differently and play out the quick blader first, that's still not going to be enough for lethal, I believe. So mm -hmm. that Killer Instincts basically was the game changer. Did uh, they have an opportunity for lethal on that turn and then didn't use it? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying no. that they had an opportunity to make sure they wouldn't die. Ah, understood. And, and then okay. if, as long as they didn't die and then they got to play Victorious Blader with the Invoke plus the zero cost Heroes of the Hunt that they had, uh, it would have been very, very tough. Now that, that went by pretty quickly. Run, run me through what... Uh... Uh, well, okay, it looks like we were getting close to the second match here, but real quick, tell me what the um, that uh, Killer Instinct does that would have helped. Like, it, so, it went by quick. Yeah, so it's a zero cost amulet, and then it destroys the first follower that the opponent plays. Which right. means that, okay. that if, if, if they okay. were to play Erica, it would have died. If they played Quick Leader, it would have died right away, and that would have kept the lead. Okay, well, let's see how it shakes out sword versus sword on game two. Oh my goodness, now we have two Wait, pens. I've seen this movie before, guys. Oh my it's god. It's pen, 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 pen. Pen, 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 pen. All right, and pen it seems cube. like... So, interesting thing right about, um, the reminder about the uh, second and third games of each match is that the coaches are muted on the even turn. So let's actually get a listen in right now on Rosemary and KSLVD because I, these planning turns tend to get pretty long. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay. uh, that is one way to plan, especially when you're yeah, just going to so play quick later, at least. Oh, there they are. Oh, sorry. So you won't be able to talk next turn, but on my turn you would? Is that what it is? Or... Yeah, I'll be, I'll be able to talk again. Oh, not next turn. Okay. Okay, so... that's fine. So basically next turn, I would probably just... I could play the Victorious later or talk it soon and get the... I think either, but you probably. I'm trying to think about what you're doing. So. Right.
That is what we like to see, though, from those listenings, right? We like to see the pre-planning. Uh, that's such a huge part of buddy system is on those turns where you don't have the, the help of your coach, the coach has to mm-hmm. say, like, okay, well, you know, like, list out all the potential situations that could arise and what the best options are, and that's just literally impossible. So, realistically, you just got to give them the best guidelines, and the best plays that we've seen have, like, learned why they should be making those plays. And, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it seemed like Wizemi had kind of a good idea already of, like, what potentially could be played on turn two and why. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I like how you mentioned the knowing the why behind these plays, because as you mentioned, it's so tough to like think of every single scenario. I've been a coach before and I've been in so many situations where like the opponent plays something and I'm like, oh my god, I didn't mention that card. It's like, is he going to make <laughs> yeah. the right decision now? Like, so it's really tough to know like where to draw the line between, okay, you should play this or most likely not play that, because if the opponent ends up doing something completely unexpected, then those rules that you established might fall through. So it's tough to draw that perfect line. Um, but that is the nice thing about a deck like Sword and Buff Dragon as well that we're going to see later on. Uh, these decks are relatively straightforward. They're just playing things on the board. And as long as you're playing something, more often than not, it's going to be some level of acceptable. So it's a big advantage for Buddy System. I, I really like this uh, choice to play the Penguin Guardian here at turn one. Um, while... It's tempting to try to save Penguin Guardian for uh, the Rally 5 effect that he has. Um, making sure that you can uh, deploy your play points eff- efficiently is a big deal. So I think uh, my speculation here is that uh, Momo Jelly is going over with Ike about uh, what to do on turn 2. Like the Great Shield is a good candidate um, because it's just a 2 play point 1 rally that you need to throw in somewhere. Um, and, you know, maybe if they draw other 2 drops, that's the uh, audible to consider. So now we can see Rosamie is on her own here and I think they were going over what two drop to play and I think they were going towards the Victorious Blader which makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense here Victory is yeah. all the nice. same play that they made in the previous game just getting that double Too rally slow. in as soon as possible pretty standard mm-hmm. stuff um, the interesting decision from Ike and Momojelly last turn was you know the quick blader versus the penguin right and it mm-hmm. seems like again they're prioritizing holding on to that quick blader for that potential burst they have Erica in hand again and oh. they worked last time so oh no a decision <laughs> a new decision. contender <laughs> a new, a new, shown up a new in challenger hand. appears guiding <laughs> Ranger Angel uh, and again um, the same play that they had the previous game but the great shield mm-hmm. is there as well um, so I think Ike was probably told that the Great Shield was the most likely candidate here. He is mm-hmm. going to go for that. Uh, it's going to play out the 1-2 once it uh, goes away, the amulet. So, going to contest the board at least a little bit. Yeah. I I don't dislike that because in some cases, when you play a Guiding Bell Ringer and then Octress copies her effects, uh, that can feel really tough to deal with. Um, I think even in the mirror, so... Yeah, especially uh, when the opponent's going first, right? Like, you play Bellring R2, and then for them, it's turn three. They can Octress that, and then Octress will basically copy the keywords of that follower. So then mm-hmm. Octress will gain, you know, the last words draw a card. And that's kind of an insane effect to have on a follower that has good stats already. Yeah, so and, and the just... ward, so you can't... Right. So all, all the little t- one ones below her are impossible to hit. Yeah. Alrighty. Frenzy Core Master, another callback to the previous game. Some very uh, nice mm-hmm. curves coming in for Bozemi here. Um, wonder if they're going to see the one of Gino come off the top again. That would be kind of crazy. Yeah, and let's get ready to listen in on Ike and Momo Jelly's turn three because turn four is a really critical turn for their deck, and there are so many possibilities for them to set up there. Yeah, while we're waiting for that turn, can you explain to the newer players why uh, turn four is such a big deal generally in Shadowverse, especially going second? (laughs) Yeah, so that's your first Evo turn, right? And then when you evolve, you're obviously getting the plus two, plus two, and then you can trade immediately with the follower. So that's a bit of a board swing in itself. It's good tempo to recoup from going second. And a lot of the cards do have an effect once they're evolved, Cat Admiral being one of the, uh, the big ones in this particular deck. And Guiding Bellringer also has one where she just gains a bunch of stats based on the amount of cards you have in your hand. She also draws another card when you evolve her, so quite a few options for turn four. So, I think we probably just do our own core master here. 
because it increases our rally count. Ours is not very high right now. Alright, so next work. turn is the Evo turn, and it's going to be kind of a weird one. Um, mm. If you draw Cat Admiral, then you do Cat Admiral Evo. Okay. Otherwise, if you draw like Taketsumi, you can do um, order. Yeah, if you draw Taketsumi, you can do Taketsumi Evo, use the spell to clear out something, and uh, then play Bell Ringer Angel because Taketsumi will make the spell cost zero. Hmm. Um, and if I draw Mondin? If you draw Liad, you wouldn't play it. You'd probably play um, either Monochrome White Queen Evo or Octress White Queen Evo and then trade with Quick Blader. The Octress White Queen? Octress Ore. Okay. Um, gonna be flexible depending on the situation. You know, one thing I really liked about that was Ike asking about what if I draw Liad. I, I, you know, I really like when players show that they understand some of the key cards in the deck, and that I think that shows it, right? Like, mm -hmm, right, and that is a very important question to ask specifically about no Liad because, uh, you know, the board is getting pretty big here for Brozemi, and so it is like a pretty tough decision to decide whether to play Liad into that because on one hand. You're kind of stifling the other player's development with you know you having an ambush follower and then their board being full but at the same time you would be taking a lot of damage right away and then if they have an erica which they did just draw that mm -hmm. could be a disaster so definitely <laughs> a, a good thing that momo was able to give some advice on that mm -hmm. oh, rally effect penguin guardian with a cat admiral behind my uh, goodness. I wonder if they're gonna trade here to protect the Cat Admiral, or if they're just gonna go full face. So the Cat Admiral is gonna be at exactly uh, 7 out of 7 here, so Rosemi actually making this play on her own here, counting to mm -hmm. 7 and getting that Cat Admiral active. Uh, this is actually not an easy choice either, deciding how to allocate these attacks. But it looks like she is just gonna send everything face, respectable. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's very, very reasonable. Oh, the Taketsumi top deck! Yeah, they oh, did talk know. about this. Um, this was, mm -hmm. I think, the first thing that, or the second thing after Cat and Roll that Momo mentioned. So she did say, you know, Evo it, get the zero cost token, and then clear something. And then that Pen Pen is a very that's right good. target for the Taketsumi. I can jam that right away. Gonna get the trade off onto the Cat and Roll as well. Plus the Guiding Bell Ringer Angel, so a decent yeah, evil turn here for sure. Really like the unevolved uh, Guiding Bell Ringer Angel. She has such a good speed bump in these situations. Absolutely, especially against these one twos that can pop her shield but don't uh, kill the body very effectively. Mm hmm. Ding dong! Ding dong! Ding dong! <laughs> You know, I still have the uh, that original like uh, Japanese bell ringer like voice line for my uh, my ringtone. Well, not the voice line. They released oh, the ringtone. Okay. I still have that. Ring on, oh, ring on, ring on, ring on. I thought you were to say that you have the uh, the actual alarm clock. All right, do you? I wish. I wish they had There's it on the FBO yeah. set, and I tried to yeah, steal it every single week. There is a ding dong alarm clock with like the original oh, okay. ding dong art. Steal yourself. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> right, trade over the two twos. And gonna haven't fun yet. Decide what he's oh, gonna do. Oh, a unique trade. Hmm. So, um, th this does mean that the Steel Clad Knight is gonna be able to kill off the Bell Ringer right away. Yeah. Or potentially push one more face damage. All right. With the country, with the Bumpkin Recruit, I want to listen in on Bros Brosami here. Because they their hand is developing, they have some options coming up. Let's get this party started. Bless your heart. Now this is what I call it. <laughs> All right. Come get some. And then the other dude. Yeah. Oh. Seems like they're a bit shy, uh, but they're going the over their trades. Right 
Or a bit flush, you could say. And then they threw it. Yeah. Okay. Having fun yet? Uh, yeah. So I think. Yet. Okay. There's, I think they're saving the token. Yeah, I've noticed that KSOVD is really valuing the token in the mirror here, which I think is it makes sense considering the really big board swings happen once mm -hmm. the core masters the free four four ward essentially starts invoking from your deck once you have rally ten, and then especially yeah. for a deck that has chromatic. Or monochrome end game, uh, that turn six swing can be almost insurmountable in the mirror unless you have something like that zero cost hero of the hunt. Yeah, what's kind of interesting is that they, because of the deck choices, these uh, there's no real punish for using your evil points a bit more aggressively in this matchup. Um, either of them are playing the cards that can show up and punish you for tax your evil point usage. Which means that they can like liberally just spend their evos and um, push for later tempo. I'm. What I also find interesting is the bumpkin recruit being held in hand, um, because it might be slightly more optimal to do that for trading purposes. But uh, seeing more cards going into uncoached turns is kind of like the concession I tend to make as a coach, and I think it's that difference in coaching style is showing. Just kind of cool. Yeah, and in general, it is just one play point to cash in on that one draw, which is nice to get in earlier than later, mm -hmm. if possible. Um, but on top of that, you then have like the information difference as you know a buddy, right? Where mm -hmm. you it's like you can immediately know at least what your next card is, and then have a little bit more to work with there in terms of coaching. Um, the Octus token going to come out to clear this board here for Ikemomo Jelly. Yeah, uh, they are down on health once again, but they are definitely ahead in terms of cards. Yeah, I think they. I think the emphasis might have been just trying to see some more cards for them. Yeah, right. Rosami on her own here for this turn six. Erica and Liot are two options here. Bumpkin recruit is there if she wants to get a trade. Um, not a super good trade into anything here, as it's just a one attack rush. Yeah. But you do get to cash it into at least see one more card. Um, Musketeer is like a potential five cost to draw off of that. Uh, mm -hmm. I really wonder what Chaos of ED mentioned with regards to Hero of the Hunt, because it's mm -hmm. kind of t attractive to use it here on the 5-3, but that means that the turn six is going to be extremely, extremely strong for Ike Mobile. Yeah. What's awkward about Erica here is all the uh, spells in Ike and Mamo Jelly's hand. Um, so we mentioned that Killer Instincts uh, will destroy the first follower play, but if the followers are tokens generated by spells, Killer Instincts will not trigger. And so... So that interaction is going to come into play right now as we do see the Killer Instincts coming across and Monochrome Endgame is going to line up pretty damn well into that. Absolutely. So Killer uh, Instinct's not going to trigger for Monochrome or Musketeers, correct? That's right. It's only when you play... Uh... Sorry? Yeah. yeah, so it only triggers when you play a follower like as a card from your hand. If you play a spell that generates a follower, mm -hmm. it does not trigger. This is an even turn, though, so remember, the coach is muted. This is a, a choice mm -hmm. that I cast to make. And this Mid is one block. of the first moments, I think, where we really get to see, like, okay, there's a really good answer here, but mm -hmm. will I get it? Oh, okay, interesting. Dropping the quick blade to just kind of get rid of it. What do y'all think about that? I, th I think it's, it's okay if he doesn't know the interaction because it's, like, the safe play because uh, the Athos uh, Aramis is so powerful here. That even if you make a little like you 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 use up a resource like like unwittingly, um, and I'm not even sure if that's suboptimal. But just cool. using the resource to guarantee this is huge mm -hmm. because they're going to heal for four. They're gonna gonna in, in. going to be in a really good spot. And clearing that killer instinct opens up the possibility of um, victorious blader next turn. So that's honestly like 
actually good, mm -hmm. especially if unintended. Like, that would just be serendipitously amazing. Yeah, I mean, you gotta get rid of it anyway, right? Eventually. It's not mm -hmm. like playing the tokens gets rid of the, uh, rid of the, the amulet. It just, uh, it just delays the inevitable. So, I mean, I feel like, to me, this looked like a really good usage of both, like, play points and just options in hand, right? Yeah, I agree. This is actually a really good turn. Um, getting rid of the, the amulet is important, especially if you are planning to use that victorious leader at all. Um, and speaking of which, uh, Rosemi is going to need something to clear out this board, and that Catamaran is not it. That's well, a pretty scary a board. Yeah, let's get a listen in on them right now to yeah. see what they make of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I won't give up. Oh. 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 I, think we, I think we have to, to play her, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Um, we played a copy of her earlier, right? From hand? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we have one remaining, and then that means we'll have two at the end of the turn, I think. No, this is... yeah, this is really or, or did we invoke two? But I think we're going to do that either way. So we can go ahead and play the Core Master. Um, and then let's see what it can be used. Hopefully it's the three strong use. Oh, nice! Okay. Huh. That's cool, because I think we can go ahead and just save the Hero of the Hunt now. Um... I don't know if evolving yeah, I, I don't, is like protecting I don't against think anything. Should. I don't think I don't it think does. Should. Yeah. Um, I think we can probably go ahead and save our evil point and the spell. Um, okay. Next turn, we probably will end up having to play Leod anyway. Um, if we do get Musketeer's Vow, we will be playing the Enhanced Rate probably. So, um, if we don't draw that. Then we might end up playing like Leod and the, or Octris first, and then drawing with Octris. Um, mm -hmm. We could also end up having use Erica to clear their board. Okay, okay. Oh, the turns are so short. <laughs> She's right above that one. The turns are very <laughs> short. short. Yeah. yeah. I mean, pro players struggle with the turn timer all the time. Let me tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a very common occurrence, especially mm. out here in the West. Um, but. Yeah, a oh, very, very mm. lucky top deck from Rosemi, but the chromatic. I really wanted to see the Victorious in. Blader there. Yeah, the Victorious and... Blader is a little too attractive, in my opinion, to not play on this turn, mm -hmm. but. Do not stay uh, this. Uh, you get two waifus instead of <laughs> one dude, so. I, that could be That could be the angle there. <laughs> that trade also. Hmm. Yeah, I was about to ask what you guys thought about that trade. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that trade. Because you lose, but, you um, lose the assault knight, correct? You do lose out on the assault. Yeah, yeah, good. Well, it's a, it's a steel yeah. clad. Well, it's the, the, the steel, steel clad. clad. Yeah, 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 but yeah, exactly. Um, but what this does do is that it leaves more HP on the hemera on the ward, and that is probably what they're going for with this play. Uh. It means that certain things would be a little bit more difficult for them. So, for example, if Rosemi has their own um, Victorious Blader that they top deck on this turn, because, um, or I guess they they could have played it last turn as well. Um, it would be a little bit more annoying against this allocation of stats compared to if they trade it with the Hamera. But either way, there is no Victorious Blader in hand. The Ding Dong here is not going to do a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they might have... They yeah, will just have to... a lot of lines, and this is an uncoached turn. This is so treacherous. It is really treacherous for sure. Um, but good thing they did save the Evo, so they have um, the potential to even, like, draw a card with the Bell Ringer if uh, Zemi wants to. Okay, going to play out the Hero of the Hunt immediately to buff... Uh, just herself there with the mm. minus uh, effect damage. Not a huge deal in this matchup anyway. Yeah. Adam will gonna come out. How is she going to deal with this 3-6? I... It's a really tough clear, and then even if you do, you have to leave the 5 one up. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that, that, that trade is paying off because the extra stat line on Himera is making her very hard to clear here. Yeah, so honestly, I think it was not a bad decision at all. Um, 
the Riyadh coming in, and then the Bell Ringer presumably to close out this turn, at least to ward up and hopefully not immediately die. Yeah. I mean, hitting twice into Hammer is also a bad, uh, an awkward decision to make. That's two Steel Clad Knights that get generated. I'm oh, and actually gonna pass to... there. Oh, all right. So, okay, so we have the Erika's. This is a muted turn for Ike. He's on his own here. Victorious Blader mm -hmm. still available and still pretty good on this turn. Yeah. I think the there's some tricky stuff you can do by trading the Ma Queen Magnus into the one one to clear up a board space, but. <laughs> that, that, that if might Mike be sees a little that, I will be super impressed. Yeah, um, that's Victorious a Blader. little too crazy. Victorious Blader is definitely just the best play here. You get, um, I, I believe, Hamera triggers on any attack, so you recover two play points off of Victorious Blader's double attacks, and then it also protects your board against the Liad effect damage with his onboard effect. So, I... I mean, well, she recovers play points when she attacks, right? Is it just she? I thought. Can we can we hover that? Like this... <laughs> you don't see this card very often. Let's see. All yeah, oh, strike cover one. Cover one, 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 one yeah, yeah, she, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, uh, that I, I'm like you know yeah. that that would be really broken. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Um, she she. <laughs> 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 okay. So okay, actually gonna oh, take a value trade there. Not gonna get uh, the most board space possible, but I think that's okay because they just need the one for the victorious player. I don't remember yeah, if they still have here. another. Yeah, yeah. this is. Do they still have another four master in the deck? I don't think so. Oh, but now, now. Oh, okay. Oh, but they can trade that in if they have time. Oh, now not anymore. But that's okay. <laughs> I don't know how you deal with this anyway. Leon yeah, just gets nullified nice here. Zero we, damage. So that's the power a... of Victory Blader in the matchup. Let's get a that's listen on KSOVD mm. and Rosemi right now. Talk it to me, I think, mm. and Cat Admiral. So. Um, just do the best we can this turn, and uh, we can start with Takatsumi. Let's get this party right. started. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So we don't really need to evolve him because we are gonna have play points for our entire hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So let's see. I think the only thing that we can really get rid of with the spell is Magnus. We really want to try to get rid of the um, Magnus is the one in the middle. My bad. Um, yeah. yeah, and then I don't think we can get a, get rid of uh, Victorious Blader, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. We'll just do the best we can. Let's try. Um, what if we trade our knight into the four seven for now? The knight into the four seven. The heavy knight. Yep. Okay. Come get some. Um, then we're gonna try evolving well, Cat Admiral something. just to give us another ward. Scratch my post. We're ready to sail. Um, and then let's just play our hero of the hunt on uh, the well, Um, if we get Val yeah, or Victorious Blader, we're probably gonna try those, or really yeah, just like that's... anything. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I wouldn't attack with anything now. I don't think we can clear anything. Okay, please. If I can get the the Night Sea, that's that would be really good. <laughs> that's what. I... Right, I mean, come get some. This is just lethal on board, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they did do what they could. Um, yeah. Frankly, there is very little that you can do against Victorious Vader in this kind of situation. Yeah, and this is a. It, it really turn. does. Yeah, it, it comes down usually to the uh, just having like uh, killer instincts on board already, for example. Can, or even um, the core master, which they already were forced to play because of the uh end game so that mm -hmm. card that tech coming in in the mirror like we expected and ike and momajelli got a 2-0 in their first match of the day in that sword mirror a clean sweep they looked in like they're they've looked they were in such a commanding position that second game like the first game came down to the wire it's a mm -hmm. but that second game they looked like they were just not in danger after the mid game <laughs> yeah second game they kind of dominated the first game was was a heck of a turnaround this was uh but that was a great matchup uh, that victorious blader coming in very very clutch on turn seven for sure 
Yeah. Now tell me if, if you all agree with me on this, but I thought that the play overall, even on the coachless turns was, uh, was very good. You know, there were, there were like a few times where there were like potentially other options, but I definitely didn't see any like pretty gigantic misplays, which we've seen before. And we saw a lot of, I thought some like really like smart plays for the turns. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I feel like we really just got to see kind of why that sort of more mid rangey build, uh, has an advantage there because it seemed like both times realistically the games came down to the fact that Rosemi and KSLBD's deck just ran out of steam right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a little bit yeah and i actually really liked that one coachless turn that ike did where he played out the quick blader first to pop that killer instincts right Mm -hmm. away and the thing is even though uh they didn't even go for the uh victorious played on turn seven right away and the reason for that i assume is because they were anticipating the core master from hand which Mm -hmm. rosemi didn't actually draw until she traded in and drew a card Mm -hmm. but I mean, it was there, so they did make the right call there to yeah. make that big board first and then force out the Core Master, and then now that the A, the, the Killer Instincts is off the table, and B, the Core Master was baited out as well, now it's time for Victory Blader, and then we saw Ozemi and KSOVD had no way to clear it. Yeah, it's just checkmate with that Blader with nothing, no answers. Yeah, it was really well played, really, really well played. And uh, yeah, the KSLVD and Rosemi kind of really just had no hand for a, a sizable portion of the game. So let's take a look at where our scoreboard is as we go now after game one. We've got 20 points in the standard best of three to Ike and the Jiggly Peach. Pretty strong opening for that team. Absolutely. Uh, And again, really well played, even on the coachless turns. Seeing a lot of really smart Shadowverse plays here, especially since Ike was the one that said uh, he had almost no experience um, with card games. True? Yeah, uh, that's what he said. It's pretty impressive. And I know for sure that Rosemi has experience. But again, I really want to reiterate that I think they both played really well. And I think they both played very impressively. uh, But there's a lot of opportunity to still earn more points. That's very just in particular a match where, uh, you know, we talked about it earlier. The the fact that it's a mirror means that there's always going to be one like kind of big advantage in how you build your deck. And we really, really, really got to see that. So uh, I'm really excited to see how really like both of these teams continue to play during the day. And another really cool thing i think about like this format of buddy system where it's not just like a single limb bracket is that we get to see the players actually learn how to play their decks even better over time so Mm -hmm. you know everything Mm -hmm. that they learn from this set they get to now use it in their next set uh which is just always a, a really cool thing to see imo yeah definitely it's great to see people learn in in motion uh throughout the course of a day and i'm excited to see how they uh take the experiences from game one and bring it to the rest of the games throughout the day uh, and then throw it all away during the team match where, <laughs> where no experience <laughs> is going to help anybody. So Yeah, and then we got the mirror match out of the way, right? So, you know, if you are a disliker of Swordcraft for whatever reason, I'm, I, I don't know anyone in present company like that, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, you get to see less of it uh, in the same matchup. Uh, over the course of the day, but I mean that 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 matchup. Well, you really cool. you really got to learn the deck too. Like even though there, yeah. there are two variations on the similar the, the similar deck, so uh, someone like me who doesn't play a lot of Swordcraft, I feel like I understand both decks a lot better now. Anyway, so that's that's pretty nice. It's um, also, by the way, pretty tough to like actually run a mirror in this game because Shadowverse is really a game so much about like your pacing and keeping your momentum going. And if you miss a single beat in the mirror, then suddenly you lose this like tiny little advantage and then everything just just goes downhill. It's just the, the most painful thing of all time. So uh, I actually feel like like mirror matches in this game in particular are very unforgiving. So again, I, I really feel like they both played well. Yeah, especially you get to see that neat variety when you have something like the buddy system where coaches are muted and you have people that really haven't played that kind of deck a lot. You get to see some really interesting takes on the deck uh, that are, as we talked about before, just a little bit unconventional, which is really, really cool. I uh, got to see some like like throwing out that uh, pop in the killer instinct early with the quick blader. I never would have thought of that, but it kind of made sense in the long run, didn't it? Yeah, it, it, it did. But also, you know, I want to talk about this, too. Uh, we we got a chance to hear the coaches a little bit. And, you know, we talked a, a little bit about the coaches and who they are as players earlier on. But one thing that the buddy system really gets to showcase is like how people are 
as coaches because we've had some players on here who I think are amazing players, world class players that maybe aren't the best at coaching. And uh, I personally like both of these coaches. Personally, I think KSLVD's voice is like the most relaxing thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. <laughs> it was pretty uh, chill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I want to listen to like just KSLVD like talking as I'm going to sleep every night. Uh, that's a weird <laughs> thing to say, but I'm going to stick with it. Uh, but w- what do you all think about how they actually coached through the the, the like the choices that they had to make coming up, both KSLVD and Momo Jelly? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, so it's time to I give really... away our second uh, buddy system hashtag winner. <laughs> Um, we're again we're giving out a ton of card packs if you tweet at us or at anybody i guess with the hashtag sv buddy system you automatically get entered to win a bunch of stuff card packs or physical promo cards again those physical promo cards are super cool Uh, i've had a, a couple of them over the the years and they look really really neat so let's draw our our second winner of the day for that promo pack that winner is at cheesy goodbye Congratulations, you just won one set of Shadowverse promo cards. It's going to be the coolest cards you own in your life. That art is just fantastic. Congratulations again, guys. Hit us up with tweets all day. Hashtag SV Buddy System for your Q&A, comments on the tournament, stuff about your favorite sushi. It doesn't matter. Give us those uh, hashtag tweets and you too could be entered to win something later in the day. So we are looking ahead here, guys, at our next match it is million shoe here that's mm-hmm. exciting uh and we've got some two we've got two new decks coming up as well so we're yeah. going to change things up not so much mirroring sword we're going to look at a bunch of other stuff too what do you guys think yeah uh these are the decks that i really was personally excited to see so buff dragon is a really simple deck but for a tournament like this where it really is about you know, entertaining the viewers, you know, not so much about the highest standard of play. Uh, but Buff Dragon, a lot of crazy top decks that can happen. Joe, like, you know what I'm oh, talking absolutely. about. Yeah, with like the burn and the draw and the storm that can just like chain mm-hmm. one after another. It can get yep. really ridiculous there. But on the other side, uh, with Shoe and Frost, FG Shadow, super tough deck. I'm super interested to see how Frost chooses to approach the coaching on these turns and how he tries to set up Shoe for those coachless turns. Because that's such mm-hmm. an insanely tough deck. Yeah, I'm really yeah. excited to actually listen into that deck just because you got to talk 300 miles a minute just to explain what the <laughs> cards do, never mind in what yeah. order to play them. It's a really, really complicated deck. I'm very interested to see how he's going to coach him through, especially mm-hmm. the uh, the turns before the 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 coach muted turns. So There's going to be a lot, a lot to say about Flaming Glass. Mm-hmm. So let's take a look at this first deck that we got coming up here, and let's talk about it. Oh, this is it. This is my uh, favorite deck. This is the deck I've been playing for a while. Different versions of it, because Buff Dragon has been around mm-hmm. for a while now, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah it's ever since, uh, like, start of last year, I think, that was when they first started coming out with the Buff Dragon support. And then gradually building up on that until now, it's, like, actually quite a relevant meta contender. Uh, you see it all the time on Ladder. It's a very straightforward, but a really potent deck um, yeah. with just... You buff the the cards in your deck, you increase their defense, and then most of the cards in the deck have extra effects when they've been buffed at least twice. So Mm -hmm. you want to buff first, then draw all of your buffed cards, and then they become like ridiculously playpoint efficient, not only because of their stats, but their extra effect. Like they'll do damage or they'll draw cards. So then it's just a very straightforward game plan of just playing cards one after another. And they become yeah. very difficult to clear very, very quickly, particularly Dragon Skull Bludgeoner, which is not oh, one I use in my absolutely. deck. But that particular card can only take one damage at a time. So if you play them mm-hmm. late game and you've buffed them by nine, suddenly that's going to take <laughs> 10 hits uh, just to take that thing off the board unless you have an auto kill. It doesn't have a, um, a defense against uh, being destroyed by effects, does it? It no. does not. Thank it's goodness not. it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be a little crazy, yeah. That's um, a little so it's, it's, Yeah. One thing that stands out at this list, I spent like, I don't know, like 30 minutes yesterday trying to figure it out, is how they fit in three Ocean Spear and two Bludger, and they cut. You, you know, Joe, you mentioned like the burn speed of the deck. One of the right. cards that contributes to that, the Rock Whale is missing in this version. So it looks like they're going to be playing for a board a little more and a little less explosive. But yeah, a little less. honestly, less explosive for this deck is still pretty explosive. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the deck in and of itself is, I mean, yeah. it's designed to be explosive. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Now, that's that's a version of the deck that like, so I play an older version. And I tried a couple times to, to kind of get with the meta on this one. And I just couldn't get in the same rhythm. 
Island. I don't use rock whales in mine either. Um, and I think I added, uh, <laughs> what did I add to mine that I just liked for the cheese? I call it the buff cheese deck because, uh, and now I, I can't even say his name appropriately. I call him Gorgonzola. Oh, but it's, oh G- Gon- Gondagoza. Gondagoza. Yeah, Gondagoza. Uh, <laughs> and you know what? A couple of times that card has come in super clutch at the end. I don't even remember what I what yeah, I, I tossed out for it, but I only <laughs> yeah. have one copy. And it's just every once in a while, I'll just, just finish with the cheese. So I'm excited to see this. Uh, I'm excited to see this deck in action just because I know the most about it. But let's take a look at what they're playing against it, which is the wild card here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it, it only feels appropriate, right, that we're going to be uh, seeing a, a deck of this archetype from uh, the Sorcerer, Shu. Uh, so yeah, tell, mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about this, because this is, I feel like, kind of maybe the most... Maybe is it, Would you agree that it's like the least straightforward of the decks that we're seeing today? Maybe yeah, not, maybe this buff. Deck, this this okay, deck okay. is incredibly complicated. You have to manage the colors that you've had destroyed. You have to manage your shadows, which is like an extra resource that Shadowcraft has access to that other decks don't use as often. Um, and then because like, so the key combo, right, is the, what we're showing here, the Kernanos and Flame and Glass duality. Kernanos, once you've spent 20 shadows to form Necromancy, uh, does a reanimate 10 which you want to hit flame and glass duality but you have two other eight drops in the deck that can get in the way in the skeleton raider and you hope to never have to deal with this but the krampus if you destroy a krampus at some point in the game you are in big trouble but it's (laughs) it's more about that right the deck has a ton of resources in the the luna the call of the great arm like these cards uh our resource generation and a ton of cycles so you're constantly sculpting your hand into something better in order to get to this like win condition game plan and you have to constantly decide between how you use your cards because they do so many different things now what i'm not familiar with and or i'm not used to seeing in this deck is we have the nomadic conductor and the reaper of madness here how how is that going to play into this particular deck yeah, so that's actually one thing that I wanted to bring up myself. I actually am quite surprised by the deck that Frost decided to submit for this one because this deck, I mean, it's a very strong build, but this particular list is one of the more challenging variations of a challenging deck. So he's putting a lot of faith into Shu for this one, but to answer your question, Nomadic Conductor is basically a consistency card. Uh, she discards a card from your hand and then draws another one, and she can do the same thing again when you evolve her. So again, about sculpting your hand, that card basically can do a lot of it on her own. And the Reaper of Madness, it's an evil effect, can clear stuff. He has Bane himself, but Mm -hmm. it's all about the last words. He makes it so that until the end of your next turn, you can only take three damage at a time. And that stops a lot of different OTKs in the meta, but... Oh, so uh, it's only three damage to face or three damage to face and followers? uh, Just to your face. So it protects your leader uh, from anything that deals more than three. And that's going to be really effective against, well, the mirror if it was there, but it's not going to be. Um, but in general, against a lot of like big bursty decks, uh, that's going to be very powerful. Now, as far as like protecting against big bursts, the the buff dragon, it's got some heavy hitters, but not something that's, I mean, you're going to be dealing damage maximum about five at a time anyway. So it'll be protective, but it, I don't know if it's going to be, well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm very excited to see how this goes. Looks like they're ready to go, guys. So let's jump into game one of Millie Parfait and Potwasher versus Shu Yumino Gorgeous and Frost. And I'm excited about this. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. We're seeing a <laughs> lot of like interesting initial mulligans here. We saw all the pen pens from the previous set, and now we're seeing oh, Double Dragon that's... Nude versus the Double Flaming Glass. Man. A g- pretty good hand for Millie and Potwasher. You don't necessarily want to see the Bludgeoner right away, but they have two one-cost buffs, so that's definitely a great start there. Can't complain about that. Shu, on the other hand, is starting off with Luna and the Bellringer Angel, so getting quite a bit of Psycho there as well. Yeah, Luna always a good card to keep. Um, you know, one thing, we have a guide on this uh, deck in our uh website and uh one of the <laughs> main things is that each of your cards uh you know luna Kernanos, all of those play a role but you can pretty much afford to use one for consistency and luna is kind of the workhorse of the deck and uh, getting uh extra shadows being a krampus target and the luna's doll just uh, you know that all like you, she kind of contributes to the nickel and diming mid game and early game of the deck 
nickel and diming that that is one way to describe the way this deck operates um yeah definitely one card that puts a lot of work into the deck and you can play her like many many times because you can get her back into your hand with uh Ooh, follow the great arms an amazing set of that's top decks there nice top deck <laughs> from million <laughs> Joe. That's nice really yeah mm, that's, Joe, do you that like is that the character Oracle for some reason right uh there's you no know, i have an affinity with him and i, I was so glad because he didn't really have like a follower card for a really long time uh yeah. and and now i mean he had a couple spells but uh yeah now now we've got him there and he's very very effective uh in this deck yeah, so you're going to do all the voice lines for us when, when they happen, right? Like when he gets played and when he's attacking. <laughs> that's, that's funny that you think I remember them. It, it's specific. <laughs> it happens all the time. Like people are like, oh, what's your favorite line? Blah. I'm like, man, I recorded that like three years ago. I have no idea. I don't even know what I ate for breakfast this morning. I think Rowan. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I get it. I'll, I'll commentate an entire tournament and they'll be like, what was your favorite match? And I'll be like, I don't remember a don't single match that just happened 10 minutes ago. But uh, yeah, no. Still still good to hear you. We'll just... We'll just uh, We'll just turn up the sound, you know, and Joe, you yeah. can take a break. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. I want to see how quickly Millie and Potwash should go through their turn two. <laughs> With that top deck. I mean, we talked about the Rowan draw, but the uh, turn two Dragon Oracle also. Turn two Dragon Oracle is great. There's very, very few instances where you just don't want to slap that on the unless unless you. Yeah. I really can't think of many where I've chosen not to ramp on turn two. Mm. So it it depends on your hand, but uh, be, because it's like, do you have a uh, two drop that you'd like to play, or um, you know, do you have a way to use your four play points? Because Buff Dragon is actually one of the least drag ramp dependent decks, but with the second dragon oracle. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is the snap oracle and pot washer playing the card that he just top decked optimal for sure. <laughs> you always got to min max the small things, man. You, you can't yeah. overlook that. You're blessing your luck by playing the card that you just drew. Okay, um, I, I so need to point out, I need to point out really quickly that Paul Washer's comment on Millie was, quote unquote, Millie has already shown off her elite top deck skills during practice. I'm sure yeah. we'll get to see it again during the tournament. And quote, that is the end, only thing he said. Yeah, and already <laughs> seeing that already, we top decked the Oracle and then we top decked it again, just in case we needed another. Mm -hmm. So going very, very well. Millie definitely looking like a dragon main with these draws. Yeah. But this hand from Shu and Frost is also coming together. Playing the Angel's Blessing on turn three going first is really nice. Um, buff Dragon's a deck. So Angel's Blessing is a card that gets a bonus effect when you have more Evo points than your opponent. But Dragon, Buff Dragon in particular, often doesn't spend Evo points to mm -hmm. evolve its followers. So just using that um, going first to get your hand size up, um, a really good decision. And oh my goodness, you guys are talking about Millie being a Dragon main. You know, we were looking for plays <laughs> to make this turn. So many options. <laughs> yeah. That you see a excellent. 2 plus 2 here. You yeah, can yeah, pitch yeah. the bludgeoner. Yeah. Yeah, so, there's, so the options here are like, you can use the conflagration, or well, both conflagrations, to clear followers. And what they do is they both buff your deck immediately. And usually, ideally, you'd want to buff first and then save your card draw until after, just to get the most out of the cards that you're drawing. However, there's nothing to clear on this turn, so it might be worth it to yeah, just that's, lay that's where the, I gone. the dragon Ooh. dude anyway, and that is what they're going to go for here. Get the 1-4 on the board. What did they that's discard? Interesting... They discarded the, the prime, prime conflagration. conflagration. Interesting. Yeah. And the reason is because they've already buffed their deck a few times, and the thing with the bludgeoner is that, yes, he's not buffed, but he still at least has that evil effect where you can discard a card to draw two more. And Pot is basically valuing the potential uh, card draw there because he knows his hand is very light on resources. He has the Rowan, but there's not a lot in terms of uh, self-sustaining cards. That's really what Buff Dragon wants to see. It's cards like uh, the Mermaid. Uh, both mermaids actually that just replace themselves when played and when you don't have any of those it's so important oh. that you make sure you don't run out of steam Ooh. oh i like this play a lot the double ding dong uh, the double, double ding, -dong. ding dong oh okay all okay. right, right, right dragoon joe knows uh, all of these cards so this card is actually going to buff not just the defense but also the attack of the followers in your deck unique in that 
sense. So she's going to buff all of the storm cards. The buff, the uh, brutal dragon use that we tossed from the mulligan earlier are now going to be They're four attack. Too. Yeah. And mm. probably a more efficient play than the draw. Well, they have, uh, there's no clear here, correct? Yeah, you, you okay. can you can free Evo Celestial Dragoon. That'll clear one of the bell ringers. Yeah. Uh, oh, could, no, you, you can could, clear with Howling Conflagration you, you or can, even Rowan. You can clear with, yeah. This yeah is, so you have a, a lot couple of ways to clear here. Some choices, like, for sure. I kind of like Dragoon, and then you can actually pitch the draft back in your deck to buff it with Dragoon, which is a little tricky, okay. maybe not worth it. Um, yeah. But I think Dragoon is definitely the play here. You want to play here as early as possible. For sure. Um, That's right. And they did buff the 3-2, so they are planning to potentially play it at some point if necessary. Now the thing with this type of deck is that yes, it's consistent, but it relies upon getting like those cards that start the chain of like, you know, you get to play cards every turn. Oh, okay. And they are actually going to jam it here. Okay, so that's sure. a good uh, part to hide behind the 3-5 word. So this is actually mm -hmm. a nice aggressive play actually. Yeah, but... Even for a deck like Buff Dragon, you, they are you know making what's... some pretty good choices. You got, you did allude to the Bludgeoner not being immune to destroy effects, and we mentioned Reaper's There's main a Reaper effect. In there. Ma Reaper's main effect is not so good in this matchup, but the secondary effect can be pretty sneaky. That's right. He does have Bane just on his body, so that means he can Evo to ping five damage onto the three five, and then mm -hmm. trade off into the Bludgeoner as well it. to actually full clear this board. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, the tech coming in extremely clutch here because. Yeah, the if if they were able to Evo face um, with that Bludgeoner on that Rowan turn, that would be just lights out. I think immediately. That's so brutal. Yeah. It is. It's very brutal for sure. Yeah. Um. So Shu and Frost staying in the game with this one and actually looking uh, to be in a good spot here. Yeah, there is a consequence of playing the Reaper out here though, and it's not that so much the shadow spent, but if Reaper gets destroyed, um, he, right? I men mentioned that. Uh, have tracking with followers you have destroyed matters a lot for this deck once reaper is destroyed reaper costs three and um Kernunos has a reanimate four effect that you often want to use on rulanai which is another important card that i've neglected to mention but at this point in the game i think rulanai has kind of missed his timing Agreed. for being good so it's it's okay but if that reaper came in earlier or if there were already a rulanai destroyed then Reaper being destroyed here could be a pretty massive negative consequence of making this play. So it's one of the subtle complexities that this deck can yield. So I have no chill here. I'd be throwing Drock down and uh, Evoing to Bellringer. Because mm. <laughs> I, I just have no chill. I think Mermaid Rowan is too nice. Though. Yeah, yeah that, that is definitely it's a, it's an a aggressive much nicer play. play. Yeah, that's a, that's a very aggressive play for sure. Um, the Mermaid has a really nice top deck. It is one of those cards that kind of replaces itself. Uh, on Evo, she adds another Dragoncraft follower, or oh, draws right. a card. Okay. Rather. See, I don't, I don't use that in mine, so I'm and, not totally familiar she, with that one. She buffs your deck twice, which is also really nice. Um, because buffs on Fancy and buffs on Evo, and they are going to use that Evo effect on her. Oh, Angel's Blessing is that. huge. That's huge. That's actually huge. Yeah. So that's I... most likely going to come in on the next turn because we mm. probably want to play the Rowan for five here. Oh, just I really like Rowan here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, get that uh, Black Dragon's Curse in hand, and that's going to ping two damage to a random enemy at the end of every turn. And it's going to be buffed to three damage because of that amulet, which just increases all of your sources of damage by one until it goes away. Mm -hmm. And then you need to deal a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. That plus one damage effect coming into play here, letting the dragon you clear the remainder of that Reaper of Madness. Alrighty. Yeah, the top decking comment from Potwasher really um, solid. <laughs> really, yeah. really, really that, true. This is how you're supposed to play Buff Dragon for all the. <laughs> for everyone in chat. This is the way you're supposed to play this deck. <laughs> yeah, this, the old uh, term of playing off the top, playing off the top of the deck, and uh, you kind of literally do. This is what Peak Dragoncraft looks like. The Steel Tope's going to come in. That's, so that's actually a card that is there to uh, sort of bridge that necromancy gap, because normally what you're trying to hit in terms of long-term goals with this deck is that necromancy 20, so you spend 20 shadows on it in total. And so many of your effects are either 3 or 6, and so you'll end up with 18 
very frequently. So mm -hmm. having exactly two there as just a one cost draw card is super convenient, and it actually helps in a lot of different situations there. I'm just gonna cycle a card here. Nomadic Conductor potentially gonna... Do you think they're gonna use the Luna Evo to get the full clear here? Luna Evo is an option, and I think it is the only way for them to properly clear this, so it does seem like that's going to be the option there. Um, Allure of Shadows is the token that she generates that just instantly destroys anything that costs 5 fleet points or less. And then Luna gets a trade in there, and of course that token uh, amulet from Rowan, it lasts on your opponent's turn as well, which means the Luna took 4 damage for trading mm -hmm. into it on this turn. Yeah. Another oh, Celestial. Oh, wow. these are some incredible draws. Easy. Okay, Millie is actually a dragon god. I can't believe. Yeah. The, the, this is some insane draw order. So not only do we get the Oracle into Oracle into Rowan, into the Angel's Blessing that we got to play for one oh. month. We now have even more card draw at the ready. But it seems like they're actually going to go all in on damage here. They want to push this damage with Drak just because uh. they have the Rowan Amulet active. So that's going to deal plus one to the five damage that he would normally deal to face. Yeah. Raise that up to six. Even going to throw out the Ocean Spirit here just to make mm -hmm. the board harder to deal with. But always having this sort of way of seeing like how to make the most annoying board for your opponent. That is a that's very always, annoying uh, board. It's always yeah. like one thing that he's been very good at as a player. Well, yeah, uh, and... the Dragon God sees all. Mm-hmm. The, right, and the the Allure of Darkness only works on Green. followers that have a yeah, low cost, so it cannot hit the draw. The Gilnalise is going to see some play here. But how are they going to allot her hit? You know, we haven't gone to any uh, listen-ins. We should uh, maybe listen into one of these teams. I don't know which one you two would prefer at this point in time, but I'm uh, I'm curious, especially how they're coaching in through uh, this shadow play. All right. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Detestable. Okay, so here they're just going for the full clear with the. Uh... Yeah, so this is going to be the only way from the full clear. Let's get a listen in on Millie and Potwasher next turn as they decide on what to do with these cards. You know what? We haven't. Two Celestial Dragoons. We haven't drawn any of the storm so far, so yeah. maybe even Celestial Dragoon Evo first, but that might be throwing. Uh, let's, let's just do it. Two, two celestial dragoons? Uh, <laughs> celestial dragoon evolve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this might be throwing, but we need to draw multiple storms. So. So, and then dragons awakening? Yeah. So. Please. <gasps> Angel's blessing? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And then maybe even <laughs> oh, yeah, dragons God. awakening again. <laughs> or actually, awake. blazing dragon is <laughs> probably better. Blazing Dragon on the... Ah... Uh, I don't know... Celestial Dragoon? <laughs> I think we need to win in the next turn. Celestial Dragoon? Celestial Dragoon? So Dragon's... Yeah. Uh, dragon with Celestial Dragoon? Okay. Yeah. And then... Uh, seven, so... Oh... Huh? Oh, it's we got so it. So close. No! Uh, five, six, seven... So right now we have two, three, six... I think you play the prime comp flag. The prime best prime card, prime, okay. yeah, the best card is uh, Rowan, but let's say you play Dragon's Awakening and then you get the Rowan. So uh -huh. that's eight play points and then you're left with two play points. So, yeah. That's fine. You know the, the chip's called Jagarico? That's pretty good. No way! That was the best Islin we've ever had. Oh my god. That, that was an unhinged <laughs> Millie, Millie is ridiculous. Yo, can we also talk about the fact that she was saying what cards to play before Pawash was saying it on top of that and on top of eating chips? That was actually super <laughs> yeah. impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, this is just uh, another day in the office. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's a shoe and frost. You're going to cash in on their defensive play. Yeah, this mm -hmm. retracing, the surprise turn eight retracing, definitely going to throw Millie and Potwasher for a loop there. Pot was thinking about, you know, what types of combinations could give them lethal. It is very, very close, as he said. I completely agree that winning on their next turn is what they want to do. So that retracing is so devastating. At 15 health, it's going to be borderline impossible Ooh, for them to win immediately God. unless they just get like rock wheel rock wheel that? you know like you know, the, the the special but that ruin i play is a little awkward unless they're trying to get the hit with um suzy which is they don't need to attack with suzy for their shadow count but what is their shadow count at right now what is their necromancy count can we get the the click upon I the the the, the, the sure no. click but the, uh, I think it should be... They are at 22. Okay, so 22. they have Yeah, so that's two over the amount they need, right? Because but they, the they haven't drawn any of their big storms yet, mm. have they? Right. No, I, okay, I, so I'm not... Brutal. You know, you, that's brutal tough. for you... Millie and Potwasher. Brutal plus Windswept, that's 12 with the evil point. Plus another two with the curse if they snipe face with it. Um, the Brutal can ping one of them. Another Pound flag! That's, new... can, Con... that's oh. flag. They... That's lethal, right? Wait, how much play points do they have left? They played. I, I don't think they have seven like, no, play points left. That's no, they have four play points. They have four yeah, points. Yeah, yeah. They they would have only needed five, right? Because they would only need the brutal plus one thing plus conflict to give mm -hmm. them lethal. So uh, it's a 50-50, I believe now. Just I'll make you show respect. so. Where wait? Seven plus no, it's seven, seven plus nine. No, 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 they no can't never make mind. It. Never, never mind. Yeah, it's yeah. one off. If that amulet was on the board, but right, yeah. You know, Nor, you mentioned uh, the Rock Whales. Isn't this list not running Rock Whales? Or did I miss C? No, they're, no, they're not playing Rock Whales now. Right, right. Ah, oh, oh, that's true. A bold choice. All right, let's listen in on Shu and Frost. I was actually going to lead that with an if they survive this turn. <laughs> but they've managed to. So. The uh, Rule I. Kill the lease. Wow. Is that, okay. is that good? I, I, that I might be know. good enough, actually. Oh, uh, actually, okay, okay, so we start with the scream for sure. Uh-huh. Um, you can go ahead and trade into the 512. 512. Yeah. It continues screams. Um, do it, it until it has 6 health. Screams. Okay. And then play the Luna and play the Gilnalis to evolve the Gilnalis into the 5-6. I'm not lonely. Luna, evolve the Gilnoli. Yes. Greed. It comes to consume me. Oh. <laughs> but this is very dangerous. Um, and then uh, we play the Rule and I to banish one of their followers. Yeah. All right. So we'll banish the seventh floor. That's not too bad, but we can't really do anything else. I think we just play the two Lunas though and pray that he doesn't have uh, three damage in their hand, but it's pretty <laughs> likely. Yeah, at this point. Yeah. Don't have it. He's <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> popping <laughs> off over there. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, I, I mean, they're, I think they're gonna a... spot lethal. Let's just listen to them on them anticipating their their victory. Here. Uh, five, ten, eleven, twelve. Hold 13, on, let me let me 14, let me taunt. 15. Let me taunt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, that one. Oh, the top deck was, uh, uh, yeah, so the it didn't actually matter whether they cleared 413. I don't think there was an out. You know, but... Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice, oh. we won. Okay, game two, we're gonna play a little bit slower, but... Okay. And then, uh... <laughs> and then even turns I'm more will be... Really? <laughs> I just can't handle it! I just can't handle it! Okay, okay. <laughs> I used to be in there. <laughs> I, 
Everything about Millie. Okay, well, first of all, can we talk about how, how Millie is actually a Shadowverse player? Oh, yeah. Like, taunting uh, before yeah. wins <laughs> and, like, being like, hold on, I'm just going to sit here with Leech. More <laughs> ways than one. Oh, she, yeah, like, because at is. the beginning, she was like, I'm not very smart. And now she's over there, like, eating chips like she's been, like, she's a mafia boss. Like, she's got nothing. Yeah, you know, that, just... that is usually what I associate with chips myself as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my, oh my God. That was actually incredible. But, I mean, also the top decking skills, Pop Washer wasn't wrong. That was, no. uh, like, a ridiculous Very amount strong. of them. That was, like, 80% of the top decks mm-hmm. were like, oh, that was exactly what they mm-hmm. needed. Uh, so, good good deck chosen. But, uh, I mean, again, well played from both sides. Just, uh, yeah, that's a that's a tough deck to overcome when it when it gets going. Yeah, Absolutely. The, the yeah, massive um, stat line there. Whew. Yeah, and I do want to highlight as well, just uh, Pop Washer was coaching there. Um, we didn't get to hear every single turn. But on the turns where he went for um, the really strong boards behind uh, the the uh, Dragoon, uh, that did still get cleared, but it was a very good play. And early on, the decision to discard the Prime Conflagration instead of that 3-1 Bludgeoner, knowing that it could potentially be used for its evil effect, it could potentially be used to set up a bit of a board behind uh, one of their many wards. And these do have three Ocean Spirits, so that possibility was quite likely. So... Definitely good foresight there, good mastery of the deck, even though it's a very straightforward one. Well, let's yeah, see how they I... take on in game two here. Mm-hmm. Mother, father, the, come on. the shadow deck is also very Go complex and home, uncoached. This is terrifying. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. Like, I'm nervous. Uh, yeah. I... Now, getting into the mulligans here, another pretty nice opening here for Millie and Pot. They do have just a Dragon's Awakening that, uh, if they are going first, they can potentially just hold on to that for the yeah. Enhance, so that it not only buffs the deck, but also draws two cards, which is very nice going first to just uh, have a healthy hand size. And Joe mm-hmm. back again with Brutal Dragon Dragonew. This is, of course, the classic seven play point combo classic there. Classic seven play for... point combo. Very effective. As, as seven play points, there is Flame of Glass. I don't believe Shu and Frost even drew her at all in the previous game. It did not. Actually, Mulligan two of them, if I remember correctly. That's yeah. right. Um, and then never saw them again. So never saw them didn't again. even have uh, the possibility for lethal just because it just wasn't in their graveyard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but Angel's Blessing, very, very strong going second. Uh, against a deck like Dragon, especially because it's going to get that healing. This is a nice hand, though. Definitely a nice hand. So they can play out the Nomadic uh, on turn two just to get rid of the Flaming Glass right away and dig a little bit deeper into their deck. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just see what they're working with here. The Angel's Blessing almost certainly is going to be saved for. Uh, at some point when they have more evos than the opponent. Now, both of these decks basically have a lot of ways to uh, play with their evo points and manipulate them. Dragon just, like, never spends them even when they're evoing, whereas Shadow can recover them with Luna, uh, evo without spending it with Reaper, and then, of course, they can get Luna back with Call of the Great Arm. So a lot Mm -hmm. of evo point manipulation there, and that's what makes Angel's Blessing such a powerhouse in these decks. Yeah, you know, you mentioned discarding the Flaming Glass, but do you think uh, Shu and Frost might be considering using Kurnanos to bury them instead? Because mm-hmm. it's that's yeah. a bit of like a all-in play, because you're using right. up the Kurnanos early, but given that they one of their biggest roadblocks the previous game was not being able to bury a Flaming Glass, you know, they might counter-react to that. So I'm kind of curious how that develops. Yeah, so when this... you discard, that doesn't go into the graveyard, correct? Or does it? You have, to, you have to bury the flaming glass in order to reanimate it. You can't just mm-hmm. discard it. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So the difference between burial right versus simply discarding. Um, it still generates a shadow, but the card does not hit the board, does not hit the graveyard. Ooh, an awkward top deck for Millie and Potwasher. Yeah, might have used a little bit too much of that power in game one. <laughs> I know. So, and now, and then hitting them with the with the tempo taunt there, taunt okay. in the past is definitely a bit of a classic. What? Oh, and we Susie, draw the one of Susie. Not the one of Susie. You hate to see it. There, uh, but like gonna... they are going to go for the Thanatos here to put the flaming glass into the graveyard. Mm-hmm. Stilled hopes drawn off the top. Okay. Yeah, the nice pivot there would have been to use Nomadic Conductor to discard Susie, I think. But yeah, this that is still would have okay. been a really nice play, and it is a muted turn. Um, no way Frost could have anticipated the Susie top deck, 
Oh, he would probably <laughs> argue that he should have, but you know, it, it, it's it's tough to see that kind of thing coming, you know. So, uh, oh, a counter yeah. taunt. Let's yes. let's listen in here on Million Potwasher. They haven't done anything for a while, so yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna be Dragon's Awakening. Like, oh, is that bad? <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> Decisions. Yeah. It makes it more difficult. Uh, it also like makes that. it more difficult to count like the the odd and even turns, so it's kind of annoying. I count math. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so just enter for now, right? Yeah. Uh, wait, 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 wait! Don't wait? don't enter. Um, okay. <laughs> so if you draw one of the two costs, buffs. Uh -huh. So you know there is tropical mermaid and the the one three dude, the discard. So probably like discard dragon school. Yeah. Discard targets, probably Dragon Skull. If you draw a 2, probably play a 2 plus Oracle. And otherwise, okay. um... I don't know if you play the Dragon's Awakening with Oracle, but... Uh, so you go to 4. Uh-huh. You go up to 6. Well, what are, why are you mathing maybe, me right now? What does that mean? Maybe, maybe you play the Dragon <laughs> Awakening with the Dragon Oracle. Math. Yeah. Okay, see you. Dragon Oracle, Sorry. okay. <laughs> goodbye. Oh, <laughs> I can't math. Okay, see you. That that yeah, may be no, the funniest so funny. two line exchange we've seen. <laughs> yeah, and uh, okay, we're seeing some of the com complex interlocking elements here for yeah. Hugh and Frost. The Call of the Great Arm is going to be a great tool to recover the Karnanos. Um if she gets destroyed, which is an if in this situation because of the ocean spirits in the dragon deck. So, right. um, and that's one thing about uh, burying the flaming glass early is that you can get it back with Call of the Great Arm, right? And that's definitely no, or not, can you not, not into your hand. I mean, you can get the Carnados back in hand. That's the that's the resource. Oh right, it's new. Oh, I'm I'm trolling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually trolling. <laughs> it's all good. I was like, how come I never did that? It's like I never seen that before. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's not possible. <laughs> recovers shadow followers only, which is why this deck plays so many neutral followers. Right, yeah, yeah. I forgot it was a neutral follower Go because <laughs> this, this deck is the only <laughs> one that actually uses it. But yeah, so uh, gonna discard the Susie and not put it into the graveyard, which is very good there. That interaction already coming in. Um, Bell Ringer, a potential evil target alongside the Angel's Blessing, which probably isn't going to be played just yet because they really want to heal that two healing always going to matter against dragon yeah what i want to know is what millie actually makes out of uh that end of the coaching turn from the pot washer because <laughs> oh, oh my god Oracle. <laughs> i oh. mentioned two plus two is she just going to slam that the double oracle and she said she doesn't like math, but I mean, this is this is a, uh, this is a pretty good one if I if I say so strong. myself. That's the best two plus two you could ask for, and we already had the brutal Rowan from the very first turn of the game, so that's going to be set up for turn seven mm -hmm. already. That's so much damage, especially after a double ramp. There's not a lot. Yeah. It also plays into Potwasher's complaint about the Oracle messing up your odd and even playpoint count for your turn numbers when you play two of them. You're, you're, uh, so now you're you're canceling point. out. So you're now you're on, <laughs> on the odd turns again. So that's actually yeah. that's so optimal. Solid that's strat. Um, huge code yeah, and as well. yeah, and the the uh, the trade actually we didn't even get to mention that. I don't think mm -hmm. Pot even got to that because uh, there's just so much limited time. But mm -hmm. gonna leave the nomadic conductor on the board, and she unfortunately has an evil effect. So uh, Shu gonna have just basically a freebie here with that one. But this is an uncoached turn. But I still think you have to you have to trade out the Kernanos because Kernanos reanimating oh, Rulani wow. is even stronger. Yeah, that that is. Yeah, yeah, that's even worse. She's gonna choose to evolve. She's gonna. Oh, actually, gonna not Evo here. Save Evos for Pictionary. <laughs> you think that? Do you think there's a situation? Is that it is pretty dire? Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, think brutal, of, there's a lot of points. Of in hand. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is rough. <laughs> oh my! 
Yeah, so this is just damage upon damage here, and even the Plime Conflagration off the top, so the Amulet from Enhanced Rowan, it buffs all of your damage yeah. from attacks and spells, so the Plime Conflagration is going to get buffed to uh, even more damage to face on the next mm -hmm. turn as well, so honestly, uh, they might even be discussing um, how they want to sequence the following turn, because I think this one is you know, pretty, pretty clear cut. This is bread and butter, baby. That's a whole lot of butter. <laughs> I, do, I do appreciate that you were like, oh no, maybe her top decking luck is over, and then five turns later, well, no. three turns later. <laughs> you got the Oracle into Oracle. It was a slow this start, is... but this is... It's yeah, but, but the nice it's thing like... about Buff Dragon is that you don't necessarily have to buff exactly on turn two. We sort of alluded to that a little bit in the previous game. It's like, as long as you hit on um, your overflow turn, uh, when you want to, that's really when it matters the most. It's turn six and or the six and seven play point turns um, that you want to hit, and Millie was able to do that perfectly this game with a double oracle back to back. Let's make sure to listen in on Shu and Frost this upcoming turn because I think they can see the writing on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, this is uh, looking a little grim. We don't have any healing. Mm -hmm. No retracing. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no! <laughs> oh, no, 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 no! Um, okay. Damn, this is actually really tough. Um, hmm. Oh, no, 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 no! I think... No matter what, we have to play the Guiding Bell Ringer Angel so that it draws a card. Uh, don't evil just yet. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, let's play the Reaper of Madness to kill the 5 5. Do you evil the 5 5? Uh, the, the, Re the Reaper to kill the 5 5 and then train into the 3. Uh, actually. Yeah, let's let's play the Reaper Madness anyway, and uh, use the Evolve to, to destroy the three two instead. Three two, okay. Yeah, and then you trade into the five five. Trade and then into on the five, next five. turn, try to get uh, like try to draw uh, some healing, like retracing or Gionelis. And if you have mm -hmm. if you happen to draw Gionelis, uh, you have to uh, try to heal as much as possible with Gionelis. And also mm -hmm. use the Scream Diffusion if you can to trade some more. Mm -hmm. Ooh. What the? That's. Uh... I'm scared. <laughs> what the? Millie is kind of out Millie of control. Is... Yeah, this, this game. is a little on the what insane is side. What this? Does she see okay. it? Oh, I this think is... she sees it. She sees it. <laughs> she sees it. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good <laughs> what? lord. Oh, the, the plays. My gosh. And I mean, we ach we actually got the. Uh, the the Reaper last words effect, Joe. You mentioned how it's not necessarily that useful in the dragon matchup, but it's Here actually going to pre prevent a lot of damage from the yeah. real dragon. You not yeah. It's uh, but it's still going to be useful. No, 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 it's lethal. Uh, yeah, that's it. No, 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 no. That <laughs> is just God. so absurd. Oh man, and the DM taunts. Coming that was out. rough. Oh God, that's actually just. An SVO nightmare if I've ever seen one. That's literally <laughs> that's the most demoralizing thing to have happen to you in round one, and then this is what you see. You want to see this when you hit Dark Alley at That's not fair. That's not fair. That is too strong. What? Just get top deck like. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, yeah, strong. I, top deck, everything. And uh, yeah, Pot kind of said it right there. Uh, he let us know in the, uh, the, the, the secret <laughs> spreadsheet that we had. You know, Millie is an expert top decker. So that's why, you know, Dragon, simple deck, great for buddy systems, still Stop. really effective in the meta, but it really comes to life when you have that, you know, protagonist energy. Oh, yeah. And Millie, <laughs> looking like she has the top spot on the credits list right now, with those mm -hmm. insane back-to-back -back oracles into Brutal Ruin, into Brutal Rowan. 
Yeah. Just absolute insanity. <laughs> it's it's not even our judging rounds yet, and she's already trying to appeal to Joe here with all those rows. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's fair. I mean, it's a solid solid way to do it. Looking at the overall scores here, we got uh, Ike and Millie are tied at 20. Uh, pretty strong sets of games here with lots of interesting plays on both sides. Uh, lots of smart plays, too, even when the, the hand wasn't really uh, working. When the heart of the cards was kind of beating a little slow, uh, the, the plays were still really smart. A lot of, a lot of really smart shadow versing going on here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's still, of course, a ton of time to earn points here. As you can see right up there, you know, we've got Pictionary next. That is actually worth a ton of points. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, the show match come up after that. Uh, so a, a, a lot of, uh, you know, chances still, despite the fact that there have been some sweeps so far. Uh, some pretty funny sweeps, at least. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And a lot of chip eating. I wouldn't count any uh, any of our uh, slower starter uh, contestants out yet. You know, I've no way. Uh, been watching some of Shu's uh, stuff a bit lately, and if he's good at anything, it's getting over a uh, rough obstacle. <laughs> No, bad, bad joke, bad joke. No, uh, not allowed. No, no. Seriously, though, uh, I, I actually do not understand what we just saw in that last match. That was like, if, if, if Millie played like that, she would just win, as, I think, an SVO West. I yes. think it would be pretty yes, easy. Yes, for her to <laughs> it's yeah, been yeah, one exactly like that. And uh, yeah. well, maybe the same level of expertise as well, uh, give or take a debatable. Um, but Millie definitely is showing that she has what it takes here already in round one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like that, that last play, that last like turn of just finding lethal. Not only did she find it, but she found it instantly. Very like, fast. I, I, yeah, it's like she's like actually like a Shadowverse like pro player, and I don't understand it. I was literally looking at her stream. I, I said it before, but I was looking at her stream last night. And she's like, everybody else in the stream is smart. Am I here as the comedic relief? And it's like, uh, apparently you're here as the menace. You're like the final <laughs> boss. Yeah. I think it's the it's the era of Millie Sports. I'm gonna I'm gonna coin that term Millie right sports. now. It's the era has begun. Millie Sports. Okay. Mill eSport. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah, she <laughs> well they have a mill deck in this game. <laughs> mm, yeah, no, please don't don't ever introduce that. But honestly, <laughs> question though, uh, before we move on, was there really anything that uh, Shu and Frost could have done? Because I don't, you know, it, that, that was pretty dominant, but I don't want to say that they like made any bad choices or anything. Uh, they just kind of got over overrun, you know? Were, were there anything that they, were there any choices that could have made to change this outcome? Uh, it's a bit late, but I think in game one, and, and this is to highlight the treacherous nature of the shadow deck, um, when Fro at the, the last turn they had when Frost was like, uh, it's hard to find a clear. There was one chance at a clear they had, which was to use, and, and they also had to wipe their own board. Um, they had the Call of the Great Arm. What Call of the Great Arm can do is pull a one play point Rulani from your destroyed follower. So if they trade in both their Rulanis, um to clear out the to clear out the Brutal Dragon Ute along with their Rulani play, and then they play a Call of the Great Arm to, with more one play point Rulinites destroyed, they can try to pull a one play point Rulinite out of their destroyed pool and play that to banish the last follower. And that not only clears their own board, also clears uh, Millie and Potwatcher's board. And I think that would leave them barely alive going to the next turn. I think that's that's the only thing I saw that I think might have made a difference. <laughs> There was that one moment when there was a, a follower on the board. Was it Conductor that had an Evo effect? What was the Evo effect that they didn't use? Uh, it just uh, discards a card and then draws again. So uh, about that hand shuffling that... Uh, just they, cycling uh, something into their hand. Yeah, mm -hmm. that they missed out on a bit. So, I mean, that one extra ta uh, card, rather, potentially could have made a difference there. Uh, they did not hit the uh, the retracing that they saw in game one. That obviously can be up to mm -hmm. four healing. Um, mm -hmm. The Gilnalise also was six healing. So a lot of potential things that they could have drawn... Maybe it would have been, you know, the next card on their deck and that one card would have made the difference. We'll never know. Mm -hmm. um, but chances are that game was a bit of a wash yeah. because even if they survived that one turn, well, there's still two, you know, Rowan uh, spells in hand. They had more card draw coming after that. They were, uh, okay. Oshu uh was nowhere close to winning yet. So a bit of a, a cursed final game there for sure. Yeah, yeah there really wasn't much. There really wasn't much. Even with the, the Madness... Uh, mm -hmm. protection I mean it was just, it was just they, yeah. they burned they burned right through it like it was nothing 
Yeah. I think if there's like any- it was a bag of chips. Like it was a, <laughs> like a bag of chips. It's exactly what it was like. It was just another yeah. day at the office. Uh, seriously, yeah, that's that's tough. So I, I have a question though about the decks in general. You know, we didn't talk about this in this match. We talked about it in the one before. Uh, so we saw that the dragon deck kind of overran Shadow before we ever really saw the Shadow combo able to pop off. And it is a little mm-hmm. bit more of like a combo deck, right? Mm-hmm. So is that something that normally does happen in this matchup? Is the pace mm-hmm. of the Shadow deck just a little bit too slow, or is it just what happened throughout this current set? Um, it's a bit, mm. a little bit of yes to both. Um, so compared to the other shadow deck that is seeing a lot of competitive play, the last word shadow deck, that deck is faster in general, and that deck is a lot better at uh, not only in like enforcing that health differential with like the death cat reapers coming back, and also they're better at killing early. Whereas we saw already in this set in game one, they could not find flaming glass, they couldn't find uh, the raider. So even if they didn't die, they didn't actually have a way to put together the lethal with the Cernanos either. Mm-hmm. So that is a potential problem with this deck where even though it's so flexible, sometimes you are a bit slow to win. And when you're giving Dragon those extra turns, even if they don't have like a million Rowans, at some point the board clear is going to be so challenging because it's just mm-hmm. like another 13 defense follower, another one, another one. And it's tough. So it's very, very narrow. You're window to win for sure yeah that buff dragon deck really kind of negates a lot of the benefits of skeleton raider i'm inter- interested to see the the rally mm-hmm. sword against the skeleton raider because it just mm-hmm. starts that cycle where boom 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 you're 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 clearing <laughs> all these one play points two or not play points one defense two defense cards mm-hmm. like pretty quick and with minimal effort yeah and I think one thing that also came up in practice here was that uh, Frost and Shu kind of drew the Rulani just a little too late. If you play mm-hmm. Rulani on curve um, in that matchup, you slow down a lot of the momentum of the Dragon deck, and you often can make your own threatening plays just by putting three or four Rulani's on the board, which also uh, helps pad you from getting hit by Curse of the Black Dragon, the Rowan token. Um, but they they drew it so late, and often it was uh, conflicting with the Skeleton the reaper of madness in the uh in the destroyed pile so they didn't have a lot of the plays you can do to multiply your ruling eyes and get stronger tempo to offset what dragon can do so uh definitely a bit unfortunate for shoe and frost as well you know, I have another like kind of beginner question just again for everybody out there who's newer to Shadowverse because, uh, you know, we talked about how ridiculously complicated that Shadow Deck actually is. And I got to say, great job to issue for piloting it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think one of the biggest reasons why it's so complicated and why Shadow in general is so complicated is because of the reanimate uh, of like kind of the way it works, right? Uh, where you have a reanimate and a number. Uh, and I mean, I guess I'll let, if any of you want to explain it, uh, maybe, you know, zones, you can just keep going with your thought. Like, why is it so hard to just manage? like oh this just reanimates uh, uh like a uh, uh, anything that i have but why is it hard to manage it with the costs and the way that reanimate works as far as like having a number yeah so uh well reanimate uh the effect um to explain is uh you look at a follow it has a number and you pick a random follower destroyed the, at that is the highest cost lower than that number and bring it back now the auto combo that evo shadow players are used to is uh Kernanos, evo uh reanimate for to bring back Susie. But in this deck, in the Flame and Glass version, you're way less dependent on hitting a critical Evo count. And um, Susie doesn't do as much for you. Um, she's kind of there just to get the two necromancy effect. So uh, what you want to do is use that reanimate um, in order to bring back an extra Rulani. Rulani costs three, but when he uh, when he dies, he gives you a one cost token, which is really efficient at clearing the board. If you get two copies of that token, uh, boards are almost never a problem for you and you accelerate your um, board clear and even getting the damage from Rulani. So what's treacherous is the fact that there, when you play Reaper of Madness, you have another three costs in your deck. Now, Reaper of Madness can be a strong mid-game play, but now when you have two, three costs in your deck, um, you're not guaranteed to get that Rulani back out of your Kernanos reanimate. And then when you get the Reaper, it's not as good. <laughs> it actually just doesn't do anything. It's really hard. Well, uh, thank you for that breakdown of, of uh, a craft that just always messes me up when I try to play it because I'm I'm still like reanimate. I still don't it really. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm about. An- I can't animate. Never made reanimate. Speaking <laughs> of animation, we got a fun a new segment, segment to head over to now. We're in Pictionary time, aren't we? Shadowverse Pictionary here. Chef, tell us all about this. 
Oh, I am so excited for this. Uh, this is uh, a treat for anybody who hasn't seen this before. But uh, the rules here are players will have 30 or 60 seconds, depending on the round, to draw a Shadowverse card that's given to them. And the coaches have to correctly guess the card that is being drawn to the exact title. You can't just say like, oh, this is Rowan, right? You have to say, oh, this is the exact title of whatever Rowan card it is. Uh, players cannot give any vocal hints if they cannot say anything or they are disqualified. Uh, rounds number one and two two are 60 seconds so they've got a good amount of time to draw and guess but rounds three and four are only 30 seconds so it gets a lot more difficult uh, if you guess it under the time limit you get five points and the very fourth round is a very special round where there's going to be a single card they're all drawing and it's 15 points if you can guess it correctly which would be a huge boost to any of these teams and then we have points distributed on the favorite arts, like who we think had the best drawing for all of the judges. And the judges are me, Joe, Zones, Noir. And we actually have a very special guest here who I'm actually a huge fan of, and I've actually never met them before, but we have Forte, the incredible Shadowverse artist and other things artist, who will be uh, also judging who they think <laughs> that the best artist is. Forte, Forte. <laughs> welcome to the, to the buddy system. Are you here with us? Oh, yo, hey, what up? Can you hear me? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe, Maybe not. not. I don't know if I can hear they're, Forte. They're but... a bit shy. <laughs> <laughs> hey there. Hello. But for anybody who doesn't know Forte, uh, like I said, one of the uh, funniest artists of all time. Uh, I'm a I'm a big fan as we try to try to get them connected. We'll just talk about him more. Uh, you can see some of the incredible art right here. Uh, especially, I'm a huge fan of a lot of his animations. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the animations always crack me up. Uh, I think we were just, or I think Zones was just showing you the... Uh, the April Fool's joke one with the Rowan. Uh, Afforde, are you here with us now? Oh boy. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, hey. welcome. Hey. Welcome. Hey, yo, hey. Uh, nice to meet to be you. Here. We were just Looks discussing cool. your April Fool's joke, which I hear has a lot to do with <laughs> Rowan. So I'm kind of personally invested at this point. Yeah, that was a uh, project that we've been working very hard at at Dork Dragoons Incorporated. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, just as a reminder, uh, Forte is our guest judge, so it's going to be our fifth and final uh, point in judging our favorite artiste in this. So, uh, Forte, are you are you excited to watch what these uh, these VTubers are going to be drawing? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm sure uh, everyone's really good at drawing with MS Paint. Yeah, big tool that's <laughs> commonly used in the artist industry. <laughs> I think it adds a little bit of flair to it, though, you know, like there's a little you can tell and you're like, OK, this actually makes this better in its own weird it, way. It levels the playing uh, so field, I'm, I'm I guess, excited. in its own way, right? <laughs> For sure. You think so? Sure. But last time that we did this <laughs> event, there were some people who you're like, OK, hold on a minute. Hold on. This is not fair. What? How did you get so good at art? So I'm, I'm we'll, we'll see. The, the, the best drawings and the worst drawings are equally uh, as impressive, I think. I agree. And equally as entertaining. That's true. Absolutely. Okay, so let's head over to Pictionary and see, let's see these MS Paint Masters in action. Well, it looks like there's some, there's some warm-up drawings that have been going on over here. Oh my goodness. Wait, that, that's not, that's not Millie's actual card, right? Uh, no, is, I don't think so. I don't it think it is def is. definitely <laughs> is not, no. Yeah, I was really like, yeah. <laughs> No, but but this is can we care. can we start guessing that maybe oh, wait a minute wait a minute can anybody hear us are they drawing sus oh we can hear you I don't know if they can hear us yeah, yeah. yeah. they're practicing yeah, oh yeah okay. oh, oh, oh cheating boy. cheating preemptive drawing <laughs> no I'm just kidding can can everybody hear us uh, everybody from yeah. Nubisanji yeah yeah oh excellent excellent all right so you're all you all got your practicing right you're warmed up hey, you stretched your up. your drawing hand. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Dang. Oh, oh my shit. God, Millie. <laughs> a call is coming in already in the most competitive games. Pictionary. 
Oh my that's gosh, right. that's extremely toxic. Uh, we appreciate that on the oh, show. Uh, but just to, just to, to check with everybody, does every, everybody knows the rules, right? You you cannot give any vocal hints to your coaches. Mm. You have to draw it. It's sixty seconds for the first two rounds, and the second two rounds, it's thirty <clears> seconds. Uh, we'll we'll let you all know when the timer starts, and we'll start letting you know when uh, you know we start counting down, like halfway point, and then the final few seconds, and you got to stop drawing at the end of that. Uh, but we mm. we. Okay, so we are going to do one player at a time, uh, so we, oh. we can we can all watch. Uh, Rosemary will be our first player. Uh, in production, oh, do we have yeah. the cards ready? Yeah, I have my card ready. Oh, you have you have it already. Okay, okay, you answered before production did. Excellent. All right, so Rosemary, <laughs> uh, are you ready to start drawing? And is KSLVD ready to start guessing? Um, I'm 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 ready. KSLVD, I'm ready. Are you good? All right. KSLVD, you there? Oh, God. <laughs> Why am I first? Yes, okay. I'm ready. Okay, fantastic. <clears throat> All right, then we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. I'll count you down to it, okay? You, it's okay. time to draw in three, two, one. Draw. No. All right. Oh, gosh. Okay. No. Oh, wait, it didn't change color. Why is it not changing? Oh, wait, why is it not changing color? Not like this. Oh, God. Are we okay, muted? It's or? not changing color. <laughs> it's not changing color for some reason. Oh. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll paint it in. I'll paint right. it in after. I'm still beating. Okay. I miss paint is difficult. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on here. I can't really. Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I know it's forest. Uh, oh, nice art, one. Rose and me. Ooh. You're doing great. I know this one. Really? I don't know if you're being yeah. sarcastic Are or you, not. With you're things. down to 20 seconds. 15 <laughs> seconds. 20 seconds. Very light guide. Uh, is, is that it? I don't know. 10 seconds. Oh wait, very the timer froze. Guide. Was that it? Timer froze. That was it. That Yay! was it. it. It is very light. Oh, you got it. Oh. You nailed it. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, good job. Oh. Wow. Oh. Wow. Really fantastic. Preservation <laughs> from the PSLVD. That's actually a pretty obscure <laughs> card. I'm kind of impressed. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I. I. I mean, I'm a huge forest card player, and I just. I don't know any of the forest card press cards from like this expansion. They're so. Uh, fringe. But the lantern? Oh, it's really nice. The lantern was was hype. The hair is fantastic. Oh. Yeah. Well, it, I couldn't change colors for some reason. I couldn't. Yeah. I think you, I, you have it on color two. I think. Two, click, I think. That's click the, color one or click color one in the bar there, and then you can click a color, and now it should be that color. Oh. Okay. <laughs> My next. Well, apparently, you didn't even need it. it. Apparently, yeah. colors exactly. are really solid as black and white that monochrome. <laughs> yeah, just a handicap for everybody else. All right, all right. So first, first <laughs> points going to uh, Rosemi and KSLVD. Yeah, so we're gonna move on go. next to Millie and Potwasher. Millie and Potwasher, are you both ready to start drawing and guessing? Yes. Yo. To be honest, oh, I did not sweet. know that last card. <laughs> this is gonna be. <laughs> no, you, you have to bluff. You have to bluff, bluff that it. you know all the cards. Come on. You know what? <laughs> or maybe, maybe you're, maybe you're tricking good. people. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all because we'll of my beautiful art. Agrees, right? we'll one to one representation. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We got this. All right. All right. So I'm going to count you down to 60 seconds on the clock. Ready. Okay. Begin drawing in three, two, one, and draw. Okay. Oh. Mm, is that a head? Is that a. What, what is that? Uh. <laughs> huh. Maybe that's off or something. Beautiful Millie, uh, 10 out of yeah. 10. Let's go. Oh no, I don't know what this is. Is the uh, mic all I believe for you? Uh, uh, Just 30 seconds left on the clock. 30 ah! seconds? Oh. Uh, Probably one of those bronzy souls. <laughs> or something. Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> What is this? I, I honestly have no idea. Oh my god, is that like a life bulb? 15 seconds left. Green, green hair? I don't know any, what? What is green hair? It's not wind god. Come on, coach! Right. Five, really four, three, 
two, one, and... No guess. Oh, let's see what it was. Oh, I would never. Shining sister? Shining sister. I like the stab. Wait, really? My goodness. There are indeed very few. I thought that was a hand. Green hair. I, oh. you know, I totally see it, right? I see the staff, I see the green hair, and yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense. The staff oh, is, the is on point, for sure. <laughs> that's so tough. I don't even know what that, that card a, does. That's that is a hard card to draw, for sure. There's a lot of <laughs> detail in that yeah. one. No, the, the art's really good, honestly. Like, looking at the... What are you trying to say, picture. Coach? <laughs> the art, uh, <laughs> <my> knowledge. Huh? <laughs> Look, it's so close. Right. <laughs> what do you mean? I have the one. <laughs> we believe that you can work harder, Pot Watcher. We believe in you. Yeah, that, that was completely my fault. <laughs> but unfortunately, no points for that one. Uh, although uh, there may be points for the best art, you know, that's still uh, that's still a possibility. So uh, you're not off the board yet. Do not erase your drawings. Do not erase or no, change you your drawings. I have to mention that again. Yeah, because we're going to vote on them later. Uh, so it is now time for Ike and Momo Jelly to play. Are you both ready? <laughs> No, I'm, I'm scared. Terrified. We're both scared. <laughs> Sounds like they're ready. All right. Counting you down. <laughs> Three, two, one, oh and oh God, oh God. do your best straw. Oh, God. Oh, God. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, this is going to be a face, I guess. <laughs> okay. So those look like elf ears. Okay. That's somewhere to start. Uh... <laughs> How do you how do you draw eyes? I can't draw eyes. <laughs> That's Agol Senpai from Nidu Sanji. Oh Thirty seconds left. <laughs> You're halfway oh there. Uh... Oh. I love that Ike. You're doing such a good job. Oh, they're, they're Fifteen seconds. Uh, fairy tale prince. Um, small arms. Uh... Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, Ooh, four, color? three, two, one, like and time is over. <laughs> oh. oh, I think I know this one. Wait. Can we get a reveal, please, on what Let's the card what is. actually is? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not even gold. Nailed <laughs> <laughs> the necktie. Nailed the hair. <laughs> Nailed the expression. Oh, that, that, that's not in rotation. The proportions may be a little bit misleading. That's a tough card to draw, my good. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think the pose is dead on. Yeah, like, yeah, the pose, yeah, yeah, the, pose the shape is, oh, is there nice for sure. Like. The clothes are there. <laughs> Wow. Well, you know, that was a tough one. That was a tough one for sure. Um, I certainly can't draw. But unfortunately now, still the only person who has uh, gotten the points, Rizemi and uh, KSLVD. So we're on to our final team here. This, of course, is going to be Shu and Frost. Are you both ready? Is yes. My yes, I am. I, I do hear your microphone, whoever just said that. I think it was Frost. But uh, if you're both yeah, ready to go, then I will be counting it down. All right, excellent. All right, then we've got there's 60 seconds of the clock in three, two, one, and draw. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh my god. It's all right. Pink air. Uh. It. It. What? Is oh, I. Wow. What? What is. Wow. Crazy with the mouse. I think we gotta distract him. Wow, that's. Oh. No, no, no. Chu? Uh, Chu, you're amazing. 30 seconds My left. Hands shaking, guys, please. Chu? 30 seconds hey, left. Chu, you're so uh, talented. No, I'm a Chu, think about <laughs> banana. It looks like a lenny face. What? 20 seconds. Chu? No, I'm not drawing Chu, a banana. Best. What is this we are a banana. Chu, you're the best. No, we are a um, banana. Chu, you're so great. <laughs> 10 seconds. Is this fairy slugger? And five, four, so. no, three, two, one, oh. and oh. Brr, unfortunately, oh, no. what is this time? What a drawing, though. 
Can we please get the reveal? Let's see what it is. Oh, Nelcha. Oh, that looks so difficult to draw. That's very hard. Uh, Very hard. This is a little too fashionable, but that was a very, very good attempt. About as good as it can get. Uh, We got the tiny hat. We got the flower in the the hair. We got... I thought you guys are so quick at drawing. Yeah. I was actually really yeah, there's good. just a lot of lines in that one. It was a, lot it was a good lines. attempt, but mm-hmm. that does mean that the only person getting the uh, the points for guessing, the only team, is still going to be Brozemi, Team Brozemi. <gasps> so uh, congratulations <gasps> to them. They are going to get uh, a few points, but now it's time to award some extra points where all of us uh, here on the the, the council will uh, decide who's going to get our, I believe it's two points each for our favorite art. So again, remember, it's not just about getting it correctly. It's about getting it awesome. And uh, I got to say, all of your drawings are awesome. But uh, why don't we just kind of go in order of things and start with Joe? Sure. I, you know, this is this is tough because there's all kinds of things that I like about each each drawing. I, I like the the no holes barred of, of Millie's sketch. And I, I again, I like the hair and the wings of Rose and me. Uh, the the art quality on Shu is just fantastic, but I, I think I'm going to throw my vote to to Ike. I, I love I love the the Mysterian mogul. I feel like I feel like here's what happened here is that like a Mysterian mogul is probably like a, a unscrupulous businessman, right? So you kind of made him look on the outside like he probably looks on the inside, and I appreciate that. I really appreciate the sort of analogous drawing here. So that's that's my vote going to Ike for this one. Oh, okay, uh, let's go then. next. Oh, no, they're not pity points. They're this is the main points. points. I'm telling you. you. If you get all the votes, you get like twice as much oh, yeah. as if you actually guess These correctly. Are worth Nobody more than to guess correctly. It correctly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move, uh, let's move on next to Noir. Yeah, I like Joe said, there's something that I like about each of these drawings. I think I'm going to have to give it to the Lenny face on the bottom right, though. Uh, shoes drawing there. Um, that was a that was just a very tough card to draw. And honestly, like, uh, I really like the way that you approach the hair with the waves. And honestly, the face kind of makes me laugh. So, I'm giving my points. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It is a good face. Faces are very, very difficult. <laughs> yeah, it, it all adds up. Trust me, it all adds up. Especially when we get to the next mini game. Uh, just, just wait for that. It's gonna be a lot of points. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then let's move on now to zones. All right. I, you know, yeah, I mean, there's definitely something to like about each one, but I think uh, overcoming a uh, unintentional monochrome restriction to still get the message across and, um, you know, really, really good, um, you know, land, you know, I said it again, the the lantern really, um, I I mean, and, and I really think the, the depiction of her face. So of the fair light guide's face, I, I think Rose me, um, drawing a fair like guy Let's is definitely go! what uh, I'm a fan of. Yeah, it's a it's a strong um, one. Hello. You're just drawing the core <laughs> <me>. pieces. <laughs> 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 maybe eventually, maybe eventually. No, I'm kidding. All right, so I'm actually gonna go to my own vote before we get to our yes, very yes, special guest judge. It. Uh, so I am actually I, okay. I actually was gonna vote for Millie honestly because the the the. The core parts of it are perfectly there, you know, with the staff and the uh, the hair. But honestly, the biggest thing to me, I love that face. I don't know what it is about it. It's kind of mischievous, but I like the face. That's the most important it's part. Like so my vote goes mischief. to Millie. Yes, oh exactly. <laughs> For sure. Well, that leaves one more vote. Our, our professional artist. Give us your professional judging oh. opinion. Forte. All righty. Um, looking, at, looking at all these pieces here, to be honest, you're all winners in my book. But I think I can only choose one, so... Um... Honestly, I'm a big fan of the bottom right, because it looks like they have a faux <gasps> six-pack. And I feel like that oh, adds go. a lot to oh, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a powerful energy radiating from it, so I gotta give it to them. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, that brings us to the scoreboard. Let's see how that stacks up after our first round of Pictionary. Rosamie with seven, Millie is smart with two, Ike and the Jiggly Peach for two, and Frosted Flames for four. This is still anybody's game. Uh, Pretty close, pretty close board. Uh, Rosamie coming, edging out on top with the the successful guess. I think that's really where you get, you get that power from. But there's still, there's still two rounds to go. 
Yeah, but now all the players know that they can just draw six packs on their uh, on their, their characters so they have to draw. On their, yeah, yeah. You got to play the judges, you know. You got to you got to play the game here. But no, now it's time for, for round number two. Let's get to move on with this. Uh, so once again, we're going to go in the same order. We're going to start with Rosemi and KS LVD. Time to see if they can repeat their success from round one. Who's going to run away with things if uh, if KS LVD has that knowledge? Uh, great guess, by the way. That was tough. Solid. So are you both ready? <clears throat> Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, then here we go. Uh, still second, 60 seconds on the clock for this round. Still in round two. So it's going to be 60 seconds on the clock in three, two, one, and go. Gosh, okay. Okay. Um, oh, the colors? Uh-huh. The colors are coming out. Oh, gosh. Okay, the hair. <laughs> okay. Uh... Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is so hard! Oh my gosh! 30 seconds left, halfway done. Oh. Ooh. Oh my god, this is like so hard to draw. 20 seconds. I remember, you can right. just throw out guesses. Okay. Oh. Whoa. And 10, 10 seconds left. 9, 8, so 7, goodness. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, oh. 1, and it will not be a repeat, uh, unfortunately. Oh, no, yeah. But, but uh, what a detailed drawing, honestly. Ooh. Yeah, it was a really is, a detailed one. Whoa. Yeah, there's a lot going on in that card. Probably a great drawing, but I don't know. Get it. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's alright, you already got the points from the first time That's all that's important <laughs> And yeah, I think these, <laughs> these generally uh, get tougher as time goes on So uh, this is going to really put mm. everybody's drawing skills to the test uh, But again, no points You're still in the lead overall though Time to see if everybody else can uh, catch up by getting these five points So next we're moving on once again to Millie and Potwasher Are you both ready? Yep Okay all right, I believe in you, Pop. That you can do not. better. Yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, I miss you, Pop Watcher. All right, so 60 seconds once again on the clock. In three, two, one, go. What? what? I can't draw. What? Hello? Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> fine, 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 fine. Green. Oh, man, green's a tough color. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Uh... I'm doing my best, okay? Hold on. Oh. The colors are like... Red is generally like blood craft oh or something. So 30 I'm seconds. Through there. Um, Maybe forest craft or something. Hmm. Is this my goddess? No. The fairy healer? <laughs> no. <laughs> 15 <laughs> seconds. Harvester. No, that's not it. 10 seconds. Oh, man. I, I feel like I should know this. 5, 4, the green, 3, green hair. 2, 1, and time is up. These are tough. That, that's a really good picture, up. though, to be honest. Like. Ooh. Yeah, close? competitive players just only care about the stats. It's all about the, <laughs> <laughs> the facts. And the... It's okay. Like I'm you have, you have to practice for cards. this. <laughs> no, that, you know, last time that we did the show, we actually had a team practice Pictionary beforehand. Wait, actually, Momo, was it your team? Whoa. If you can hear me. No, no, no. That Maybe was it was your team. Okay, okay. Oh, it was Dev's team. It was, Dev's team. It was Faye, Dev. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Faye, yeah, yeah. So we actually had a team that practiced Pictionary, which is the most like uh, like the sweatiest what? thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. But uh, it paid <laughs> off. <to> actually, <laughs> it paid off. <laughs> so so we're all learning now. You know, Pictionary is the true uh, the true competitive game. But all right, still so far, still only one correct guess in this entire game. Wow. But again, the the the, the drawing uh, the drawing matters the most. So moving on now down again to Ike and Momo. Are you both ready? Oh, as ready as yeah. I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good luck. 
60 seconds in three, two, one, go. Ooh, another one. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Uh, uh, Amogus? Is it orb <laughs> cancer? <laughs> Ooh, this is already? This is already? Uh, <laughs> uh, 25 seconds. I have no idea what's going on. How close is it going to get? I'm so sorry. Okay. It's not Whoa. an easy card. Oh. Not easy. <laughs> kind of does look like 15 a seconds. Okay. I think we're just trained to look uh, like a at this point. <laughs> Calamity's Genesis. Uh... Five, four, three, <laughs> two, oh. one, and time oh, is up. Oh, time is up. What is this? This is a complicated card. I don't card. know where the Like, there's so cards. much going on. Okay. Wow. Oh, oh that's Whoa. Cool. Oh. Okay. Oh. Approach. Why didn't you draw the person, yeah. Ike? <laughs> because I thought of one like, oh, God, okay, these the seem emblematic of this card. Maybe this will be easier to guess because I can't draw people. Hey, that's a fair strategy. <laughs> like, no, whatever no, pops yeah, out. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good strategy. Because uh, with MSP, <laughs> a lot of stick people are just going to look the same anyway. So mm. I think going for, you said the emblematic parts of the card, I think I like yeah. that a lot. That is yeah. solid. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, not not quite solid enough. But I, again, I, I feel like the uh, tense. Ah. All right, so moving on to our our fourth and final pair. Please, somebody guess something. I believe in you all. Just start uh, yelling your name. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. You can you all can <laughs> guess as many <laughs> times as you want, times. coaches. Yeah, exactly. Just start reading I'll off the entire try. set. Go through the list. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. right. Shoe and Frost, are you ready? Yes, yes, I am. All right, and then one minute on the clock. Three. Two, one, go. Okay. This looks like. Oh, oh. Um. Is this Magna Saber? I guess not. Oh my God, um. geometry. Oh my God, Shu is just yeah, using colors and stuff. Simple geometry. Uh, Magna transformation. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's oh, it. Oh, oh, another oh, correct oh, guess. Oh, nice. Wow. Second oh, correct guess. Fantastic. One correct guess per round. Wow. He actually got. It was on the right track right from the really? get go. Yeah. Really Immediately the guessing beginning. the Magna yeah. Saber is like, wait, is that not it? Then there's got to be one other thing with this level of blue geometry, right? Of, of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really good guess. Well done. Solid and guess. Good drawing too. Half, yeah. Less than or just about half the time. Yeah, there was plenty of time. You should just keep drawing for the next 20 seconds just to see what you can make, you know? <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. uh, <laughs> But great job. Uh, you actually get, like, barely any drawing. Again, you drew too fast. You guessed it too quickly. But that does mean that oh, we yeah. at least have one team getting the five points per each of the rounds so far. And now it's time, again, for the extra points from the judges. We're going to go in the same order. Uh, again, everybody's drawings are great. But, Joe, let's start with you. So I really like the idea of drawing the, the the quintessential elements of the card rather than focusing on the, you know, like, okay, wow, this is this is another anime girl. You know, that was a great idea. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go for the anime girl on this one and uh, give my vote to, to Millie. I, I love what you did with the hair. I love like the, 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 the shy pointing at your face gesture uh, with just a couple lines in MS Paint. I think it was really well done. So that gets my vote. Thank you. <laughs> You're now my favorite. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, now everybody's just going to vote for Millie uh, to, to curry favor. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, moving on to Noir. Will you will you uh, succumb to the, the temptation? Uh, I was thinking about it. until I was like, in my head, I was like, I will probably vote for Millie until... I saw shoes drawing again. I think this one, uh, it, it just like, it's so efficient. It just captures the most important mm -hmm. parts of the card right away. And not even like by necessarily drawing it like exactly one-to-one, -one, but by making it all about like the simple and blocky shapes, the geometry, 
because uh, that's exactly how Magna Saber looks like. So communicating that across really efficiently, that was really impressive to me. So my vote is going to shoot once again. Effective, yes, efficient, thank you. dictionarying for sure. <laughs> Zones, what do you think? All right. Well, you know, I have to, I, I have to follow up on what Noir said, but I think one thing that really, um, what's impressive about Shu's drawing is not only getting the overall um, shapes in, like the, obviously the geometry, but the um, even some of the finer details, like the uh, the circle in the middle. I think like if I, you know, I had, you know, I might have been because I took a little. A little longer looking at the card, but the uh, the sort of hole in the chest for the robot in Magna Transformation is kind of one of those things that can escape notice at the first, but it, it lines up so well in identifying the particular card, and I think um, it helps distinguish like that it is in the process of transforming. Um, so yeah, I've got to give this one to Shu as well. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> wow, getting getting nice. points and getting multiple judge. Points. Yeah. That's uh, that's like a, a big lead here. Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Uh, but I think <laughs> it means it's my turn now to vote. And it I is. have to say, I, I feel like nobody's been talking about Rosamie's picture. So I'm going to vote for Rosamie because that is, first of all, I got to say, like the hardest card of all time to draw. Uh, but mm-hmm. I think it per- portrays it very well, especially the, the like the little dude in the bottom right who's like covering his eyes. I think that's perfect. I think that that is exactly what that looks like. And uh, if somehow yeah. there were the ability to like, draw like 8,000 light rays, it would have been uh, a little bit easier to recognize. But I think it's perfect. My vote goes to <laughs> Rosemi. Yeah, let's go. Nice. Amazing. And that just leaves our guest judge, Forte. What do you think? All right. Um... Looking at all these drawings, I think it's great that everybody went for the central piece in every card, uh, except for the bottom left. But what I see here is amazing Sigma male energy to ignore the anime girl in the middle and to draw everything around it. That's incredible. I gotta give it to Ike. I agree. I agree. I agree. Stay on that grind, sir. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing. Well, then we'll let's take a look at how we're shaping up here. Uh, we've got a little bit more of a spread of points, but still, still anyone's game. Bros and me with nine total. Millie is smart with four. Ike and the Jiggly Peach with four as well. And Frosted Flames with a big comeback coming from four, getting nine points in round two, bringing them all the way up to 13 and putting them in the lead. Yeah, Which that means is, that's a pretty big lead. It is. It is a pretty big lead, but there's still one more round of Pictionary to play. And this one is a little bit more difficult because... Well, te- oh, te- no, go two ahead. Rounds. Sorry, sorry. Two I rounds. didn't mean to interrupt you, but there are there are two rounds left. There's a three and a four. Three and a four. Continue what you were saying. Now we're going to get the... Um, this is the 60 second, or is it a 30 second? Now, now you've confused me. Uh, no, this is the thirty second. This is so the thirty second. Both of the yeah. Sorry, this is a really old, big, confusing thing, but we'll we'll get a we'll get a handle on it here. So the th- round three and four are both thirty seconds, uh, and there's something very special about this. I'm not sure if we're we're allowed to say what's special about the art in this one, uh, but production, let me know if if I can. Uh, but again, they only have thirty seconds this time, and it is. I mean, you you've seen how difficult it is to draw within uh, sixty seconds. So thirty seconds, it's going to be tough. Plus, there's something a little bit special. Uh, uh, but we're just going to start off with this. You know, we got to We got to zoom through this. There's more games to play. Rosemi and KSLVD, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. All right. Then it's going to be just 30 seconds of the clock in three, Ooh. two, one. Draw fast. Somebody. Oh, my God. Oh, man. 30 seconds. Jeez. Oh, Oh. Whoa. Whoa. 15. 15 already. 15? Oh my god. 10 seconds. Ah. This is insanely difficult. Oh. Four. Three. Oh. Supersonic breakthrough. Supersonic breakthrough. Supersonic breakthrough. Oh, he did it. Oh, he got nailed it. it. You got it with like one second left. Fantastic. Well done. <laughs> Two for three but, on the guesses. But you can no. see here, the, the little specialty here is the art. This art from, of course, our very special guest, 
Forte. So you can see the uh, the Forte supersonic breakthrough right there. But wow, that was impressive. In 30 wow. seconds? Super impressive. All right. Now, can everybody else match up to that? Because that is that is not going to be easy. Uh, Ooh, Millie and Pot Washer, do, do you think you can do it? N no. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a guess to what the topic is. So I think future coaches will uh, probably be thinking about this as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't uh, well, know how to make use of that. Let's, let's see if your theory is correct, uh, because we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. So get ready in three, two, okay. one, draw. Oh, no. Oh, what is this? Oh. 20 seconds. Oh, fast. Wait, what? Uh, oh, I feel like colors. I... 10, Ten seconds. seconds left. What? Five, oh. four, three, two, guess anything. One, and... No! What, what is this? I'm really bad at this. Let's see what it is. <laughs> it's wow. Venus. The sunlit hero. Ooh. Honestly, that's good. That's a, that's a good picture. That yeah. is good. Oh. Thanks. I did my best. The pictures oh. have all been really good. It's just like, I, uh, yeah. You gotta, you gotta practice this more next time, Paul Watcher. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> next time. <laughs> so you, you all got a ton of points from winning already, so you get that little bit of leeway. But let's move down now to our third team. It's gonna be Ike and Momo. Are you ready? Okay. I hope let's so. Do this. <laughs> All right, only 30 seconds. Change your strategy accordingly because you got to draw fast in three, two, one, go. Twenty seconds. Uh, uh. 10 seconds. Penguin Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> and time oh. is up. Oh. <laughs> let's, let's see. <laughs> Good face. Oh. <laughs> wow, it's Hozumi oh, Enchanting Hostess. That yeah, actually, yeah. Lo the fish looks oh, so good. That fish oh, looks so does. good. Yeah. yeah, it does. It does look really good. That's now cute. I see it. If someone held a gun to my head and was like, draw a girl riding a fish, I'd be like, just pull the trigger. Like, I, like, I, I, I'm doing. Is that not what I'm doing? Could not do it. I don't even have oh, that's a, in my collection. A, I like that the. I like that the face is like, uh, like kind of just floating in midair, you know? It's, it's like, oh, there's a person here. I don't know anything else about them, but uh, I do appreciate that one. I, I actually can't believe that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, I can't believe that we actually had somebody guess these. This is tough. 30 seconds is short. Very difficult. But oh. we do have one more team to try and make the 30 second limit. That's going to be, of course, Shoe okay. and Frost. Are you ready? <clears throat> yep. Whenever Let's you go. are. All right. Then go in three, two, one. Draw. Okay, uh, is that Chris beyond the patch? 20 seconds. Probably not. Uh, what is that? Oh, oh, uh, entanglement. 10 seconds. Nope. Five, four, three, Two, one, and no. time is up. Not quite. I see where you're going with it. What is yeah. it? The pineapple. It's the pineapple. mermaid. <laughs> the pineapple mermaid. Oh, 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 facial oh, expression. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, that, the tail, the face, and the fruits. I think those are the most important parts of this honestly, picture. Honestly, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a good attempt it was, it was good drawings honestly from everybody this time I think this is the most solid set of drawings that we've had so far yeah. out of all of them <laughs> I agree uh, I, 
I, I'm excited to get Forty's thoughts on all of these uh, these drawings of his own drawings, but we'll get to that last. Uh, we'll start with the the usual voting with Joe. I, I'm just like, girl riding a fish gets my vote. It's just it's fantastic. The fish is fantastic. The floating face, it just gets me. You know, I feel like there's some depth to this <laughs> painting that's yet to be discovered. That like 50 years from now, someone's going to discover this on the computer and be like this. This speaks about something in the 21st century. And that would just look at it. The fish is fantastic. I love it. So that, that gets my vote. Thank you. All right. So you're saying frame it. You're saying print it out I'll and frame, frame it. it and save it for the next century. Yeah. Save it, put, put it, put it in, in the museum. Museum. <laughs> And they'll look back and I'll be like, will ponder its meaning. Yes. They'll, they'll try to figure out its secret code. All right. But <laughs> Noir, what is your vote? Okay, so these are all really great drawings, honestly, but I'm gonna have to go with uh, Rosamie's supersonic breakthrough. So the Raumia that she drew actually perfectly captures uh, the raw emotion that she is facing <laughs> facing up against uh, the Shanna there. The Shanna who in this depiction looks a bit like a dog, but that's okay because the you know the hair at the top is there. The uh, the, the color is. <laughs> like acceptable <laughs> um <laughs> and i mean this is a an evolution from being monochrome so uh good use of color i mean it was certainly good enough um for kslvd to get it uh yeah just really solid drawing uh got the faces generally right and uh, good use of color let's go uh, you know, one thing that I gotta say about it before we move on, I cannot unsee on Rosemi's drawing that the you're, you're arm gonna say kind the same looks, thing that I'm thinking. Looks like Go a big it. chin, right? It does. And it's like a mouth. I it was <laughs> oh, it was an optical <laughs> illusion too. <laughs> Oh my god, he's going well, I thought the Rami on the left was like, oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can't unsee it. I mean, oh, I see yeah. like an uh, elephant. I don't know what you're talking about with the chin. Okay, I, let's move on. Okay, yeah, we already got your Noir. We don't need it here anymore. Zones. Just picture Romeo with like a really big jawline there. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Just yeah. Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, Chad Romeo. Uh, All right, uh, so, 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 give us, give us your thoughts. Give us your vote. All right. Um, you know, the supersonic breakthrough at supersonic pace. I was uh, was really impressed with, but. You know what's even faster it was uh, Shu's ability to draw that pineapple, and uh, I, I mean, you know, it may not be the most detailed pineapple, but it really captures the raw essence of the pineapple. And you know, for that, <laughs> I've got to give it to Shu, the, uh, the tropical mermaid holding the pineapple with the uh, with the facial expression. Huge fan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I spent that, time that face does look perfect. <laughs> and the pineapple. It's all perfect. All right. So my vote Thank before you. we get to, uh, I think I want to, I want to hear a longer breakdown from, from Forte after me, but uh, my vote easily going to Ike. That picture, not only is it an amazing fish, but that face, it's like, it's staring through my soul. You know, it look at that expression. <laughs> it does. It sees something that I can't even perceive. Uh, so that face alone is, is magic enough. Plus the fact that it's riding a fish. So my vote goes to Ike for sure. This mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. Solid reasoning. Forte, what do you think? Um, oh my god, these are uh, <laughs> uh, these are incredible. Uh, it's truly a blessing to be able to have my drawings elevated to a completely new level. Um, I would I have like an essay I could write about each and every one of these because there's just so much to say. But uh, I will have to give my vote to Cetus, the one that Millie drew. Because honestly, it has the same sort of menacing aura that I was trying to go for when drawing my version. And I really like that. Ah, thank you. You're now my favorite. No, oh, hi. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's a, a wonderful compliment to give from both of you, actually. Uh, copying <laughs> somebody's art is very tough. But uh, yeah, let's let's see who's who's in the lead after this. Let's see how we're going on this one. Oh, wow, really neck and neck, Bros me and Frost and Flames. Bros me coming in here at, okay. with 16, Million Potwasher at six, Ike and the Jiggly Peach at eight, and uh, Frosted Flames at 15. We're then one point, one point of victory here in Pictionary. Oh. So round four is an important one, and we'll see. I don't know, I, I can't do math live, or really not live, so I'm not sure who can make it if, if eight points can, can take the victory. I think... 
I think, I think they can. But, yeah, technically. But of course, there's you know there's still voting too, so there's still a little right. chance for I'm anybody to be. There's enough points yeah. up for grabs that this could turn around and still be anybody's game because it is. Oh yeah, uh, for sure, and especially with the rest of the day. But we are on our final round now, and this is going to be a very special final round, uh, just to kind of reiterate the uh, rules to all of our players today. So everybody is drawing, and everybody has the same card. The first, okay, the first coach oh. to guess it correctly gets potentially <laughs> fifteen points. But uh, I, I reckon this is going to be a pretty tough one. So this is a very special one. It's only 30 seconds on the clock, just like the last one. Uh, so I, is, I don't even know how I can ask if everybody's ready. You know what? If you're not ready, then uh, too bad. You're not playing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you missed your spot. But uh, this is, again, this is for potentially a ton of points. And I'm really curious to see how the coaches will uh, deal with this one. But... We are going to put 30 seconds on the clock. So everybody get ready. Every single person at the same time. Every team. And then we're going to go in okay. three, two, one, and go. Everyone's starting with the blue. Hmm. 20 seconds. Is it click later? <laughs> Assault night? Uh, full blast gunner. Ten seconds. Everybody's guessing. Aconite, Nobody's Paladin. getting it. Five, four, three, Amatazu two. Slowing answer. One and time mm. is time. up. <laughs> I got and no. Way. What was it? First, I have to say the speed of drawing between everybody at the exact same time. Pretty different. Pretty funny. But <laughs> I do have to say, I do believe this is a little bit of a trick. But can we please see the card that this was? Swift Speed Quick Blader. So we were close. The reason, but the reason why this is difficult, Wait, this is not a card that is in the game. This was a this was a trick round, I believe, for everybody because Ooh. this is the card from the next set that we get to reveal here live <laughs> on stream. Oh, so sorry, oh. coaches, you weren't able to get it, but we wanted Wait, to see who can draw it the best. Quick later. Yes, but it's not no, I didn't say normal Swift quick later. You, it's got to oh. be the full name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it has to be the full name. That's why that rule is in there. This was tough, but we do have to give a big <laughs> notice to Momo for basically guessing it, right? As close yeah. as it's going to get. Uh, but that does mean that we get to reveal this card live on stream. And I think, uh, Noir, did you actually do a write-up? Was it you that did the write-up for this card? I did. Wow. Uh, really straightforward card. <laughs> Only got a few words, but it has the best single word that you could possibly have. Storm. So that lets you hit face as soon as you play the card. And not only that, co only costs two play points and on evolve gets to attack twice per turn with no drawback. That's kind of insane. You give this a singular buff. Uh, Forge Weaponry is a basic card, by the way. That's plus four, plus four if you have Rally 10. That is 12 damage, potentially. So that's pretty crazy. Expect to see this card in the next set in Ro Roar of the Godworm. A great aggro card, a pretty useful rally card as well, potentially, just because there's so many cards that synergize with it. But because it's like such a straightforward card that has such high damage potential, you could even see this in like some combo decks in the future as well. Maybe even the next coming of Balian Sword. Uh, that, that's a that's a dreaded time for sure. Speaking mm. of combos, there's one card that's been kind of um, a bit lackluster in current rotation that I think combos really well with this and I mean I you know I'm not to steal anyone's thunder but it, the there's a Mars card right now that right is, um, mm -hmm. Here, that, well, right well, well let's talk about the card a little bit later because I mean I know there's a lot yeah. we want to talk about about the card but we've got I mean all of these wonderful Ninja Sanji and VTubers here and they've uh, they've got uh, drawings that we need to talk about too you know I mean okay of course I'm sorry we scammed you all uh, sorry to get trolled, and this, especially all the coaches. But uh, like I said, there's still points on the line. It was kind of just a test to see who could draw. And uh, I, I do have to say that, uh, you know, some of these are a little bit more complete, but it's time for us to give our votes. Thank you all for, for uh, being our little uh, trick path to revealing this card. But y'all get to be here first and help reveal us uh, the, the one of the first cards from the next set. But let's start with Joe, with uh, what you think 
is the best of these drawings. Or your favorite. There's not a best. It's art. It's subjective. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's so much going on in each of them that I, I like. I love the intensity of Rosamie's. I, I like I like the lack of intensity of shoes. <laughs> this kind of looks like I don't know. He might be like he might be in the kitchen, uh, just making a, a ratatouille or something. Uh, and just the intense artistic, raw artistic talent of Ike. Like that looks like a classical study on. Like look at it. <laughs> like it's it's just there's like an actual like Renaissance like double line sketches in there. Um, but I'm a fan of chaos in all of its forms, so my vote's going with Millie because there's just like, it, that's chaos. There's chaos happening in that drawing all over the place. So many of the people in the drawing got into the, into the I'm sorry, so many people in the card got into the drawing. So there was just mad chaos and efficiency there. There's so many card elements that you managed to cram in there in 30 seconds. So that gets my vote. Thank you. Chaos is my middle name. So Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Believable. All right, uh, Noir, let's move on to your vote. Yeah, so I think there's a pretty clear-cut answer for me. And, you know, since I was the one who worked on you know, the reveal originally, I have you know, a, a little bit more insight into, you know, what I think this card is going to do. And I think it's going to induce quite a few existential crises across the board once it comes out. And but I, I'm going to give my vote to Ike because this picture really does invoke that feeling of, like, where am I? Who am I? Am I alive? It, it, it really gives me that sense of foreboding dread that I'm sure a lot of people will be facing when they get hit by Swiftly Quick Later Forge Weaponry on turn. <laughs> existential crisis is right <laughs> you know what's kind of funny if you combine this this picture and your last one it would fit right this is the court the torso for the face from the last picture yeah, oh, yeah. No way. it was just part two so right we just, oh my god if you're Whoa. drawing in layers oh like god. a real artist there, you know there's too many layers for us to even perceive on this plane <laughs> oh all right all right god. zones zones yeah, so it's your turn I, i'm a big fan of the violent stick figure genre animation um a animation genre from like the mid early 2000s that's but... exactly what i was thinking <laughs> but i have to say um the emotion captured in rosemies really shows uh you know i think i think he encaptures how you feel if you were surrounded by enemies that you're trying to deal with while you know holding two swords um dubious use and so i've got to give that my point to rosemi here yeah <laughs> let's go all right for my vote i think that rosemi's picture not only does it kind of portray like a good emotion but it also looks like uh let's just say Swift Speed Quick Blader from the Swift Speed Quick Blader May Cry series. Uh, so I am <laughs> very much a fan of that one. It's almost an exact oh. control. Line. I'm not even joking. Uh, but uh, yeah, we don't have to worry about that one. But anyway, my vote's going to Rosamy. Let's move on to Forte. Forte, your final, your final thoughts on all of these. <laughs> all right. Oh my God, all these are amazing. I really feel the essence of battle in three of them at least. But I gotta say that one <laughs> remaining one. In the bottom left, it's just built different. <laughs> I've seen this body form in my dreams. I wake up every morning wanting to look like that, to be honest. There's only one thing that guys want, and it's to look exactly like that. So I gotta give my vote there. <laughs> Agreed on that one too. Agreed on that one too. Yeah, can, can vouch. Agreed. No face, all body. It's the, the optimal yeah. form. Uh-huh, 100%. <laughs> all right, well, that is all of the points distributed. And now we can see it here. Joe, what do we got? Looks like Rosamie is on top with 20 million, million pot washer with eight. Ike and Jiggly Peach, 12. And Frosted Flames, 15. I was I was a nail biter between the, the 16 and 15 points there. But, uh... Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of votes got tossed to Brosimi in that last round for the intense uh, intensity of expression <laughs> on the drawing <laughs> face. Oh man, that was great! And th thank you guys again for for bearing with us during the uh, the prank round. You really helped us out there. But all in all, <laughs> excellent art from 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 all of you. It was really really fantastic. Thanks for being good sports. 
Thank you. No <laughs> thank you. Of course. And also <laughs> thank you to Forte you. for coming out and judging uh, new renditions of your, your, your work. Oh, yeah. yeah and of course, we're excited to see you come you back for, for uh, of course, the uh, next menu. Oops, sorry. Continue. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I just wanted to thank everyone for being able to draw my drawings and uh, really bring them to a cooler place. Absolutely. Well, we're here to be around for our next mini game as well, so we look forward to keeping you on the show for the rest of the day. Uh, you guys, our VTubers and coaches, it's time for you to take a break because we got some more games coming up this afternoon. Yeah, and uh, a lot of fun stuff too. I think actually coming up next, we do have the uh, we have the the super cool team battle going on. Also, I just want to apologize. I talked over four day, but four days kind of like we got four day remoting in from like a satellite in space, you know. And uh, so there's a little bit of delay. So I actually talked over, but uh, I'm really excited for this next match. Those were all amazing drawings. That's that that never fails to disappoint. It's always such a, uh, especially if you have like people who are not the best artists. I always love that. But that's even um, better. You don't want quality yeah. art in a competition like that it's just you're just like okay now you're showing off <laughs> yeah it's like okay hold on are you a professional artist what's going on here uh which we've definitely had before but uh, i'm excited for the chaos of the uh the next event which is going to be you know all the teams that uh that were all together they're breaking up and now they have to fight each other because it's going to be the uh the coaches versus the players and finally at least for a moment you know all of the uh vtubers here today all the nijisanji crew are going to be on the same team so they're they're not going to be trying to take each other out they get to uh we get to see if that's any more or less chaotic i think between them Absolutely. I can't tell if this is like a, the end of Act 2 where like all the relationships fall apart and they end up fighting each other or if this is the end of Act 3 because, you know, like the coaches are the real villains. You know what I mean? And like the, all the VTubers kind of got together and like, no, this is this is where we're going. We've got to we've got to defeat the big bad. And that just happens to be the coaches. I don't know. So, uh, all right. So we've got another giveaway that we can talk about. Um, we are giving away tons of card packs all day. Just tweet at us with hashtag SV Buddy System and you get entered for a chance to win a bunch of cool stuff. You get digital card packs or some physical promo cards. The art in Shadowverse is phenomenal. And to see the art of Shadowverse on actual physical cards is super cool. I've got a couple of them back in my booth back there uh, and they all look amazing. Our current winner that we're drawing for the promo cards is at Ray and Kai. Ray and Kai, congratulations. You have won one set of Shadowverse promo cards. That's going to look real cool somewhere in your place for, for sure. The art is amazing. So, guys, we've got a little bit of a, a break coming up here before our round two, match one, the team match. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah. This is going to be a crazy one because I've seen both of these decks. We've all seen both of these uh, pre-prepared specialized decks. And mm -hmm. let me just say, even though it's players versus coaches, uh, it might be one-sided, but not for the side you expect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it feels like it's like, it's like we're in a cooking show and like, nobody knows what ingredients they're going to get. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah so yeah. yeah basically the players are getting you know the real gourmet like the the expensive <laughs> caviar the and the coaches are dumpster diving like yeah. that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's that's the way it should be i think it's going to be a great great match yeah on, on top of that too uh we they also have like a little bit of a uh how do i put it like a like a handicap but uh, kind of for both teams because Actually, everybody's going to be controlling the same computer at the same time. All four people on both sides. So on top of the fact that it's going to be, you know, like, uh, what should we do? What should we do? Like somebody can just do something. And uh, I kind of expect <laughs> that we might see a little bit from the players, them trolling each other. But uh, Absolutely. yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll see that later. I'm excited. OK, guys, <laughs> that's it for, for the first part of this show. We're going to take about a 10 minute break. Remember to tweet hashtag SV Buddy System for a chance to win some card packs. That's also how you're going to pitch your questions to the VTubers that we'll get to later in the show. And you better stay tuned because this team match is going to be absolutely fantastic. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you in about 10 minutes. The sky writhes in pain, grieving, clouded by tears. Heaven quakes before its ruler, calamity incarnate. 
catastrophe. Reborn. The end is nigh, but not inevitable. So stand proud, and we will weather this storm. Shed your tears, bear your blade, and don the hero's mantle. Your legend begins. Now make the world listen! The Godworm dictates creation and destruction. But we determine our destinies! The Hobbit, Supreme Dragon. No longer shall you desecrate our home! Roar of the God War! The call to arms echoes. Somewhere hidden between life and death, there's a magical place where it's always spring. The Empyrean Inn of Ametschi. Whoa! No wonder people call this place paradise. Yeah, it's like a dream come true, isn't it? I mean, sure, we get rowdy guests from time to time. But hey, who doesn't like a little action, huh? You see, it's all part of the fun. Just leave everything to the Aconite Paladin. And enjoy the show! Here in Ametsu, all your worries will disappear. But heck, you'll forget you were ever worried at all. So relax, you can cross any bridges when you get to them. Trust me, you're gonna be just fine. Are you sure? Those soot spawn things look pretty scary. And I... I feel like there's something... Thing I... Hey, I already told you. Just leave the scary stuff to me. Come on, Pumper. We'll clean this old inn up. Edge, Edge of, of Paradise. Paradise. Time to have ourselves a hunting party. to endure this long. Your power is indeed genuine. <laughs> genuine? Who cares about that? But this power does pique my appetite. Prosperity, catastrophe. Lamentable, yet inevitable. Heavens and earth gather round. When the apex is finally eclipsed, a new era shall rise. The time for annihilation is nigh. And only one will remain. For the Ten Omens shall be no more. Omen of Storms. Tempest is brewing. Don't make me laugh. You annihilate us? Go on and try it. This world yearns for calamity. As long as despair grips the souls of mankind, 
Until humanity's potential is exhausted, the omen shall never be forgotten. We shall taste your potential. <laughs> and devour your determination. When you find yourself writhing in anguish, <laughs> let dread consume you as you crumble to dust! A tempest is brewing. A wicked storm comes as venom gives way to pestilence below, unearthing shadows from their slumber. So too shall the resistance beneath an unyielding banner. For what was once ravaged and purloined from us, all shall inevitably return from whence it came. We seek but one path, and one path only. Our destination? Why, isn't it obvious? The final hour of reckoning awaits us! When justice takes root and blooms, the wind shall sing of its glory. An arduous conflict awaits. Gorges of light, devouring heaven and earth, their legions unlimited and undying. Yet we rise! Though our foes may be immeasurable, we too must never falter. So long as we stand united, order shall reign triumphant in the face of calamity. Dawn of Calamity. Fear not the chaos within. Once there was a war, a heroine that scorched the very tears from our eyes. But from the ashes we rose to grasp hard-earned hope. Once, there was an invasion. At its head was a tyrant who sought termination. But we resisted and won our freedom. Our tale of calamity has come to an end. And in this new chapter, the world will be born anew. Slowly but surely, the storm clouds will part. And rays of hope will illuminate the land. Blinking at the light, we'll reach out with both hands and shape our future. Of course, not all scars fade. They are a reminder that not everything lost can be found again. We can't turn back time or rewrite the past. Yet so long as we believe in our destiny, our future will shimmer like the dew. Renaissance Chronicles. Turn the page. A new adventure awaits. Hello and welcome back everybody to the 2022 Buddy System All-Stars -Star, All Tournament. 
I'm Joe Zija, your host, and boy, do we have an awesome first half of the day. We had so many really interesting matchups between sword versus sword, shadow versus dragon, and we had an incredible run of some uh, really entertaining Pictionary competitions between everybody. Uh, it was a, a fun way to, to start the day, but we are definitely not done. We have a packed second half of the day for you. We've got coaches versus uh, VTubers. We got more matchups. We got a card design contest and all kinds of other stuff back in store. Welcome back, my fellow hosts. How'd you guys? Uh, how'd you guys like the first half of the day? Oh, it was perfect. It did not let me down at all. We get all the classic buddy system things. Like we get, uh, you know, players who uh, are suddenly like just godlike at the game for absolutely no reason. <laughs> uh, we get uh, like the, the the super funny um, like plays that we we don't expect to usually see. We we got the Pictionary, which is just always amazing. Uh, I was saying it before, but also I mean, huge thanks again. Even though we're going to see him a little bit later, but to Forte for showing up for that yeah. last one because Forte was mm -hmm. so funny. Uh, I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting that, but everybody. Everybody's been really funny this time, so I'm uh, I'm having a blast, and I'm glad that we've still got a lot more to go. Yeah, I could yeah. not agree with you more. Uh, the Pictionary is absolutely hilarious, as everyone expected, honestly, and it perfectly lived up to those expectations or even exceeded them, honestly. Uh, some of those pictures were really funny, Forte, hilarious as usual, but um, definitely uh, a highlight for me was just like... The, the, the exact way that all of Millie's listenings ended was always just like super <laughs> like comedically timed like, with the chip eating and like the random references to stuff it's like not, it was like it was scripted like it was it was perfect yeah. it was always like the perfectly cut at the end Wait, it was don't just, let him know was, yeah it, it was perfect mm -hmm. Zones what was your favorite part of the morning not the all morning right, the first well, half <laughs> Oh, I mean, it, it feels like a morning. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, you know I gotta go back to the uh, the art um, a bit, you know. And I think like Ike at the beginning of the art competition mentioned that drawing is tough for him, but I think like you know he the the effort he put in and communicating across what he's trying to get um, and and his approach to the artwork, you know, I'm blown away by that as someone who is also terrible at drawing. So uh, you know, inspiration to me for sure. Yeah, I'm glad that I just, I wasn't part of that. I can't draw. I I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't do anything that they did. Like <laughs> I, I really honestly couldn't have. I'm just that's one of not on my skill set. So kudos to all of them for being good sports and 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 toughing it out. But we've got our uh, a really interesting matchup coming now between all of the VTubers versus all of the coaches. Let's take a look at this first deck. We are giving oh, Team Niji Sanji. <laughs> Noir, give us the breakdown of this uh, this busted deck. Yeah, so it's called Succession Crisis, but the only ones facing a crisis are going to be the coaches, because this is like one of the most broken decks in Unlimited. And for, like for those who don't know, like Unlimited is that format where you have the entire card pool of the entire game uh, with very few restrictions there. And so you end up with really overpowered combinations when you've got the new cards and some of the old cards. There's a lot of old, like, zero-cost cards that are effective at burning down the opponent, like, you know, Call of the Bloodkin, stuff like that. And then with these new discard, or, like, handless blood cards, rather, they're trying to make their hand size zero so that uh, they get extra effects and so that Parasilis can play herself Invoke from the deck automatically. Um, this deck just deals ludicrous amounts of damage like you can clear the board all you want and then they're still gonna hit you for like 15 on damage on one turn if they're lucky and they don't even need to be that lucky because this entire deck like you can just look at the curve they have 22 one costs and that's not even accounting for like the six zero cost cards that they have like it's so absurd like some of these cards are so broken in handless blood that i completely forgot about like showdown demon that card is like is hilarious in this deck because she discards your cards and then draws more on the following turn, which is just perfect for how this deck wants to play. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you, you'd be hard pressed to beat this deck even if you were playing on the same power level. No, so I'm not uh, much of a is... blood player. Talk to me about the uh, the blood fed flower bed in this particular strategy because that doesn't discard cards, does it? It just deals one damage to both leaders at the end of a turn. True, mm. or am I misremembering? You're absolutely correct. That's just a one cost card. You're just trying to, because it, there's more than one way to get cards out of your hand, right? Um, discarding sure. them is the like, sort of like special approach, the, the, the tricky approach, but you know, just playing like blood fed flower bed might as well read one play point deal four damage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a really effective rate. <laughs> 
All right, so now this is obviously a very fast deck. How fast reasonably, let's set some expectations, right? How mm. fast reasonably could this deck kill? I would say like turn five is pretty average. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like turn five average, turn four is like a little bit on the upper side, but absolutely possible. And then turn six is like unlucky. Yeah, or, <laughs> or or if the opponent is doing something very well, which Some of you know we do have the four coaches on the other side, they <laughs> could pull it off. But this deck, believe me, it's unbelievably fast. If if you've ever gone against this deck on unlimited and they go first with the turn one Paris invoke setup, so they just they get like two zero two like three zero drops and or like two zero drops and the room service demons <laughs> to discard their last card. And they're para invoking perilous release on turn two. It just feels like you've already lost. That's that's the that's the really crazy thing it can do. Okay. Well, on the other end, let's see what the coaches are working with. This is the strongest <laughs> tier one deck. Is it though? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, if someone's coming in with a bit of imposter syndrome today because this is like. <laughs> Okay, so yes, Flaming Glass is the best tier one deck in rotation, but this is uh, Flaming Glass with more than a few twists, I would say. Um, <laughs> really bringing in the full value of that three of Flaming Glass with the three of Harness Flame and har Harness Glass to <clears throat> bring back the play points when you manually play Flaming Glass. So definitely uh, <laughs> some power plays to be had there and a unique approach to Guild Elise. This Guild Elise was really strong, you know, like 2018 World Grand Prix. Potwasher knows all about this card. This was, you know, <laughs> meta when he was, you know, beating people up, but maybe he can do it again here with uh, <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the turn seven Guild Elise. Now, is the, that, that turn seven Guild Elise, now again, we're, we're talking about uh, the, the players being able to kill on turn four. Or turn five. Yeah. This now this this will stack their hand again because they're going to draw five cards. Is there a chance that it could cause them to deck out? Hmm. No, I don't think. So. <laughs> not in, I don't no. think in turn ten. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, never. That's never going to be a problem. I can promise you that. Um, <laughs> but speaking of drawing cards, though, uh, do want to point out we have three bell ringers in this deck, but. It's three flavors of Bang Rear. So you know you're mm -hmm. you're you're at the ice cream shop, you can't decide what you want, you're getting a little bit of everything. And uh, it's the same case here, even though like the original is like strictly worse than the current one, but <laughs> um, you, you get to hear a lot of different like total variations of ding dong. So I mean that that's a plus. I think I think ultimately the uh coaches may be getting their bells rung. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, you know. yeah, that's one way to put it. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just again, I, you know, I said this before the break, but I'm just going to reiterate it again for anybody who's now tuning in. Uh, this is not only the, you know, having to play with these e interesting decks, whether they be interestingly good or interestingly bell ringer ish, uh, mm -hmm. but the, also every single person on this team is controlling the same computer at the same time. So the first person to actually make a move does it. It's not like one person is controlling it and getting coached. It's uh, complete chaos. So, uh, you know, not only do the coaches have to make good choices, they have to agree on their good choices with uh, not mm -hmm. such great hands, probably and then uh, actually execute it without uh, yelling at each other and making plays that the other person doesn't want to. So that should be exciting. But also, of course, to hear all the Nizanji EN uh, deliberating, I think is, is the, the nice word that we'll put. Deliberating. Yeah, we'll say we'll say deliberating. And it sounds like they are absolutely ready to go. And so am I. Let's see how it plays out. And, yeah, we got Niji Sanji versus uh, We Love SVO here. <laughs> Very uh, unique team names coming in. And there they are immediately! <laughs> Harness, Flame, wow. and Gilnalise in the opening hand! Now, normally, if this was, like, the the two-cost Gilnalise, there would be an argument for combo keeping this, especially going second against uh, Discard mm. Blood. But uh, you mentioned earlier how you can have insane uh, turn two invocations if you have multiple two drops oh, or no. zero drops. They're pitching the combo. Uh, they, they pitched it and they actually drew a Paris release, but they at least have a room service demon. On the other mm -hmm. side though, a team coach is actually looking like they, they're playing a, a real deck here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a, that's a good sign at least. Retracing, oh. really, really important in this matchup for sure. We're gonna get so much hate mail for the uh, pitching the turn one invokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I, I am, uh, as much as I, I love, uh, you know, actually talking about it, I really want to listen in to people. And there we go. Uh, we're actually already listening in to Team Ninja Sanji. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, what if I've it just it does, it, doesn't it do damage? Yeah, it does damage to us. To oh, us? No, 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 no. Wait, what? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Blood crap is When you reach 10, a vengeance activated, and then we could do more damage as long as our health is less than 10. Yeah, you're buffed oh. when your health is less than 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, is this what our class does? Or... What is this? Damage till you don't need to act with vengeance. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. We got this, we got this. We gotta BM them, this. hold on here. Wait, no, 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 Wait, what is this? You deal and dash the bolt, you summon the forest bat. No, they're gonna get the forest bat too. Bat, bat, oh, bat. I love bats. Okay, I guess you might use. Okay, just do it, right? Because we want to get down or help down. Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah, do. I'm okay. down bad for you, <laughs> Rosie. <Rudy. laughs> <Let's go. laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, what's garnet Ooh. walls, though? I think yeah, let's do it's yeah. garnet walls. Um, oh my oh, god, what's what? happening? Who just okay, clicked? Wait. Me, wait, I told you. Trust oh, me, okay. trust me. I have the power of the cards and anime on my side. Okay. Ah! Wait, how do you it's know okay. these cards? Oh my god. Wait, let's, do we do the bats? Let's do the bats. I, I, I don't, I love I don't bats. think Millie. I don't think Millie knows what she's doing. No, I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. I know. I know what oh, I'm doing. Oh, but don't uh -huh. they get the control wait, 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 wait. first, and they'll take the I'm not doing anything. Space? Oh hell yeah! Give them the yes. I had let's to. Go. I had to. Whoa. I had to. Yeah. Yo, yo, that no, that Dang. animation was kind of kind of pawn. Oh yeah, okay, then give them another one. Let's give them. Um, the roommate. Sorry, thought you could. That's true. It. I wonder if they even know about that though, like whether to use the mm -hmm. silver nail or yeah. the room service. But I mean, regardless, they might do it anyway. Um, I do like the retracing though. It's probably okay. one of the few moments we'll ever get to play it. Well, if we I'd wait until turn, in we can turn, wait, yeah. turn four could be fine too, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Do you want to care noon on this turn? Hmm. That's the question, right? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I really like the retracing, but yeah, so yeah, fine too. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm gonna do the retracing. I, I'm done for retracing, honestly. No, oh. it's a good card. Now we can. We can play her just to get like glass the call later. On, or... Maybe turn him flaming glass on three, right? And then in. Uh, not grab the Susie, like play Luna. No. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, and then we can get both the Luna and the Karenum back. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that Team Nishanji's comms are exactly yeah, that calm as plus. well. Wait, 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 this may you... be good, this may be good. We can... No, 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 discard it, yeah, discard it. That's good, that's good, that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Discarding is spawned discard, one. Discard, okay, 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 discard yeah, yeah. it. Uh, discard, discard it then, yeah. yeah. Will someone do it? Yeah, oh yeah, my god, discard it, come on. Discard what? it, discard it, discard it. Oh, you, you guys, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Wait, 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 what, what, what was that thing? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is good, this yeah, is really yeah, good. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do not, 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 <laughs> are we playing this way? I think we are. No, and I we don't are. Too. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Can you play McGloss? <laughs> Can you play McGloss or Shining Bellwinger Angel? Or Perusalis? Yeah, it's one of those two. Uh, do you want to hold Flaming Gloss think. to try to yeah. kill Shining Bellwinger? Perusalis. Yeah, I think those are the only two options. Is Bellringer okay? It's probably um, more likely that it's... Or actually, no, it should be equally likely because they had one in hand. Yeah, can we toss Bellringer? Is that in that case, go? do we just not play the Sernunos? Oh, if, oh shit. If, Was I... If, did they mute, like, randomly? Uh, I, maybe, I don't know. Were you talking? <laughs> uh... Yeah, I see Pot getting randomly muted. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah he's getting—he's huh? getting manually muted. Oh, <laughs> what are we? Why? What are we doing? Okay, Bellringer, okay. Pain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear it? 
Smells of joy. Then play the doll. Of the world. <laughs> Another harness glass. So if this, if the card they had is Paracelius, this is good. Draw two cards at the end. Wait, 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 Clicking a dragon has never been so hard. Oh my okay, god. But then we can't and then next play turn this. we can play the line. Yeah, next turn oh, we can play the line. Wait, 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 there we go, there we go. Oh my god, we are clicking! How are we not ending turn? I see this <laughs> shiny one. Like, how are we not ending turn? Come on, how, how go, is the go, turn go, not go, ending? End time, What's going on? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. We okay, we did it, we did it, we did it. <laughs> Rizemi, running out of the time is good because we could end the turn. <laughs> I know, I know, right? but I'm just saying. Well, well, I guess technically. Wait, I guess technically roping them is a form of BMing, so. It is. <laughs> <laughs> What's the blood wolf? Which I think is fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's the worst thing. And then we can be tracing the Serenos and the Bell Ringer, and then probably just play something like a. Maybe a, a glass? Oh. Maybe Pot's thinking about uh, the Susie. <laughs> uh. It's, they're muted. So. Yeah, they're muted. Okay. Um, so, evolve, free trace? Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead with that. They are uh, deciding on their best moves. Uh, they are correct. They Coaches are actually being uh, manually muted every once in a while by a certain uh, evil demon behind the scenes oh, named wow. LC, maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is just getting that. harder and harder for them. This trade we played the. Yeah. Maybe a pleasure the doing glass, this. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Alright. Does that Bellringer have an ego effect? And yet, or whatever the heck you're called. Uh... I only have a straw! <laughs> <laughs> it's not even the like. <laughs> We need to play two cards this turn. Okay, we need to make our health go. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, so then we. Oh my god, what's happening? What is this? I don't know. Oh, oh. restless parish. Let's play. Let's what what yeah, is that? Let's play restless parish. It's zero. What could go wrong? Okay. Okay, no, but I, that's. We got, oh, let's no, try no, to get... get this ward out of the way. Yeah, let's. Okay, first of all, let's play the wolf. Hello, wolf. Oh, yeah, yeah. Evolve, evolve. Oh, Yo, oh, play, the play the bat, play the bat, play the bat. Okay. Okay, okay, and now get we... Bat, 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 bat. What do we do now? We play this, because it's... Yeah, 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 play uh, that, play that. Okay, okay. Evolve the, oh. evolve the bat, evolve the bat. Oh, evolve the bat, the bat, yeah, the bat's evolving. Evolve yeah. It's evolving, it's evolving, it's evolving. Oh, Attack 0-4, attack 0-4. Welcome home. 0-4. Welcome home. Fuck them up, team drop, motherfucker. <laughs> and then, and then get 4-1, get 4-1, get 4-1, 4-1. Yeah, yeah, oh, get the... 4-1, no, please, 4-1. Easy shot, easy shot. That was way too close. Wait, wait, don't it, don't it, don't it. What is going on? You guys are both looking at the same time! Oh, there we go. There! Okay, end it, end it, end it, end it! Nice! Oh, we don't have cards! We don't have cards! Yeah, exactly! That was my second card! Yeah, let's go! The lady from our desk! The lady from our desk! Our desk. Yeah, the only desk that was happening was the desk I was hitting. I wonder if they've muted any of these turns. Are we, we're not in fault, right? Alright, in this turn, uh, apparently Momo is what the only one jelly? unmuted. Momo <laughs> Jelly. <laughs> the lone VTuber. Interacting. Oh, why am I the only one unmuted? Yeah, do whatever you want. 
just do whatever you want. <laughs> Y'all have control even though she's unmuted, right? So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so crazy. So, uh, letting answer the call. We just Oh! So, I think we can throw in some commentary, right? Um, the reanimate effect off of um, Kernanos, right, will only find seven drops unless there is a buried Krampus in this deck. And burying a uh, Gilnalise can sabotage them down the line. Because she's also a seven. That's true, but you can evolve her for healing. <laughs> that's you more efficient that. than playing her for seven. I mean, like, we got the Lunas, we still can Evo. But that's probably not too bad. Oh, there's multiple bell ringers? What? Oh, there's the guiding and... It's okay, it's okay, trip this out, trip this out. We're gonna draw this card, it's gonna be super cool. Oh, there it is! 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 Oh my god, is that... Is that Uber Musume? Oh my god! Oh wait, that worked. Okay. What does it do? What does it do? It gives a character storm. <laughs> Give it to the. Oh, you already yeah. have storm. That oh my god! Are you kidding? Oh my god, what? guys! Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Check, no, check this out. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Do we evolve? Do we evolve? It's all the lady. Evolve the lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take, take, yeah, the, the lady. Take, take the thing down, girl. Take the lady, thing down. Lady, lady, lady. Yeah, I'm ding trying to evolve the lady. Evolve. Okay. Bring the lady. Bring the lady. Wait, 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 wait. Who's okay, clicking? Who's clicking? Evolve the woman! Come on! Click! Guys, click. guys, guys! Okay, okay, Millie, Millie, click. Okay. Click, click. Okay, Millie, click, okay. Millie, click. I'm, I'm clicking. Millie? Yeah, there you go. Uh, Millie, Millie which, one? Damage which, one? To... which one? Oh, the Bellinger, yeah. Bellinger, Bell Bellinger. Bell Bell Millie? Hold on! Bellinger. Bell ringer. It, it won't work. Huh? Hello? Someone's clicking. It's not me! I'm doing it! Huh? <laughs> I, I, who's that? Does that not work? It's not working. It's come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, Millie! Oh, Millie! Oh, Millie! Oh, Millie! Oh, oh, Millie! Oh, oh, Millie! I can't. <laughs> okay, uh, someone needs to click on it. I can't okay, do it. I'll, I can't I'll, do it. I'll click, I'll click, I'll click. Okay, okay. I, I swear we're getting sabotaged. No, because I wasn't clicking, because we were like, Millie clicked, so right. I stopped clicking. Yeah, I wasn't clicking either. Yeah. Like, yeah. Millie was the only one clicking. Shoot, are you clicking? I'm not lonely. Come on. Come on. And Potwasher is the only unmuted mm, coach this really turn. Sure, this is gonna clear strike. Yeah, so that will affect everything. Then maybe steal Parasilis. Let's just BM steal. I want you all to know that this is exactly okay. how Potwasher plays when uh, he's alone I'm too. Of, I'm just gonna He talks ahead. out all of his moves like this. I'm not even joking. Uh, he's ahead, and then uh, plus two maybe Angel's blessing. I don't know. Angel's blessing. Angel's blessing. Okay. Okay, Kernoon. It's just uh I'm gonna evolve you and no one will ever cry again. Should be pretty much GG. Come on, the pleasure. What can we get? It's okay, it's okay. Once we hit oh, they yoinked it, they, they, they didn't they didn't kill it, they yoinked it. Oh my god. Oh yeah, they use a necromancy to yoink it. And then now they're what's their necromancy? Oh, yep, they're trying to heal. Even more. Oh, oh, my God. Are we top oh come on! Oh, but we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna get another one of the... The what? The para... para, if, para if, we're, if we're not out yeah, of that, I don't, think, I don't think we get no, another one. Oh, my God! Let's go! Oh, shoot, 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 shoot! It, you, okay, you're okay. clicking, you're clicking. So, okay, so I know it's snipe is okay. like some... No, it hits... Only it hits one person click. It hits like one shoot, shoot! Shoot! Wait, that's so bad! Yeah, yeah, grab Angelic Snipe and hit it on the Ding Dong girl. Wait, you know? what? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, cause yeah, yeah, doing yeah, a ding dong yeah, yeah, because he jumps to one head, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can now we can kill the ding dong. Yeah, and then get the. Yeah, the just evolve blocking. first. Evolve put, first. Put, put put the blocking oh, yeah, yeah. down. Oh, yeah. Wait, who's clicking? Wait. Who's clicking? <laughs> okay, yeah, you do it. Did, did, uh, we can evolve the girl. Uh, do you, uh, oh, I would have. There we killed, go. Uh, Oh, actually, this is my goodness. Yeah! Okay, we're good! Yeah! Ooh! 
We have I a lot of playing points that we okay, can nice, do nice, nothing nice, with. Nice, nice. Okay, wait, I'm gonna be on that. I'm gonna be on that. Okay. Open the gate. Pandemonium! Yeah. Are we gonna die here? Wait, who's clicking that round? They should click every round. Plus, oh, that was me. I, I clicked for like one second. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 you're good. Okay, you yeah, should click good. every round. It's, it's working. It's working. Yeah. Okay, it's working. <laughs> we know, we know it works when you do it. So. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll click. This little hex is oh. payback. The forbidden amalgamation. Oh, I need, I need like, I need um, like what's? Oh, that's oh. lethal. That's lethal. Oh, that's no lethal. Way. Way. Oh, no, they wouldn't. Wait, no. Oh, they wouldn't. Oh, no. Kill us if you're losing. That was some of the finest shadow versing I've ever seen yeah. in all of my days. Shadow versing. Yeah, I... I'm kind of speechless by just, like, everything we just witnessed. But uh, I'm really surprised at how well that went for the coaches in terms of, like, mm -hmm. what they were able to find. That was uh, better than that, some of my, my hands with the actual deck. That was actually, like... <laughs> that was a pretty good lethal. And, uh, you know, good healing. They got a bunch of card draw somehow. And the uh, the flaming glasses were actually good instead of bad, so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, pretty cool. I like the uh, necromancy effect on the allure of darkness to uh, yoink. Ah, uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. That, yeah. See, like, the that, first, that that was really actually, good. That was really good. that interaction come up in rotation as well. But it's 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 one of your extra ways to heal if you really need it. So <laughs> it's really cool to see it. Go, switching back and forth between the teams, it was like it was like listening to. I, I I don't even know how to describe what we just witnessed. It was like on the top, it was like you were tuning into like some kind of college frat party, and on the bottom <laughs> was like airline pilots. Like uh, we're gonna move over to uh, flaming glass over here, and then uh, I think that's fine. Coming in for like that's like that's how it was on the bottom, and then at the top it was like uh, someone had a slide whistle. At some point, I think <laughs> there was a slide whistle and a recorder. There was and, a slide whistle and recorder. No, uh, they were chips, I think, and uh, they were just screaming at each other. And nobody could press the right buttons. That was perfect. That was exactly what I expected, and it actually uh, outdid my expectations. And every round got more and more chaotic. Like it was like the first round, they were legitimately like, "Okay, let's play, play this." And then by the end, it was it was pure insanity, and I loved every second of it. Uh, it was really fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, I'm actually so surprised that the, the coaches managed to pull it off, but uh they were they were surprisingly good at like playing as a team, despite the fact they'd never played as a team before. They were like very well coordinated for four people. Like they didn't have any trouble clicking, they didn't have any trouble deciding what to do. They're just like, Yeah, that would be a good pick, you know? Mm -hmm. And then on the other side <laughs> it was like just screaming at each other, mm -hmm. why can't anybody click? Uh so uh, I don't know. It was that was pretty funny, but uh, I mean good stuff. That's exactly basically what we wanted to see here. But we did want to see the uh, the coaches lose. So uh we take well, some, we win yeah. some, we lose some. Yeah, I mean, Team Niji Sanji drew a few more Parasolises than you'd like. Um, yeah, they had like, like the all of them in their in hand. The yeah, yeah. Um, but, it, I mean, they, they also, uh, I think, nobody primed them how to play the deck, right? Which is which is a little unfortunate because they, they threw the god turn one hand away. Right, I found <laughs> out during that, is, that that nobody yeah. had gotten a chance to look at the deck. Now, did they even get to preview the deck or were they just playing with what was in their hand? I, is the real I, question. I I don't think either team had seen the deck. So um, it was just going in completely cold. Like it just, just yeah. you, you have it, have it in your hand. It was like that, uh, the gauntlet that they did in the, the, like the take two gauntlet or whatever. Yeah. Where you just had no but, idea what was in your hand. But, but, you know, despite that, I think I heard, was it Rosemi who said um, that, you know, one of the goals in Bloodcraft is to get your health down to 10. And mm -hmm. that's not, you know, that's also not on their card. So maybe, maybe they were working with a little bit of knowledge on Maybe on a little bit. Well. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they they definitely were uh, warming up to the idea of of bloodcraft and the the the, the shock when they had they dealt their own face damage that it was like the worst <laughs> thing in the world. It was it was pretty great, mm -hmm. but they made yeah they they made it through. They had some idea of what was going on there for sure. They they zeroed in on on Pericles being like the key, 
and then they did just they played it out. So yeah, k- kudos to them for for figuring that out. What do you? Yeah, was I, there I, like I, a? I want to go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you. Uh, Okay, I was gonna say I want to see just more of them play all together. Uh, I think that that that's what we need to do. We just need to keep having them all just play as a team and see how long it takes them to coordinate, if it even ever happens. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, they bonus, got some coordination down. But bonus round good. could have good. been like two and two, like two VTubers against two VTubers, and mm. I think that would be a oh. yeah. That could have been that could have been something pretty <laughs> interesting. Body system twenty twenty three. Yeah, twenty twenty three busted decks for all all the, all the <laughs> beginners could be could be really even, really even awesome. A handless blood mirror in that setting would be oh like, yeah Actually, that mirror, would be really chaotic absolutely in, in that instance yeah. a mirror would be pretty interesting you would see some really wildly different solutions to the mm-hmm. puzzle of the the handless blood deck for sure for sure well still very impressive from the coaches uh that means i guess we're technically halfway done right with our day mm-hmm. now that that is over uh we've got of course more mini games coming up or one more mini game coming up and then we've got our more serious matches to close out the day but uh this has been a really good first half i'm i'm i said it before but i'm glad that there's more uh it's it's such a different so it's okay in buddy system we don't usually have too many people who are good friends with each other or know each other really well so this is the first time i think that we We've had a, 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 just an entire cast of people on that are all already friends and they already like trolling each other. So like there's not that like initial like, oh, like how funny is this person type thing? Because they're already all just like, I mean, you saw in that last game. I mean, they were immediately ready to start pulling out the freaking recorders and stuff. Uh, so this has been it's been really good to see them like already knowing each other. It's uh, it's like immediate chaos. You know, we didn't have to wait for it. Yeah, they had that recorder like on hand. Like I expect one of them maybe had like had a I, I imagine like a holster. Like that they, they just sort of like walk around with it all the time, and they were just kind of like ready. The, the recorder with it. when the time calls for it. Yeah, when when you when you need a recorder, <laughs> you call Digi Sanjay. So awesome. We'll so we've recorder. got a new mini game coming up right now. Ooh yeah! Chef, take us through this batch of insanity. Well, first of all, I feel like we cannot immediately not go to that awesome Forte art in the bottom right. Me? (laughs) Question mark. That is such a perfect example. Thank you so much, Forte. And uh, we, of course, are playing the Design a Card minigame. It's a little bit different from last year, if any of you are familiar with last year's uh, show. Uh, This time, players are going to draw themselves as a Shadowverse card. So they're going to have a little more time here, and they're going to be able to draw themselves as a card in the game. And not only that... They are going to voice four different lines. The lines that the character says when you play them, when you attack with them, when you evolve them, and when they die, of course. And after they do that, we are all, as judges, going to vote on each one of those things for, of course, some extra points. And we will be, of course, you know, I just mentioned it before, but having our guest judge back, Forte. Forte, are you here with us? Yo, hey, hi, I'm back. It's me, hello. Hi, hi. Did you enjoy your uh, 15 minutes uh, in between when you were here before and when you're here now? Yep, I got a lot done. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. All right, well, uh, great job on that little card, by the way, on that graphic. Uh, But we're, we're super glad to have you back course just a reintroduction if anybody doesn't know forte an amazing artist who does a lot of extremely hilarious fan art stuff for shadowverse and other things but uh that will be our fifth guest judge for this panel which means that there's gonna be a total of 20 points for every category here that is a lot of points that is a ton of points so this is a really important mini game despite the fact that it's a mini game and there's there's five categories, right? So we've got 120 right. points to to, <laughs> to deal out here. Did I do the right math? No, I didn't. We only got 100. No. I told you no. I wasn't good at math. <laughs> That's why I'm not good at Shadowverse. I don't know. I don't. I, I may have had lethal. I don't know. No, that, that's Shadowverse. A bunch of people that need to do math in a really quick amount of time, and they can't even do math in a slow amount of time. So right. uh, that, that makes you a Shadowverse player for sure. Uh, but I, I'm excited for this one. This one is really funny. And also, I got to say, it's kind of unfair that you're a judge here, or maybe you're the perfect judge, because, I mean, who else <laughs> has voiced, uh, you know, many Shadowverse cards and leaders and everything in general? This is just uh, this is yeah. your field of expertise. I mean, I've done I've done a few, but it's OK. You know what? Like everybody, everybody starts someplace. And I think I think we're going to see some real 
some real surprises from these contestants. So we are ready to head over to the game here and let's get this started. Welcome back, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, that was, uh, I just want to thank you up front for a phenomenally entertaining team match between you and the coach. <laughs> we were all really pulling for you. Um, we tried. Yeah, and it, tried, just in yeah. yeah, just the, it was all, it was incredibly entertaining. Thank you for, for going through it. And really, honestly, thank you for the slide whistle. That was the, the, the <laughs> pinnacle of it. It was just, it was fantastic from start to end. So we, we really wanted you guys to, to, to pull ahead of the coaches, but, but we'll get them next time. We'll get them next time. Yeah, next time. So next time. <laughs> our, our first part of this uh, design a card contest, you are going to design a card as though you were a card mm -hmm. and you're going to have one minute to draw yourselves as that oh. card. Oh. We are all okay. doing it at the same time. So are you okay. guys ready to draw yourselves as a card? And I'll count you in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's see. Let's see this, this intense yeah. introspection in three, two, one, go. Ooh, I like that. It's starting with the border. Smart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our time is half up. 30 what? seconds left. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds left. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, really, just fantastic efforts. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Rose, Rose me, tell us a little bit about your card. What is it? What is it? And what is what does it do? When you put this when you put that on the board, what happens? Yeah, um, this is the Rose Maiden. So as you can see, I don't know if she's dead, I don't know if she's sleeping, something like that. Um she has thorns all over herself, so when you put her down, she has a um fanfare that deals <clears throat> uh two damage to every enemy. Um, and she, here, let me, Ooh. let me add, um, she will be, uh, two cost, um, and she's a one three. Yeah. Wow. Balanced, <laughs> Ooh, balanced, effective. That's a, that's a valid, that's a valid card. Of course. So, uh, listen, I'm not going to make myself broken. I'm, I'm, I'm All favorite. right. Okay. <laughs> Millie, let's, let's, let's hear about yours. Oh, so mine is, uh, myself with a bunch of, um, robe enjoyers. So not a cult. They just love robes and they are uh, rune craft cards. So whenever you drop them, you spell boost one and then after you drop a, a cat minion, a one one cat minion, and it has storm. Oh, nice. Okay, spell boosting with tokens. Yes. Love it. Ike, mm -hmm. what do we got going on here? Well, no, this is the Ike Zayety, which is a portmanteau of Ike and Anxiety. When you invoke this card with the Fable, you know, the Fable 69 drop, as everybody knows. Um, yes. It invokes this card and it uh, starts off with Ambush because he's afraid of people and doesn't want to do anything with them. But in return, they can't do anything to him either. Wow, and, that, was, uh, uh, that was deep. That was, I think we went deeper there than I thought we were going to go. <laughs> nice. All right. Anxiety. Shoo. Tell us about yours. So, yes, this card it, uh, encapsulates our match earlier. <laughs> um, I, so, it, it's, it, I, think, I think the picture really speaks for itself, honestly. It's just, this is fine. fine. What does it do when you drop it on the board after you spend your, is that, I'm assuming that's Whoa. also 69 play points. Yeah, I, um, 
So you have to have 69 play points to actually play this card in the first place. So this card is very effective in bricking your deck. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so very useful in situations where you want to put this deck, th put this card in like coaches decks and try to sabotage them. It's very effective. Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay. So it's like yeah, it's an espionage card. Oh. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, guys. These are our four cards. And judges, what do you think about it? Noir, we're going to start with you. Uh, these are all some very unique cards um, with very different effects. Uh, they're all pretty nice in their own way. Uh, I think I'm probably more partial towards Millie's card there. I am a spell boost enjoyer myself. And like, I honestly, I thought those were cats. Uh, but if like they're like robed cats that have storm and spell boost all at the same time, that's just yeah. perfect in my book. So my vote's going to Millie. Yay! Thank nice. You. Okay, Millie gets one vote. Zones, what do you think? Oh, this is a tough choice. I mean, uh, you know, as Nora said that he's a spell boost enjoyer. I'm a forest craft enjoyer, and there's a uh, there's a forest card called Rose Queen, right? So Rose Maiden who uh, comes into play and does damage, uh, feels like she ties into that theme. And so, you know, uh, definitely having that uh, element of board control, dealing direct face damage, I assume. I think she said deal two damage to all opponent opposing things. Yeah, all right? enemies. So, um, yeah, and so that works really well with being bounced as well. It, I, did, did you say it was a forest card? Sorry, I might be projecting, but... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this is yeah, this is a forest card. Okay, 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 definitely... Uh, you know, uh, sorry if I'm influencing the design a bit, but uh, uh, as a as a forest craft enthusiast, I'm gonna have to vote for the rose <laughs> in here. Let's go. Nice. Okay, so we've got some some forest craft stuff in here as well. Jeff, what do you think? I oh, that was really good. I don't know. I was actually trying to decide up to the last moment. I didn't, uh, can we pass on me? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think that <laughs> I have to go with Millie's because representing the, the robe enjoyers as well, you know, not just yourself, but your crew is important. I think, you know, all your fans, it's, it's, it's important to, to represent them. So I got to go with Millie. Yay. Thank you. Okay. Millie gets another get a vote. Free robe from me. <laughs> nice. And a robe, not a cult. Yes. Not a cult. Uh -huh. <laughs> not a cult. All right. Forte. Uh -huh. What do we think? Um, <clears throat> I think all these cards are amazing. Uh, I especially like the ones that put a border around them because that's definitely a Shadowverse uh, thing, right? But I gotta say, one of the most important things about cards for me is the lore behind them because that's what makes them really engaging. And the one on the bottom right really invokes a lot of questions <laughs> that I want answers <laughs> for. The 420 <laughs> stat line, the 69 cost, why is he sitting in an office chair, why is everything on fire? I have a lot of questions, so I gotta give it to the one on the bottom, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you, so thank you. Uh, this is fine. The dead floor earned shoot another vote, which I, I guess leaves me. I have to go with uh, I Katie. I think I think uh, the answer <laughs> Oh no, Robot Joe. Joe he was uh, he oh, was so yeah. just impressed by it. you know. Actually, you know what it is? That's a good trick. I bet he like kicked his router so that he didn't have to give an answer because these are all so good. I should have uh, taken over that strategy, but uh, we'll we'll get Joe's answer. Actually, hold on, Joe. Can you type your answer to me? <laughs> I, I will. I will Ike. be the voice of Joe. He said Ike. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, heard that. I didn't Excited. hear it. Yeah. It was yeah. laggy. You are correct. Excited. It was Ike. Anxiety is correct. A beautiful piece of art. We'll get Joe's reasoning on that uh, soon. But congratulations on, uh, I guess, everybody got points in this round. So, all right, Joe's back. Joe's back. Are you, are you, did you take a little bit of time to decide to decide longer? Well, I was supposed to reveal that I was a cyborg until 2027, but I guess I have to really. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so sorry about that. I, I, I was going for, I, I like the lore behind, like, it's, you know, you think about these, like, fanfares and all that stuff. And nobody knows why. Like, okay, I come into a room and all of a sudden everything is on fire. But uh, I gave the story behind the ambush and it, 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 it kind of, it resonated. So that's where, that's where my vote went. Mm. Okay. That yeah. is the end of the, the design a card, the drawing round. 
Let's see where we are on the scoreboard after the drawing round before we get into the voice acting. We've got Rosemary with four, Millie with eight, and Ike and uh, Chew Two. with four each. So Millie is in the lead with one extra vote, but we've still got a lot to go. We've got play, play voice lines, attack voice lines, evolve voice lines, and death voice lines. Which means time for you guys to show me your voice acting stuff. Ooh. Ooh, okay. okay. We are going to start with your play line, which is the line that happens when this card comes onto the field. Uh, you, we didn't, <laughs> you have to come up with this on the spot. There's no timer. You don't get 60 seconds to write it down. I just want you to feel it inside you, okay? And this is about as much prep as you get in any voice acting job for real. So welcome <laughs> to my world. <laughs> you gotta just feel the feel the line and say the line. We're gonna go. We're gonna start with Rosemary and work our way around. I'll mix up the order for this one so that not everybody gets an unfair time to mentally prepare. So Rosemary, oh, no. give me your cards. <laughs> play line. All right. Let me get a bit further away. Wait, only for the play. Only for the play voice. Just the play line. We're gonna break this down by category. You're gonna get our All votes right. after <laughs> each category. Let me get a bit away from my mic so you can get the full effect. Here I go. Uh, 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 yeah. That's my play line. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Okay. That's a machine. <laughs> okay. All right. Rosemary has no furniture. Millie, let's hear your play line. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Come on, Millie. Let's get ready to wumble. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Ike, let us hear it. <clears throat> I can't believe I signed up for this. Oh. Very Ooh. good. Very in character. Nice. Okay. Shoot. Lay it on us. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Say it like it is. Just, just, just lay it out there like it is. Okay. We're going to pass this off to the judges. What do we think? Noir. Oh boy, uh, <laughs> I think these were all pretty funny. Um, I I think I'm gonna go for Millie again on this one. That was really cute, and also it just fits really perfectly with the idea of like summoning cats that spoke with your hand. I could actually see that being a real card, so you can have my vote again. Okay, yeah. one for Millie. Zones. All right, I'm gonna vote for Ike for this one because uh, you know, with the lore behind the card, that voice fits it very well. The uh, <laughs> it hits hard. That, that, yeah, that the really hits does. hard. <laughs> uh, Chef, what do you think? Oh, this is really tough for me. This is like a tie. Uh, I mean, all right. So I, I almost want to vote Ike because yeah, the, the whole thing's coming together. You know, like all the really drawings is. and all the cards. Everything mm -hmm. is like one thing. Also, it sounds like it would actually be in Shadowverse, like very much, like more than anything else we've heard. Uh, but I think I have to go with Rosamy because uh, using your lack of furniture and the reverb in the effect is uh, perfect, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Amazing. No okay, one for Rosemary. Let's go see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Forte, what's up? Uh, yeah, I got to go with Ike as well. That was a big mood. I felt that resonating in my heart. I felt that a lot. So yeah, one for Ike. One for Ike. Huzzah. Now, I'm I'm torn because like I, I'm I'm with I'm with you on the the Ike mood there. That really that really hits. I'm just so confused about the lack of furniture, and I like non sequiturs in storytelling, where just something just comes out and doesn't make any sense to you. So I think in this case, <laughs> I'm going to go with Rosamy for my vote. No, th there's lore to it because my character is in the forest. She's laying in like the grass and stuff. She has no furniture, so it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it makes sense, but I can't take my vote away for the non sequitur <laughs> part of it. So. Here we go. <laughs> Oh. Strategically waiting to explain that to me until after I gave you the vote for not having an explanation. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, guys, that means we move on to our next category, which is attack. We're going to go in the reverse order this time and start with Shu. Shu, when your card attacks, what's it sound like? Okay. Um. Oh, 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 oh. Nope, this is fine. 
<laughs> Ike, attack us. Uh, Baba Booey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Millie. Uh, hold on. Let me, let me go on my dark, chuny face. <clears throat> Let us consume the darkness and bring chaos! <laughs> Amazing. Whoa. Rosemary, lay it on us. Attack. <clears throat> I'm gonna freak it. <laughs> 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 what are you laughing? <laughs> I'm so, I'm so, you're gonna what? <laughs> freak. <laughs> you're gonna freak. I'm gonna freak it. <laughs> you're gonna freak, freak it, it. yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I'm just gonna freak it. Okay, that. amazing. Okay. I'm gonna freak it. There, yeah, is, yeah. there is some violence being done here overall. Noir, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I had a hard time deciding this one. Um, I, I think I appreciate the violence behind Rosamie's line. Um, <laughs> just. I, I can imagine that crushing a lot of poor souls in SVO, so that's that's gonna take my vote for the <laughs> ultra violence thing. Absolutely. Ooh, Zones. Mm. Ah, this is tough. This is tough. Um, I think I'm gonna have to go with shoes uh, line because weaponizing the concept of this is fine is really taking it to new dimension. I mean, usually this is fine, you know, kind of puts the. Uh, puts the, uh, you know, person in the victim spot, but, you know, tur that, kind of, that level of turnabout is uh, something I can appreciate. Absolutely. Nice. All right, Jeff. I have to go with Millie because that sounded actually like a like a Shadowverse card. That line 100%. was like exactly like it. Yeah, that was uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not convinced it's not actually from one. But uh, yeah, for sure. My point goes to Millie. Very valid. Very, very playable. Forte, round us out. Yep, uh, gotta go with Melly as well. That was very guttural. It came from the soul, and that was uh, very impactful. Absolutely. For me, I, the the reversal within the line, Shu gets my vote because it was like, ah, ah, no, this is this is fine. I love that. I just like the level <laughs> of like the the whole turnaround right in the middle of the line. It was it was perfect. <laughs> okay, guys, that brings us to the end of attack. Which brings us to the next phase of your cards, your evolve line. I'm gonna pick somebody randomly. So this this happens when you you know you drag the orb over to your card and it flips over and you've got a stronger version of your card with possibly some evolve effects, uh, certainly a stronger attack and stronger defense. Millie, what does oh. your card sound like when it evolves? Oh, oh ho, ho, ho. let's dance in hell together, that's why. <laughs> oh. Okay. Got cringe a little bit. <laughs> I, I play it on us. Okay, so I have an idea here. So when you evolve, he overcomes the anxiety and becomes a, more of an extrovert. So then he would go something like, Even after rain, there's a rainbow! <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah. Depth of lore. Fantastic. Uh, Rosamy. Yeah, so um, in my card, she's like laying down, she's asleep or dead or whatever, and then, and then she wake in, in the evolve form. She wakes up, her eyes are open, they're bright red, and she goes, "In darkness, I bloom." <laughs> oh, amazing! Okay, Shu, follow that up. Okay, so the the scene gets worse, but. <laughs> But it will be still fine. <laughs> and my line will be... <laughs> ah, ah! I guess it's still fine. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peak evolution across the board here. <laughs> Noir, what do, you, what do you think? Uh... Oh boy. Um... <laughs> These are super close. Um, I have to vote for the uh, subtly cringe uh, Millie evolve effect. I think um, it is important to embrace the cringe a little bit if you're going to play spell boost. So I think that is a big part of it as well. And uh, <laughs> again, like just I can just visualize hearing that 
in a natural game, that is uh, some severe mental damage. So that's Absolutely. taking my vote. Mm. I'm free and cringe. All right. <laughs> Zones, where are you headed? Yeah, I think um, that that idea of the, the evolve form being a juxtaposition is uh, pretty... It's something that's used once occasionally in Shadowverse to great effect. And I think, um, you know, pulling it into Ike's uh, lore once again works really well. Um, and so I got to give this one to Ike. All right. I get to vote. Chef. It's just too on brand for the novelist to write a great story for the card, right? It just it fits too perfectly. And also that one sounded exactly like a real card. But I, I do I do use zones. I love it when like the evolves uh, in, in Shadowverse like turn into some different part of the story. So I gotta give it to Ike too. It's, it, that was a great one. Fair. Forte. <laughs> um, well, I played a lot of Shadowverse, and I do know that when you Evo a card, when you evolve it, that's a huge hit of dopium. And I gotta say, Rosamie's voice line really fits that vibe. Yeah, okay, let's Forte. Go cringe. <laughs> Forte. <laughs> Forte going in for the do <laughs> the dopamine. Uh I, I think my voice my voice I don't have Many people have already said this. My vote's going with with Ike. That lore, chef's kiss. Fantastic. So that ends our evolve round, which just leaves the most dour part of our voice acting experience, the death line. Now, just to give you some of my perspective as a voice actor, this it doesn't have to be bloody and crazy. It doesn't have to be painful. It could be sad. It could be happy. Who knows? There's lots of, if you've played Shadowverse, the death lines in Shadowverse are, <laughs> are they run the gamut from people like talking uh -huh. about their shopping spree to uh, Patrick Seitz has one death line as some kind of wolf or he just yelps running off in the, the distance. That's probably one of my favorite. So get creative. Uh, and we're going to start this time with Ike. Hmm. In spite of it all, I'm glad that we met. Aww. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> all right, uh, sh <laughs> shoo. Okay, so this is when it stops being fine. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Rose me. You, you got me. Askasi! <laughs> wow! Okay. Millie! Um. Uh, oh. This is unacceptable! I need to speak to your manager. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really going full Karen. Yeah. <laughs> Noir, what do you think? <laughs> uh, um. Uh. Another set of bangers here. Uh, I really, really like um, the way how Ike's line completely just rounds out the character development here. Um, it's basically just an entire story all in one single card. Um, and I know we touched on that before, but this is like more character development than a lot of characters get in you know, a lot of games. So <laughs> Ike is going to take my vote this time. Okay. One for Ike. Zones, what do you think? All right, so yeah, you mentioned the really offbeat, uh, you know, uh, death voice lines, and I think um, I feel like Millie's uh, encapsulates that um, with how long it drags on, and you know, instead of uh, you know, it's like she's just complaining about the indignity of being thrown off the board as opposed to <laughs> the <laughs> having to deal with combat, and so uh, I'm gonna have to vote for Millie. <laughs> Absolutely, Chef, talk to us. This is the hardest like decision of the mm -hmm. entire day for sure. Like these are all the maybe some of the best voice lines throughout the entire thing. Uh, I think I have to go with Chu because in the end the it had to pay off, right? It was like the ultimate moment. It was like all the build up to dying and it not being okay and not being fine. And so it, it, it goes to Chu for me. Okay, Chef goes to it not being fine. Forte. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'd probably have to give it to Shu as well. Just a big mood, big vibe. Absolutely. Very big mood, very big vibe. Uh, for me, 
I, I, it has. I, I, I got to go with Millie. The, the, the bringing in the, the Karen character at the end there, wanted to talk to a manager because it's you're dead, but it's definitely not your fault. It's the manager's <laughs> fault, and it's time to have a conversation about that. <laughs> Amazing job, all you guys! Incredible voice acting. All of these could have been very valid Shadowverse cards, a hundred percent. I could see all of them having been on the board. Uh, great job, everyone. Let's take a look at how all the points shook out. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Rosemary with 20, Millie with 32, Ike at 28, Shu at 20. Millie coming in big for the drawing, the attack, and the death lines. Although I got to point out, uh, Ike really destroyed the evolve line there. That was fantastically done. Um, oh. And everybody really just kind of bringing in, bringing in the big voice acting game here. Great job, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah, excellent, yeah. excellent, <laughs> excellent job. I think there's a, I think there's, I think there's a side gig available for all of you. Oh. There are there are Shadowverse cards Yay. that need to be voiced, and I think uh -huh. I don't know. I think you can do them. Oh, that'd be. That'd Thanks be for hanging out with us. That, if we ever. <laughs> we're gonna let you head Thank back you. and Thank prepare you. for your uh, for your next match as we're coming up. Mm -hmm. oh. So, all right. Thanks for sticking around, Thank you. and we'll see you back on Thank the you. field. You. See you. Honestly, that was even closer than I. Uh, I think the votes uh, led to. I, I felt like there were some that were like absolute bangers that didn't even get a vote because mm -hmm. everything else was an absolute banger. Like I wish that we could have had like two votes each because I think every single <laughs> even, one would like, have had a vote. Them, right? Like first, second, like yeah. I know. It I, was, be I was actually like that literally to really thinking capture that. like how yeah. good yeah. the voice acting was across the board. There were so many times where I was just like going 50 50 between two of them in my head. I just have to go with one. Um, yeah, really well done from all the players today. Yeah, yeah and I also, uh, I gotta say, I don't know if we had a chance to say goodbye to Forte as well, and thank Forte for joining I us. I thought Forte was still here. Or... I haven't said goodbye yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Forte, are you still here? Are I don't know. Here? We went back to the screen. Uh, yeah, I'm here, Calling but I wasn't Forte's. really sure what was happening with me. <laughs> I don't know what's happening <laughs> most of the time, so uh, yeah. I understand you're that. Good, you're but... in good company for not knowing what's happening. <laughs> Right, but gotcha. I do want to thank you again for joining us, and uh, you're actually hilarious, and I'm a huge fan of your art. So uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. You're 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 the best. Seriously, seriously. Yeah, oh, thanks thank so you. much, Forte. Really I appreciate, appreciate you coming out and doing all the judging and and contributing some of your art. Fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this was lots of fun, and I'm really glad that I got the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, gentlemen. <laughs> okay guys so we've got some we've got some more like straight on shadow verse coming at you uh real real soon we got at least we got two more matches that's it for our our mini games we got q a um we still got plenty of shadow verse content ahead what are you guys looking forward to in these next couple matches like I said, you know, both uh, both Ike and Shu are from the same uh, generation, essentially, which they mentioned earlier, Luxium, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very excited to see kind of the battle within that because you know when when you usually when VTubers are within their own little generation, that's the their biggest friends, but also their biggest rivals, right? They always want to beat each other up. It's like it's like having like siblings, right? In life, you always you always want to support them, but you always want to be the better one. So I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to that match in particular. Cool, cool, cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing these decks uh, stack up against each other again. But first, we're going to take a little break. Guys, remember to head out there and tweet at us, hashtag SV Buddy System with your questions, your comments, all that kind of stuff. And you're going to have a chance to win card packs and all that, all that kind of create like promo packs and physical cards. And it's all giveaway central here at Shadowverse today. Hashtag SV Buddy System. We'll see you guys in about 10 minutes. Holy moly! A primal beast! 
What's going on? So something's coming. Something really powerful. What the? Throwing in the towel so soon? Look, when things look bleak, it's easy to become dust in the wind. But that won't happen today. Keep your chin up. Because we've got your back. After all, the sky has chosen its champion. <laughs> Isn't that right, Captain? Come, shake off those cobwebs. Powers like yours shouldn't be napping. It's time for it to awaken. Fate rests on your shoulders. You will illuminate the skies, a true beacon of eternity. And don't worry, we of the Eternals shall follow you every step of the way. Eternal Awakening. If you want to be the strongest, you'll have to go through us. today same as always raise cane and get paid our future depends on it here <laughs> well hell yeah i never say no to busting heads can i go all out barry sure can bunny after all ain't no justice here not in our humble reveal well that makes sense Ain't no gods here, neither. The moment you slip up, the moment you ask for help, <laughs> that's when this world will get you. That's why we got us our three rules, right, Hoss? Believe in your own damn power. Don't let nobody in your own damn way. And finally, don't fear a damn thing. Now, let's get this show on the road. Nobody's gonna walk on us. Not till we've remade the whole plum world! When hell comes, comes a storm, only fate can provide. provide. much for being down to earth. Let's flip the script. Come, this way. What is a mortal? A trifling puppet of fate. You want freedom? Easier said than done. Hmm? Do you mind? You're interrupting my flow. Now, there is one way to escape. Destroy them. Covenants, rules, grind them all to dust. Bound by chains of destiny, pluck them apart, link by link. Mm. You don't have it in you? You're fine. You have us. Our power is yours. You need but will it. There's nothing you cannot do. Well, go on then. Take up the cards, and turn the world upside down! For you are the arbiter of... Fortune's Hand! We are more than mere playthings of fate. Look at 
this organic world. Miserable, pathetic, so defective and natural. Does it inspire you with its splendor? Cretans, roaches, what? As I terminate your pitiful rock. How does it feel? Like hope has died? Like you've utterly failed? Don't try to fight with fate. Cower, fall to your knees, and wallow in complete despair! It's not over yet. Nothing is final. But this is the finale. And your ending has been written. Make your threats, you tyrant. Heroes will stand tall to write their own tales. Inked in bravery on the pages of hope. We have to make this our final battle. Seeds of destruction will uproot this world no longer. Ensure its peace with our own hands. That was our ultimate vow. A shame, then, isn't it? That oath was cast aside for hubris. Cast aside? No, this has always been our wish. You will succumb to our rage. Until we have chewed through your justice! Guardians of the Deep Wood, our enemy draws near. We rise to stand against evil! Not tear you apart. Let's you try. You've breathed your last! Words are coming. Come! Let's put an end to this! The burdened soul of conflict springs forth. Welcome back, everybody, to Buddy System 2022 in Shadowverse. I'm Joe ZG, your host. We have had a great time today so far, and we're not done yet. We've seen Pictionary. We've seen voice acting. We've seen people draw themselves as cards, and we have seen some excellently played Shadowverse matches. But we're not done yet. Welcome back, gentlemen. We are here for our last couple of games. What are you psyched about? I'm psyched. I mean, I'm I, I'm just partial to the buff dragon deck going ag against anybody. Uh, and I'm really interested to see how this flaming glass deck is going to do 
um, in repeated matches. We haven't really seen its power come out yet. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Oshu and Frost getting another shot at that deck. Uh, they didn't manage to close out the win in the first time, but uh, I believe that they can do it. Shu was making some good calls there as well, definitely mm-hmm. showing that he does have some understanding of the deck. So interested to see if they can pull it back in the second half of the show. And also, I'm just looking forward to hearing you know more uh, comms from Millie because that's always <laughs> a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to see if uh, if Millie's top deck uh, skills continue on throughout the rest of this, uh, because that was pretty ridiculous, and it was exactly the message that Potwasser gave us, and it was exactly correct. So uh, only one more set of matches to uh, kind of have a 100% good draw rate throughout the day. But also, I want to suggest that next time we have Joe as a coach, as long as the deck is Dragon, I think yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, as long as it's a deck that I've been playing for yeah. six months, and, <laughs> there and, there no, and I don't have to play against anybody else's deck. Although one of the benefits, one of the benefits of I was talking to Noir about this last last week when he was on stream. It was like one of the benefits about Dragon is like I don't feel like I have to play against anybody's deck. I can just play my deck. You know, like I don't have to know what's in anybody else's meta. It's just like there's a there's a I'm trying to just blast as much as I can, and so I don't have to think as much. That's why I like dragons. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would pity I would pity whoever I'm coaching. <laughs> for sure oh, come on don't sell yourself short seen your seen uh your plays on last time's buddy system on the uncoached turns they were pretty clean i don't i don't remember them i did it was uh <laughs> oh <okay. laughs> i don't remember them that's probably a good thing that's but a good coming sign up next, yeah <laughs> coming up next we have ike and shu going head to head we've got aggro rally sword and flame and glass shadow no surprises for the decks this time we've seen everybody kind of go uh with their decks so we we kind of know what's coming but we we don't know is how they're going to handle uh the match against each other what do we think guys where do we think this is going to go sword versus flame and glass sword simple flame and glass not what do we think so on paper uh flame and glass does do well against sword uh similarly to how it's supposed to do well against dragon but that didn't quite turn out last time um it really just depends on whether uh, they can properly manage the Rulanai because you don't necessarily want to hit 10 as soon as possible. You do. It does matter like how many uh, Scream Diffusions you get to play over the course of the game. Um, oh. And we're going to go straight into the game here. Yeah, yeah Rulanai is there. Uh, so like one benefit of getting like a fast Rulanai as opposed to like a slower one in this matchup is that you can banish Liad. Uh, and that just takes away one potential lethal setup that Sword could have. Um, so it definitely does go a little bit both ways in terms of how you want to use the Rule and I. It just depends on the game state, what you've got in your hand. Um, speaking of which, that's uh, quite a few Bell Ringers there. Just the same type of Bell Ringer this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Opting for the full keep is interesting. Um, I think it's okay to keep the Bell Ringer going first. Um, going second is a lot more awkward because of the potential of getting her effect yoinked by Octress, well, copied by Octress. Right. Um, it's more of just a, like a good combo keep in this case, because we already got, like, Luna is always a keep. Rule and I, you definitely have to keep against these board-based decks, and then Bellringer sort of evens out that curve. That is perfectly fine there as a set mm-hmm. keep. And it's yeah. looking like it is probably just going to be uh, an easy Bellringer here on turn 2 for Shoe and Frost. Um, on the other side... We've talked about um, the Evo effect followers for Rally Sword, and uh, Ike and Momo are going second again. We'll have to see if they can find something like a Cat Admiral, but the Guiding Bellringer Angels and the Takitsumi also valid options here. This is a lot of Bell Ringers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, these are a lot of Bell Ringers. Um, They're choose... going to choose the Takitsumi. To yeah. exert more pressure on the board, there's a yeah. total of zero attack on Shu and Frost. Yeah. So the thing with the Bell Ringer is that she does have that you know sh- one instance of damage shield, but it does get popped if you get hit for zero. So the Luna could potentially pop that for free. And opting to go for the properly statted two two here, Rule and I instantly going to come out here for Shu and Frost. And once this is getting set up, uh, they're going to have a Usually a pretty good time um, just controlling the board, 
and slowly building up towards their win condition by, you know, bringing back the Flaming Glass and just hitting face a bunch of times with the Kernanos. Hopefully they do manage to bury it this time. <laughs> yeah. I guess they're just planning out their next couple of turns. Even though they're fully coached this game, I know Frost as a player is very methodical in his planning. And well, maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> 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 I heard my challenge. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, pretty simple turns here, to be fair, mm -hmm. from Shu and Frost over the next couple oh, turns. And a combatic nice duel off the top, and we talked about how this is useful in the mirror match, but honestly, not a bad card to play just in general as well, especially against these zero attack followers. Uh, it's not just that they pop shields, but they also give you a target to potentially uh, clash into. A Hemra just summons a 1-1 one -one every, time, every time she uh, attacks or is attacked by something. And that means that these followers for Shu and Frost probably are not going to be doing any sort of trading this turn. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're going to choose to use Krampus to remove a follower on the board. Oh, the Karnanos. This one can be used to duplicate the, um, the, the her Evo effect on the next turn can be used to duplicate the uh, Rulanag. Um, yeah, but they still have a lot of choices for this turn. The Lunas doll looking pretty good as an option. Um, I wonder if they would choose to get rid of their own Bell Ringer here in case a uh, Octress comes down on the board. Oh yeah, uh, that would be an interesting play, but um, they've already used one Krampus. I think it's pretty mm. valuable to hold on to it just as a tool mm. so that... Like, you're not going to know what the board state is going to be like three turns from now. You're not going to be certain about how much damage you have or how much you're going to need. So right. um, just being able to, like, really control your own board, like, modify your own board state is very valuable in this deck. And yeah. even against a deck that's probably not going to board lock you or attempt let's, to board lock you. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Let's listen in on this turn. Yeah, because first Evo turn, always pretty cool. So we, oh, we we play Ding Dong and evolve her. Yeah, because that will draw us oh. a card, and then we'll figure ourselves out from there. Bless your heart. For all. Oh, there she is. Ugh, too late. Um, mm. can you just poke on her? We're not gonna play her, um, but if you can poke her, we can check our uh, rally. It's at four. Um, so we're gonna play the other bell ringer, and then we're going to attack with the one attack followers first. One into the zero one, and the other one into the other one. And so now I use white queen into bell ringer. Yeah. My legion follows. At your service. And then bell ringer. Ding dong punch. Okay. Cool. Mm. Wards galore. Yeah. And they're kind of awkward wards. Awkward. Awkward. <laughs> but nice. I think this is where we can see the strength of Ruin. Okay. I'm going for the diffusion right away. Um, yeah. So the that's... thing with uh, Cernanos or Cernanos is that Scream. once you revise that rule and I, and then if you trade that off, that's increasing the number of rule and I's that are dead, and that's just how many the diffusion summons. So that means they are actually not going for a full clear on this turn. Actually, going to yeah. opt for a bit of a board lock here, I assume, unless they want to at least get rid of. One more thing. Okay, so they... not not a board lock completely. Wonder if they go for the unevolved ding dong here. Be a little offbeat, but it's pretty threatening. Uh, I think it that's too that's too next level, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um it's not without merit though, because that is a lot of damage for, that it's presenting on board, the unevolved ding dong. Um mm -hmm. and they do have the information that uh, I can Momo Jelly run Albert. They don't know that he's in his hand, but 
They do need to be a little bit afraid of that burst potential. They are going to go ahead and kill the 3-5. Just poke the I shield get... down. It seems like they're trying to conserve their Kanenos, but I really would have liked to use it. Because the the big thing about the outcome of this turn is that they are not left with a Scream Diffusion in hand, but rather a full-cost Rulanai, which the tempo... Which just restricts their playpoint options for clears on the next turn. Right. And that is a massively buffed Ding Dong. That yeah, much. this is a lot of damage that I can only jelly can have. Yeah, it's like some matchups you do want to hold onto the Kernanos just for that extra safety. Um, usually against like control decks, uh, you might do that. But against a deck like Aggro Rally, I I think it is really important to be like using the the Kernanos a little bit more aggressively and like cycle those Rulanize and really like make sure you're mm -hmm. preventing any, you know, leftover damage on board, because this is let's, quite a lot. Let's, let's listen, listen in and on Shu and Frost now, yeah. Um, play the Rule and I. This one? The, the, yeah, the three-play point that Rule and I. And then play Retracing on the Gilnalise and the Rule and I. The 7-1? Yeah, uh, the 7-1. Yeah. Okay, Nomadic Conductor, not bad. Uh, yeah, just Evo the Gilnalise and then uh, trade. Uh, trade with the Bellringer? Yeah, the Bellringer Angel. Okay. And then the, the Wulanai trades into the, the Albert. Um, do we want to trade into the Quick Blader? Yeah, let's trade into the Quick Blader just to, uh, uh, yeah, just to be sure. Yeah, let's just let's do that. And let's end the turn. Um, can you check your Necromancy count for the Shadows? Six. That's not a lot. It's definitely mm -hmm. not a lot. Ideally, we would like to hit the 12 Necromancy on the uh, next turn. So Reaper of Madness could be... Um, mm -hmm. Could be uh, one way around. Uh, could be one way to get there. Mm -hmm. But I would also like to draw some cards. So probably a retracing. Also, mm -hmm. we'll see. Scream diffusion plus reaper doesn't sound too bad as well. Um, we'll see or, what they play. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, and mirror, okay. Oh, oh my lord. Whoa. <laughs> it's gonna deal two damage to our face. Two each, right? Yeah. Yeah, two each. So we're gonna be at 14. So the retracing is gonna help out a bunch here. Mm -hmm. okay. Alright. Frenzy Pro Master. Yep. Yeah. Alright, let's see what we draw. Oh. Another Rule and I. <laughs> Sheesh. Um, okay, let's scream and then play retracing on two rule and eyes. Okay. And see what we draw. Skeleton Raider, not bad. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so let's trade the two rule and eyes that you just played the retracing on into the four four. Okay. Then let's play the Conductor and discard a Flaming Glass. Okay. Let's see what we draw. Hopefully not Susie. That's fine. That's, that's actually very good. Um, uh -huh. Let's see now. Um, let's play the Reaper of Madness and then clean the board. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Ooh. And then uh, evolve uh, to kill the a three three. Okay. And then you can trade the Reaper of Madness into a three three, and then trade the uh, two Roller Knives into the, the two twos on the board. Okay. All right. So we're at fifteen shadows used. Um. Just need to get uh, get three more, because uh, Susie could trade to get another two. 
Aha. Ähm. Alrighty, so that's a really interesting uh, effect to leave the uh, Reaper in play because Octrice can copy last words, and Reaper's last word effect applies that damage shield. This gives Ike and Momo Jelly an opportunity to steal or copy this last word effect and keep them from taking lethal on this next turn. So I think the Reaper might have been a little overly cautious um, in defense against Erica, but it's gonna. I mean, granted, uh, Shu and Frost don't have that 20 Necromancy um, activation in hand yet, but that might slow them down quite significantly if the Octrice triggers uh, the copy last word here. Yeah, so I wonder if uh, they actually even want to pop it immediately. They might even want to leave it on board mm -hmm. and, and then force Shu and Frost to pop it for them. Um, but... Mm -hmm. The uh, they don't have too much damage in hand just yet, anyway. So I don't think it's too big of a concern for Shu and Frost. Yeah, they are gonna be leaving it on board and then using the remnant to clear off. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot of duplicates in Ike's hand right now. The other core master gonna invoke here. So the the thing with uh. V Victorious Blader in this matchup is that Ooh. Shadow has a lot of ways to deal with it, but Spirit Invasion is a very, very good top That's deck. The damage, if they had a second Kernanos here, that would be... That would uh, be it. Yeah, that would be it. You can find the way through the board, but... Uh, you can try to jab it, just like Invasion Sernanos, and just try to YOLO it, but I don't know if mm. that's advisable. That so is... we at least have the Raider in hand to deal with Victorious Blader. That's one way to deal with it. The Rula Nice, both of these are also active, and they'll just banish a random guy, deal three to face. Yep. And I think you may want to Krampus your own Flaming Glass at the end of that sequence as well, because letting a potential Octrice yank the storm off of your Flaming Glass. Okay, yeah. Awesome. yeah <laughs> that, that is... Uh... <laughs> there's, there's so many levels of this matchup with these cards. Right, like... yeah. That, that's actually a really funny interaction to bring up as well. Um, but they are going to jam it. Rule and I... <laughs> they run all three of their, like, Rule and I's in their deck mm -hmm. now, I believe. Yeah. Okay, wait, so... Raider... is not enough, yeah. but Sir Nuno's gonna, Evo oh, is going to get Evo's another... Gonna bring back freshly traded Susie. Another Susie. Hang on a second. Oh? Oh? They're off by one? They are off by one no. damage off by and one. off by one play yeah. point as well. Yeah. They're off, oh. they're off by one in like two different ways. Oh, on like multiple yeah. directions too. Wow, that's really tough. Um, yeah. Huh. Oh my goodness. So if only we had an uh, okay. Like this actually goes back to that one turn where we traded the Rula Nine to the Quick Blader, right? Um mm -hmm. it was just the one one and the two one on board. It was a decision to go face with for two or to trade off the quick blader. They opted to trade into the quick blader, and at that moment I felt like you know, we don't have that much damage in hand. I wonder if this two damage is gonna matter sooner than oh, no! Oh! They lost no! the Oh no! Ouch! The zero cost token. Oh, Erica's like. Oh no! That was. That's so much damage! We haven't lost yet. Wait, did they have lethal if they had that? I don't think so. No. I was right? counting, but yeah, no, because they don't. They don't, have but I mean, that's still stuff. a very big deal, but uh. Yeah. Wait, so hang on. Seven? Nine? Yeah, it's. Oh, it's super close. Wait. Oh, no, they did have lethal, right? If they... Yeah, yeah I think... Because you trade in one quick later, and then you play... Uh, oh, so Victorious Blader. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no. Oh, or Dartag... Oh, yeah, like, yeah, like Dartagna would have done it. Oh, you're right, yeah, you're right, like, yeah. They, they had it, they had it, for sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh my they goodness. It. They definitely had it. Oh, and now it's... You hate to now, see it. Now it's just devastation. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, that's... You hate to see it. Oh, and in that's game That's a tricky one, lethal, too. too. Yeah, honestly... <sighs> might have gotten, like, a little too excited or something, but... 
Uh, the ordering not quite there. Oh, oh. Oh. Nice, good job. Oh. But yeah, our hand, our starting hand was very, very good. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully oh. we can get uh, that kind of hand again. Uh huh. Uh. Just draw well. Just draw well, and it's party that was, time. That's, that's it. That was a tense game. That was a very, very tense game. I think that was the closest game that we've had so far. Uh, mm -hmm. Arguably even closer than like the very first one where there was like a comeback in the Sword Mirror. This game, mm -hmm. there were so many small decisions that ended mm -hmm. up influencing the entire set. And not even, you know, the, the Erika losing the, the zero-cost mm -hmm. spell at the end. It came down to, you know, the 2-1 trading into the quick player instead of going face for two. And it's a tough decision. I think they had 14 health um, at that moment going into Swords turn 7, or I believe. Um, mm. So, yeah, the potential was there. But the thing that you have to remember is Erica plus Musketeer. That eight play points, that's the really important combo that can mm. consistently take you down from, you know, 14, 15 health. That's the one that you have to be worried about. On seven play points, they you need to have like double Erica or something just a little bit less likely, right? To pull mm. out that type of damage. So um I really think pushing the two face there, I mean it, it did make a difference, right? They were one off on multiple levels, and then they the the Ike and Momo Jelly missed lethal with the burned Erica token, and that allowed Shu and Frost to ultimately take it. So really back and forth. Could have gone to anyone. Wow, this crazy game. Yeah, that was Absolutely. that was a that was a crazy game. We're gonna see how they can recover uh, on the second game here on Sword versus Shadow. Shu and Frost going first again here, and you want lease in hand, but I don't think you want to keep any of these. I think I would just full toss. None of these cards are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but that's a great hand for even uh, Momo Jelly. Like Momo Jelly, yeah. Pat Admiral uh, on you know, on curve, meaning turn four, basically. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. We did draw it a or little bit uh, too late the previous game. Yo, oh, that Call of the Great Arm is glowing, but you don't want to play it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, one use of Call of the Great Arm is basically to accelerate your shadow count. Um, it is very situational. Uh, this is definitely not one of the times to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. But, I mean, that just really goes to show just the sheer depth of this card and yeah. this deck in general. Um, but Bellringer Angel back again for some very straightforward early plays. Gilnelis will be there to heal up in the mid-game. And mm -hmm. they will need it because the Cat Admiral is coming online with a very nice aggro curve. From the looks yeah, of Ike's hand, I mean that's a that's a one two three four curve available to Ike and Momo Jelly. Um, yeah, with... assuming they draw the two, but it's well, very very like the... oh right, the right right they they can play the great shield yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. at least they there is something yeah yeah absolutely true yeah I just I wonder um, if Frost is going to change his approach to Kernanos this time. I think it did end up paying off to hold on to it last game. Yeah, they didn't draw another one, so... Yeah, um, they did draw a call, but at that point it was uh, not guaranteed because they had to mm -hmm. keep the Reaper, so... Um, definitely let's... just... Yeah, let's get a listen in let's on... Let's get a listen in, yeah. On Ike and Momo here. Get out. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that was a uh, oh, very nice oh, listening. The, the let's go. Um, yeah. It, those were some pretty good top decks, though. The double cat admiral potentially mm -hmm. um, on like turn uh, six could be another time to play a second one just to to do some more face damage. I'm, I'm curious what Ike's gonna play here because he has. Five different two drops he can play right now, and they all have some merit. Let's get this party <laughs> and he's gonna, he's gonna choose the Taketsumi. All right. Yeah, the the two two that um, is not Cat Admiral, I think, is a good choice. Yeah, here. yeah. And now he has the Penguin Guardian to protect Taketsumi from a Rulenai attack. They look, we listen on a Shoe and Frost here. I, they may do some planning into turn four.
So you mm -hmm. will have a Scream Diffusion in your hand uh, uh, at the end of your turn, or at the end of this turn. Uh, but you only have at most two shadows, so we need to find another way to generate shadows. Well, the Call of the Great Arm is perfect for that. Uh, so uh, uh -huh. on, the, on the next turn, you could uh, use Call of the Great Arm on either Luna or Sir Nunos, uh, just at least a, a Shadowcraft follower, one of these two Shadowcraft followers, actually. Okay. And then you'll have four shadows, and then you can uh, use the Scream Diffusion to trade into more things. Something like if you, you could trade into that Takitsumi, that would be pretty good uh, as well. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you can tra trade into the Takitsumi, prioritize that. Um, mm -hmm. If there's a Queen Hamera, if there's the, that one four ward coming up, um, mm -hmm. would it be fine to trade? If there's a Queen Hamera, um, uh -huh. try not to trade and use a Rule and I. Oh, actually, do it'll we generate want to use a Rule and I? more, right? Yeah, it'll generate more tokens, so we don't want it. Uh -huh. We don't want that to happen. Well. So yeah. Uh, in any case, try to use a Scream Diffusion next turn, unless there's a Queen of Hamera. In that case, um, yeah, just try to draw some cards. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think we can hear the uh, impact of Queen Hamera as a card. Um, that basically, like, the latter half of their extra time for the turn was uh, Queen Hamera taking free real estate in their uh, team <laughs> collective con uh, consciousness. Hamera living free. Yeah. Yeah, rent free, rather. Okay, so another Ding Dong being drawn off the top here. Um, definitely just a ton of options again. I don't think you want to use the Gilnalise yet. I don't think you want to use the Kernanos yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, Gilna the the Ding Dong is actually pretty nice to draw off the top. And the nice thing about, uh, Ding Dong specifically against Rally Sword is that it can be used as, like, a temporary stopgap to that Rally development. Because mm -hmm. she's a zero two 2 follower, and it blocks some attacks, but it cannot... Uh, kill anything oh, as a zero. This is tackle. the top deck I was worried oh, about. The second rule and I. That. Because, yeah. Oh shit. That's actually one of the better plays available because you get a second screen diffusion and you strengthen your first one. Oh, uh, the call of the great arm. Yeah, this is the, okay. Yeah, this is the play Frost went over. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, I feel like. You could use that a little bit later, the the call rather, because effectively yeah. now you're not actually getting anything from that right. uh, Kernanos. Like you're, it's still just not one Kernanos. Um, but mm -hmm. we have a lot of Rule and Eyes in hand, and eventually there will be a lot of Scream Diffusions. We just have to get there first. Scream. Um, yeah. And oh, the trade target. We are gonna pick the Takatsumi, although. You should expect the Cat Admiral to come in at this point. Mm -hmm. But this actually kind of slows them down, right? Because right. there's no, there's no... no way to... Yeah, they can't clear board spaces, which means Cat Admiral's like the only We're development here. For... I can move to Right. So now the rally is at four, I believe, and this sets them to exactly seven. They will have to uh, float these two play points, I'm assuming. I don't think they're going to play the uh, hunt here. No, I don't think that's worth it. Cut, hunt basically trades in for one damage, right? That's yeah, that's definitely never yeah. worth it. Um, so yeah, Bell Ringer as a stopgap to prevent a little bit of development here, because uh, like their board is going to be filled almost no matter what at this stage of the game. Mm -hmm. the, the question is like, can you make them fill it more slowly and have these cards clog their hand a bit more so that they're, they're just like. Uh, getting to their rally breakpoints a little bit more slowly. Uh, that is a yeah. big question, but they're hitting seven by turn four Don't anyway, so. which is fine. Uh, they'll easily be able to invoke Core Master on turn five, which is usually the important breakpoint you want to hit. Mm -hmm. And you know, Shu and Frost have a bit of a slow turn here with the multiple full cost rule and eyes here. wonder how they're going to navigate through this one. Let me listen in again. Cat and roll, uh, probably expected from third four swordcraft. Uh -huh. um, we uh, there, we don't have a retracing the pass, which is kind of scary. Mm hmm. Hmm. I 
I'm thinking of just the Gilnalise into Rulanai. So Gilnalise, uh, uh -huh. usually you want to target uh, the Gilnalise itself to uh, give it six attack, but we can also target an enemy follower. And if they have two or less health, they'll actually just die instead mm -hmm. of getting buffed. So I think that's what I want to do. Okay. So uh, we're gonna play Gionelis and evolve the Gionelis uh, into to target the two two on the board. This one? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then you're gonna trade into the one one and then play Roller Knight to trade the Roller Knight into the four four. Okay. So um, next turn, it's probably gonna be a Roller Knight uh, turn, uh, and then we try to stave off as much damage as possible from the from the the board. Uh, they might play a Musketeer's Vow, uh, so you have to be careful about the, the amount of stats that it has. Uh, but mm -hmm. other than that, uh, yeah, try to play as many as many Rule Knights as you as you can uh, as, in a Scream Diffusion. And the, yeah. the Luna could be also used with the if you get enough shadows from it to uh, to regain an evolution point. But yeah, <laughs> you can use your your evil point as well uh, if you if you need to. That is so much strategy to try to fit into one turn. Yeah, that's just the sheer volume of information is pretty staggering there. Um, I mean, yeah. that's like what's necessary uh, for this mm -hmm. deck for sure. Um, yeah, it's really, Ooh. Yeah, really tough. Optress, you can steal the drain. Yeah. <laughs> not, I like, not sure how useful that is, but I like uh, cashing in the bumpkin draw this turn as well. To get yeah, the, this is on an odd turn right here, and I it seems like. They're going for mm -hmm, the other cat admiral, and it, this is a setup to invoke the core master. Right? So. That's right, and they are creating space here, trading off Ooh. the uh, one twos. Are they gonna play the glowing hero of the hunt? I think it's a little too early for that. Yeah, yeah, that that would be uh, rather interesting. <laughs> um, but the bell ringer here, plus the one one ward, plus the core master invoke. That's a lot of protection for this cat admiral. Yeah, it's so hard to punch there with ruin eyes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of all the decks that can break through this type of thing very easily, you know, Shadow, you know, doesn't really have mm -hmm. an issue with that. But, you know, this is the type of thing that you just do naturally with Sword because no reason not to. Um, yeah. So I believe they are down to one last Core Master in their deck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Scream Diffusion gets through this pretty, pretty straightforward, but, but they. <laughs> That's like a four Rula nice worth of cards in hand, though. Yeah. <laughs> Shenanigans from Call of the Great Arm. So a lot of these Rula nice are very quickly going to reach the point where they are banishing and dealing three. Um, and we've seen how they can be uh, very, very close and not quite get enough for lethal. So if we can actually get that Rula nice face damage this game, I think that's going to be a big deal. We have one, Ooh. effectively one Kernanos again, just like the previous game, covering the Reaper of Madness. I like. I don't um, mind this. This is this is a pretty uh, good time to use it. You can clear Cat Admiral and <laughs> Bellringer. And the Bellringer, yeah. It's a very high value Reaper, that's for sure. Uh, the mm -hmm. main going to punch through that shield and have it not matter. I don't think we heard Frost talking about this play, so I think a lot of credit to Shu for like internalizing this pattern. Uh, yeah. I wonder if he's gonna develop the Luna and the Would you use Luna's Luna and Luna's doll here, Nora? Uh yeah. Um I think yeah. I would, just because uh I mean th there's nice cards in our hand, but I'd rather see like mm -hmm. maybe a raider, maybe, you know, at least get some more information on how much damage mm. can we deal. Um, would be nice because you know these Rula Knights are good, but I don't know if we're. Oh, it could be possible to play all of them. Uh, either way, though, we're uh. gonna hold on to that Luna. Though, see how that turns out. Mm. And we've seen this Maybe. before: the Octress copying the Reaper. <laughs> yeah. You can even copy it twice. <laughs> that should be really funny. Uh, yeah. too chaotic as a, yeah. an option. Uh, pen pen being drawn off the top there, off the infuse. And this is the earliest time you might consider using Hero of the Hunt as well to protect your board against the skeleton later. Um, That's right. So a 5-5 five, five Bane, pretty good there. 
Um, the Quick Blader is still in hand as well for the Erica combo. Shu and Frost are relatively healthy right now, thanks to their yield in these play earlier. Oh, I'm gonna see the hero of the hunt. And one pen. Ooh, pen a slight two. ordering. Uh, this, it's not that big of a deal, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the shield's not going on the pen pen, but uh, he's a strong bank when he doesn't need it. Yeah. Move out! Annihilate them! Alrighty. That is the last core master, and Susie invoking for Shu and Frost. Oh, oh the raider! <laughs> There's the raider! Well, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, as mentioned before, raider would have been a pretty nice draw. Um, that's actually going to listen in on Shu and Frost here, and see how they figure out these next few turns. Well. Maybe they're not talking? <laughs> <laughs> they're awfully quiet. No, yeah, maybe not. A way. Uh, there can we you go. click on the ruler knight in your hand? Just click on it, don't play it. Seven. We could actually play another ruler knight. Huh? Yeah, let's let's actually play another ruler knight. So yeah, so trade um trade yeah, trade two ruler knives. It continues to play another rule knight and trade into the Optress. This one right? Yes. And then trade the Susie into the one two. I'll hex you. Alright, so uh we're pretty much set up for next turn. Um mm -hmm. we can um you can also just try to go for some Ruler Knights to clear the board. If you can't find Lethal with Serenos, uh, yeah, just try to uh, clear the board with uh, Serenos, uh, not Serenos, Ruler and I, and some Screen Infusions oh. as well. Alright. Definitely sounds like they have some practice with the Lethal patterns in the deck. Um, yeah, for sure. And Frost is pointing out... Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, let's go listen yeah, to let, the, the, the game is on. really coming down to the wire, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's also listen to Ike and Momo Jelly here. Or do we want to play Monochrome? Um, let's play Monochrome, actually. No Octress. This is more than just a game. Um, both of them will attack, and it doesn't matter what they attack, because they're all the same attack. Okay. Uh, one of them has to go over the 3-3. Actually. My legion follows. My loyalty is iron clan commands you. This little head do not stand back. in our way. Jade. Steal yourself. Jade. It continues to resist. What do I do with the remaining? I want you to play the remnant. Your power is mine. And if you survive till next turn and there's no wards in your way, Erica. Okay. Yeah. If they're... Oh my goodness, I'm actually terrified here. <laughs> yeah. This Good is setup, tense. Um, from Ike and Momo Jelly. I really like yeah. using the Remnant now while there's nothing mm. on board to hit face for four. We've already yeah. seen quite a few of the healing options already being used up for Shu and Frost, so... Yeah. Uh, getting that damage out now, and then making sure, like, on your Erica turn, you want your the damage-related play points to be followers more than spells, if possible, right? Because yeah. you can get that extra Erica attack. So good, uh, you know, two-turn lethal setup here. Um, I don't believe there's any chance of lethal here for Shu and Frost, unless... It, it would be like if Kernanos, uh, which is Flaming draws, Blast, draws a second Kernanos. Draws another copy. one. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we've seen this one before. A lot of situations where they have only have like effectively one Kernanos, and then it's again this spot where um, Ike just has too much health, and then we need something very specific to actually close out the game. Yeah. And it's also really dangerous because the Octress... <laughs> interaction with Flame and Blast can also be Yeah. Um, and also, our Rule and Eyes banish themselves immediately, which means we don't actually have a chance to use Retracing the Past. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Oh, unless we play Scream Diffusion. We can stream and we retrace here. A stream retrace? Oh! Uh, but, Ooh. I mean, they can ignore the retrace uh, rule and eyes anyway, right. because they've already gotten the, uh, the two cost spell out of the way, and I feel I like this should be lethal. I guess it's gonna go for maximum damage here, right? Let's see. Yeah, and their rally was like 18 by now or something. Oh, <laughs> playing the killer instincts first. <laughs> yeah. Just to um, actually, I'm. They they. Is that all a, their... That's a waste of a board slot, though. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, actually, um, technically, they don't want to play that because they have two quick bladers. Yeah, three. That's three plus eight. <gasps> that that mattered, right? No, it didn't. It's there's still one up. There's still one up. Uh, I think. No, they the, they they would have had exact lethal, right? Would they? It would be eight attack would, on the Erica and four quick laters. I count. 13. Or no, no, no. Uh. Yes, it's it's yeah. Because the killer instincts is yeah, a because, plus yeah, one. Yeah, 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 the just like also gave it one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it's still one off. Okay. So now going okay. for this play instead. So the the killer instincts being set up, it doesn't um, dissuade too much from Shu and Frost because they are okay with playing Kernanos first anyway. And in fact, that's actually better for them because uh, the two two yeah, body right. doesn't do anything. So it clears up board yeah. space. In fact. It also um, makes Call of the Great Arm a live drop. Oh my god, that's gonna listen <laughs> oh on Chew and Frost right now. This is a huge turn. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Um, then you can trade at least, like, trade two Rule of Nines into the. Like, trade Scream. one Rule of Nines into the Erica and then one into the Optress. It can sound. It can Then play Sternunos on the Flame and Glass. Yes. Now the killing uh, the this thing right here on the board is gonna kill your Serenos, but that's fine. Okay. Now you can evolve the flaming glass and then play two real nice for lethal. Oh, right, the real night damage. Yeah, the real night damage. I was close, but yeah. Anything is possible. Do this. Oh! Will and I, and then congratulations, you won <laughs> the games. But that was Wait, close, I... yeah, that was very close. Did I have lethal last round? I don't think you did. Okay. So I think that was fine. You could have also considered playing the retracing to regain some health. Oh, so right. So even Along if you, like, the... play, um, so the, the thought process behind the not trading the, to the Hemera to not generate tokens is fine. But you could have also used that to your advantage and then just play the, the, the Stream Diffusion to set up your for your next turn. And on top of uh -huh. that, playing after playing the Stream Diffusion, you can play the Retracing of the Pass to restore more of your health. And then after that, you can clear the board with all of the, the, the other Rule and that you get. Speak like a <laughs> Yikes. Okay, that's the power of the Flame and Glass deck, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I like how Frost is still going at it after the game is finished. <laughs> after they've the, already won, the like, okay, done, basically. Like, we can still, we still could have done, like, this, this, and that, and, you know, this was mm -hmm. good, but this option was also available. Um, yeah, just, that's exactly what you want to see from a coach, just highlighting everything, uh, even when it doesn't necessarily matter anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah, just very, very solid coaching, I think. I was impressed by Frost coaching this round, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and Chu, for sure, like, did well with this very difficult deck. Absolutely. Absolutely. Seemed to intuitively knew, know what was going on, uh, even on the coach-muted turns, was playing the stuff that he should have played really uh, pretty flawlessly, with some interesting mm -hmm. twists of his own. Like, they clearly had his own design, I think, on turn five. He was doing kind of kind of doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I actually feel like uh, Shu kind of had some unfortunate luck with this tournament. In the first set, it was just like not a whole lot that he could do. And then in, even in this set, you know, the first win felt like kind of lucky, like not really lucky, <laughs> but like I felt like the deck worked one time in the entirety of today and it was this last <laughs> round and we got to see it right like yeah uh, so playing playing past that playing past that kind of lack of luck is uh, very important. And I'm glad that we at least got to see it work out once.
Okay, well, let's take a look at the scoreboard and see where we are so far. Brosimi is f at 40 points. Millie and Potwasher at 60. Ike, 60. And Shoe and Frost at 55. This is very, very close. Those mini games pack oh, a, no. a punch, don't they? Oh, no. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. We got to say this. If Ro Ro Team Brosimi beats Team Millie is smart, 2-0 it is a three-way tie for first place oh no and i don't we're know what the that. answer <laughs> no. is to that oh no no oh, we're no we're not doing it if 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 millie is <laughs> no. if millie is smart can take one single game one single game then they win that's all they have to do they don't need to win the set they just need to win the game <laughs> wow that's tense that's an that's an intense competition everyone's doing great today Mm -hmm. how, how did the, the the points end up so even there we, we gave away like so many multitudes of like four points and two points and <laughs> somehow that we're at like potentially like we're at like 40 60 60 55 like how, yeah that looks uh, rigged yeah, it's all it's the crazy. i've never seen it be this close before <laughs> um granted we've only had one other buddy system with points but um, <laughs> this is insane uh, we could not have scripted this any better um uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really crazy. The possibility of a three-way tie, and I mean, nothing against Shu and Frost too. Fifty-five points—that's nothing to scoff at either. They're right there, um, at their heels too. So, really, a crazy event we've had today. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Uh, man, okay. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know where this is. I don't know where this is gonna go. <laughs> like, I feel, I feel very tense now. Like all Do we over, even I just have, feel like attention, like. The, uh, like the contingencies for what happens if we have a three-way tie does oh, anyone even know what what's supposed to happen <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it's a vtuber battle royale i think at that point Isn't, yeah do you do we just flip the script and say in a three-way tie the lowest point yes team yes. takes the crap <laughs> that's it <laughs> yes. I, I vote for that i like that just because you, you manage to stand up from the crowd in some way <laughs> yeah totally it, by the way, so while, sudden death Oh my god. Oh, that's actually kind of a good idea. But that'd take a long time to set up. But I just want to, by the way, while we're waiting for this next match to get uh, set up, I want to give a shout out to all the like newer players who maybe aren't as familiar mm -hmm. to Shadowverse here, you know, who are maybe just fans of uh, Ninja Sanji EN and are maybe experiencing the game for the first time. You know, it's a uh, it's a really, really great time to get into the game. Uh, they're giving out 10 packs daily. It's the kind of like the usual anniversary uh, I would say event, which is a uh, an amazing thing, an amazing, amazing thing. And there's a ton of, of course, also just like in-game anniversary event type stuff. So it's uh, pretty much never been a better time to start the game now. And I know that's that's said a lot, but it really is true. And honestly, just in general, you know, I've been the uh, I've been the the buddy, quote unquote, on buddy system for a really long time. And I always say this: it is one of the uh, like easiest games to continue to just like you basically get everything if you play the game enough you get so much free stuff it's actually ridiculous like mm -hmm. i've never seen anything like that so uh if, you know just try the game it's free uh, i highly recommend it the community is amazing uh you know i'm not uh, endemic to the shadowverse community but they've always been extremely nice one of the like top three nicest communities i've ever seen everybody's super cool uh so yeah try it out that's that's my word on it yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, and the buddy system tournament is a great way to kind of like get into it. I, I honestly didn't play a whole lot. I mean, I played some Shadowverse, but I really didn't play a whole lot until Noir and I went uh, to the 2020 buddy system tournament. And now I'm, I, I, for lack of a better word, addicted. Like I just play all the time. Uh, granted, I'm like basically playing one deck into the ground, but uh, it is a, it's a fun game to play. It's, it's always changing right like it's always like the fact that the meta is always changing you always got to incorporate new strategies you've got to face off against different decks you can try different decks um different crafts different classes it's it's a ton of fun and like chef said the community is pretty awesome uh it's it's a really fun welcoming easygoing community everybody's just just like we have a whole tournament about people teaching other people how to play so it's it's awesome I, I recommend it to absolutely everybody which is fantastic so we are here in our uh last i'm i'm still nervous about this if this is going to become a, a, a three-way tie i think i think what we should do is we should give everybody uh we should mirror deck the uh the top the tier one deck that we gave the coaches and just make everybody play that 
<laughs> <laughs> and just see just see what happens. Oh no. Yeah, I think I think we can come up with something or I don't know, some kind of uh different mini game. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I keep actually looking to see if there's any ruling on what would happen if that happens, but uh, I don't see anything. Uh, but I, I mean, it's it's very possible. However, I mean, for that to happen again, we got you know we got to talk about it. Like Millie's team, Million Pot Washer would have to literally win nothing. They just need to win one single game, and of course, if they win two games, and that works as well, and they they kind of seemed unstoppable. Like there's yeah, a they chance that they, yeah, Are yeah, you trying like, to curse them already, Chef? Yeah, yeah, you know, maybe I want to see three way tie. <laughs> well, it's true. You're, you're you're saying that like a team that has lost nothing today has to win nothing for the rest of the for the day, and that's uh, mm. I don't know. Our well, casters that, have a lot of say in how games go. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, despite my that's despite my me cursing game. it. Despite me cursing it, I want to know you two's opinion. So we haven't seen this matchup yet. Oh, we've seen Sword versus Sword, and we've now seen Sword versus Shadow. But how about this current buff dragon against this current version of Sword, which is like a little bit of the faster version than we see off from uh, from Ike's team? Uh, wh- what do you think this matchup is as far as like favor? Like, is it going to be easy to just at least get one of the games in the set? Uh, I think this is a pretty even matchup, uh, all things mm-hmm. considered. One of the closest ones in the meta as a whole. Um, so on one hand, buff dragon, they just throw fat followers onto the board. Um, and at some point, they just hit critical mass and cause with the fear. And of course, sometimes Millie draws double oracle and just burns you to death. But on the other hand, sword just has a lot of combo damage with the Erica. They can just burst you out. Um, and dragon doesn't have much healing, so that could be a problem for them. Yeah, and the and you mentioned Erica, but the Killer Instincts is an extremely impactful card in this matchup. In some cases, um, mm-hmm. you can even keep an Erica in your opening hand. They're not gonna <laughs> choose to do that this time, but um, it's just super impactful. So, uh, oh, and yeah, Chef, you mentioned that uh, Millie's draws may be running out of steam, and it's. It's starting to look like that. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. We said well, that in the you, second you, game of the last yeah, set. You, you never, did say never that. Count, okay. count Millie out, or just you're, any you're Dragon right. main for that matter. Oracle right. could be there. We don't know yet. Yeah, uh, yeah a, a real Dragon player would draw Oracle on two, like right? Think. Right. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, she said it herself. Yeah, I she like likes how you think. think. Like how you think. <laughs> did, they, did they pass the on turn is, one? Yes, yeah. they did. Uh, ah, why not play the Prime? Ah, uh, yeah, so this is an interesting choice. So, yes, it does buff the deck right away, but we are playing against Rally Sword, so not getting the value uh-huh. from that board clear, that is a big deal. And plus, there's no guarantee right now that they're gonna have um, double buffs by, like, turn three or whatever either way. So mm-hmm. I think this is a smart choice to make from Millie and Potwasher. Uh, See, I they told you already... I don't play against anybody else's deck. I just play my deck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that's fine most of the time. No, I mean, um, that's, that's fair. I, it's, uh... Ooh. Okay. There's a double buff. That is a double no. buff. And they're going now the for... prime is worth considering. Right. Because, so you can, if you play the prime now, you can enhance the dragon's awakening, and then that would be your double buff. And then immediately after, it's going to draw two cards, and you're mm-hmm. going to be drawing potentially double buffed cards. So that's definitely something to look for here, especially because uh, Rosami passed turn one. It's okay that the Prime Conflagration isn't clearing anything, potentially. So um, but I wonder if they pass again. Oh. Not out of the question. Not out of the question, no. I, I'm tempted to play the Prime here because... Uh, oh, 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 interesting. Wow. Oh, okay. You're just getting the buff out of the way, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're just just going for the double buffs here because they have Angel's Blessing in hand, so that is a source of card draw. Um, As long as you can draw cards in some form, it's not too bad. Uh, Now, I actually kind of like this because the Enhanced Dragon Awakening is basically like a three-play point draw two, but since we're going first, um, it's a little bit difficult to use the Angel's Blessing until much later into the game. Uh, yes, we save Evos by not spending them, but right now we are looking like we might be playing like Dragoon on turn 5, like a 1-1 mm-hmm. Dragoon, so that doesn't save the Evo. <laughs> uh, wow! Okay, good call! Good call with the double 1 cost. Yeah, just... Um, yeah, really excellent. So that okay. that's pretty good. Um, His hand is coming and 
into fruition. For sure. mm -hmm. Yeah, Blazing Dragon Dude now already at a 1 6. Yeah, that was actually a super good call on turn 2. So, recognizing that you can uh, just get the two buffs right out of the way, and because like Angel's Blessing, no matter what, you can play that on turn 3 and have it function as, you know, that 3 cost draw 2, where you're not going to play it later on. So, very, very good awareness um, from Pot Washer and Millie there. Kind of wondering if you throw out a ding dong here for Rosemary and KSLVD. It's pretty hard to remove, aside right. from this. Well, is the, uh... well, well, against the normal buff dragon deck, it would be, but a uh, million pot washer play three ocean spirits. And that would be a really strong punish for the. Yeah, that that would oh, be yeah. real, real unfortunate for sure. <laughs> that would be, that would be um, sad yeah. But uh, this is like the classic anti spell boost play. The yeah. turn three going second. Bell Ringer Angel. Let's actually get a listen yeah. in on Rose Me in case OBD, see what they think. I think. He... Yeah, let's try playing one. <laughs> um, oh, that is exactly their sure. leader twice. No one gets past me. Then we go ahead and end the turn. Um, they need to have drawn an Ocean Spirit on um, <laughs> the start of their turn three. I guess they have four cards to draw her with. How did she? The beginning of turn, what was it? Oh, they said three. Okay. Well, that's not great for us actually because they draw two more and then they probably get an ocean spirit off of that. Mm -hmm. I feel like they would commit to it immediately if they had it. Uh, I bet that's <laughs> what they were hoping for too. Yeah. yeah yes, OVD with the, the cautious optimism there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but now Can confirming that there was no ocean spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we talk about how perfect that was, though? You were like, I want to see what KSLVD thinks. And then it literally it's opened like, up to you saying, think. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, I promise this is scripted, okay? Sometimes, <laughs> you know, great players think alike. Yeah. And that is a big ding dong. That's a lot. If I say so myself. Uh, <laughs> big 4 6 with the barrier still, drawing royal summons off the top. Uh, no Cat Admiral, but the board is already relatively full here. We can drop. Takitsumi here and have that be protected by the bell ringer. Push face for a lot of damage here. This is a really tough board to crack. No, he hasn't ramped yet. Yeah. Ocean Spirit still alive draw though. Double Ocean Spirit, pretty good too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is Ocean Spirit or bust. Oracle. Yeah, let's let's get a listen in because I think they have a lot of decisions to make here. I'm Okay, they're gonna be good. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think nice so. Nice for next turn if they make it. Um. I think we're probably just. Uh, Should we uh, do a <laughs> Celestial Dragoon then? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. We're definitely playing Celestial Dragoon. Okay. Okay. Evil. Yeah. What do we evil and do? Four six. Um. Uh. Wait. Wait. Let's play. Hmm. I wonder. Let's shoot the two two and then hit both into the zero two. Yeah. Wait, hit the two two. Yeah, shoot the two two and hit both into the zero two. Blessing be upon you. Okay. Maximum damage is two gonna two. be five, nine, ten, eleven. They're one off. <sighs> yeah, they're one off. Really bad. Oh, are they gonna be lethal then? You think you're gonna? Yeah, they're. Uh, I think we lose, but lose anyway. Hit. That's fine. Rosemi's pretty hot anyway. <sighs> I don't mind. <laughs> Shoot. Tashikaru. Shoot. Hold on. Yeah. You're so dazzling. Hmm. Yeah, they got it. Millie is impeccable. Millie's and Millie's yeah. cons are, are literally <laughs> the strongest thing on this universe. Yep. Um. This, this, is, this is an interesting turn for Sword. Their rally is close to seven, right? So this this is that Erica pattern that can be really strong, and I think they're thinking about it. Should we listen in on them too? It's really yeah. Let's try really to listen early, in. but yeah, let's listen in. Here's Val this turn. We would be one damage off of killing her. Yeah, oh, let's no, go ahead and play. The, yeah, let's play Musketeers Val, and we can pick um, Aramis and. Porthos, and then we're gonna evolve Porthos. Porthos is okay, just making sure your yep. names. <laughs> Can't wait 
Let's attack um, the 3-3 three -three with Armus. I'll take this one. Yeah. I have done the we can trade our 1-1 one -one into the 2... Or actually, no. We can trade Porthos into the 2-7. Um, and Where then attack the leader with everything. No one gets oh. me. Nice. So yeah, this is really strong. Is there any chance to come back from this? I don't know. Team uh, Millions. Oh. No. I was gonna no, say no, they're, they're dead to the Erica in hand. Like this Drac yeah. Evo yeah. clears, but it's not good enough. They don't heal at the same time. Right. Um so we we did mention the Erica setup, but uh Chaos of E knows that even if this all gets cleared by Drac, that means that their face is gonna be perfectly exposed to that Erica combo. They're at six HP now. Um, didn't even need the D'Artagnan to deal more damage because the Porthos is just extra safety. Not really necessary, oh my but... Jeez. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> that is like way, way over lethal. But will yeah. she be out? Will, gonna take will, this will she talk? Oh, let's see. So dazzling. We know Millie will. <laughs> Millie will. Oh, there we go. Oh, that wow. We haven't lost yet. I like the waiting? Uh, effect line here. We haven't lost yet. <laughs> it's so apt. <laughs> the long delay. Oh, just playing out things for fun. Okay, that's an excellent BM. Like big right? okay. Just play out your hand at when you've already shown lethal. That is truly like excellent BM. Should have evoed, but I'm uh, one slider away. Definitely evo for over lethal. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> you haven't even no, missed me so This is making me more nervous. I was like, oh god, what if I do? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> One more to go. <sighs> hey. uh, we're probably going to take it a little bit slower because of the coach you did on you did yeah. itself. Yeah. But the first game we went second, we won. So don't worry too much about it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> we're, uh... We're, we're one game away from a three-way tie here, <laughs> We're one game away from a catastrophe. We're or an or a miracle, catastrophe. depending on how you view that. <laughs> um, but, wow, like, uh, Chaos of D mentioned at the end, like, this is the first time that they went second, and they ended up winning mm -hmm. off of that. Uh, surprisingly, going second, actually pretty good for this aggro rally sword deck. Mm -hmm. um, because of those strong um, Evo turns, and because of setups like Bellringer on turn three, doesn't get cleared because like she just has that barrier really tough to deal with and then potentially evo face for a plus four damage those are really strong lines um against basically the whole board um but yeah just really <laughs> I, I can't believe like every team is going to end up going 2-2 at this rate <laughs> yeah. that's just so perfect <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my goodness there's a lot on the line in this last game and yeah the uh the ocean spirits it would have been really timely, but they didn't get. They just didn't they show didn't up. Make an appearance, yeah. Top, the top deck game was just not quite as strong. Let's see if we could do it again here. Oh, I'm nervous. Coaches, coaches muted. Oh my goodness. Well, with turn, which is turns. Honestly, though, both both players seemed really good at like the deck. They were like preemptively saying on both sides what they should do. Mm -hmm. They they just feel really comfortable in particular to me. Look at Absolutely. Oh, great hands from both These sides. These are both nice hands with sword going first. Yeah, okay. so I wonder how that one's going to go. We've seen uh, the do oh, better. Oh, there's the second. Ocean Spirit. Oh, <laughs> but, but it's a one <laughs> defense a Ocean play. Spirit. That's, that's still pretty good if you banish the Bumpkin. Yeah, you could rob the Bumpkin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still oh, I like that. how you phrased that. <laughs> rob the rob Bumpkin. The rob the Bumpkin. Yeah. I mean, it is an occupational hazard, one might say. Yes. <laughs> uh, where he's coming from. And, yeah. Uh, the Prime Con flag going second. Uh, definitely easier to use on curve. So. Let's see. Yeah. An interesting choice for Kezo, VD, and Rosami here. Um, I wonder how much they value having the guaranteed curve over having something that is a little bit more optimal. Um... And they are going to toss the Frenzy Core Master. They get a Leod in return. Leod can be very useful in this matchup just because uh, 
a dragon has minimal <laughs> healing, but... You can also be really awkward, because dragon's one of the better decks with random damage effects. So... Right. have, like, enough... Yeah. Um, yeah, so... And it's very oh. dangerous to play him I alongside, wanna... like, any attackable followers. But, let's get a listen in. Yeah. I think you're gonna say, on Chaos of the Animals Emmy here. Mm -hmm. They kept two. Right. Um... Yeah, I don't think that changes probably what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, like Ocean, so... Ocean Spirit is one that they usually don't want to keep. Um, so turn two possible possible plays. Pink one, um, Royal Sun. I think uh, Victorious Blader it would be an ideal turn two. Uh -huh, if I got um, it. I think I would also play Takatsumi if you draw it on turn two. Uh -huh. If I got the Cat um, Admiral, would would you go for that? Mm, no, so I don't pink. think so. So, right. if I don't get anything else, then the penguin and the royal summon, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's good. Here we go. Boom. Not get rid of Howdy, Shug. <laughs> end my turn. You're so dazzling. Oh. Thanks, hon. I, you know, I uh, I really like take how Castlevania brought up the uh, number of cards mulligan when thinking about the turn one play, and you mentioned that Ocean Spirit's not a likely keep. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, get there robbed. It is. Get robbed. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky, yeah. but I mean, he does make a valid point there. Like, the more cards that they're willing to keep, the less likely it is for them to have, like, some off kilter <laughs> counter to a your exact move. Um, yeah. But. As uh, they mentioned earlier, they are going to go for the the pen pen into the royal summons here, fetching a cat admiral. Yeah. Ooh, that's a nice top deck. Maybe not immediately this turn. Yeah. So I wonder um, if Potwasher gave Millie basically like the same lowdown of how she wants to use these one cost spells. Um, especially going second, it's really Ooh. good to... Huh. Oh, This is a really good line. Is she going to pitch the Whimsical Mermaid? I think that's what I would do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tosses wow. the Prime okay. oh, Conflagration. Oh, the, the Conflict. Okay, okay. Oh, huh. Unique plays. Yeah, that's not bad, though. Um, Conflict's kind of hard to fit into your future turns, so... Not a bad choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like the often sort of overlooked part of Buff Dragon is just choosing what to discard with Blazing Dragon Ute, because that can actually yeah. be like a really tough decision. Well, some, some, some players choose not to play that card at all. But <laughs> I, I, that's I, I, that's I, true. I would not be <laughs> home without him. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Have yeah. It in my deck. Uh, well, uh, that's fewer decisions <laughs> to make, so that is one up. <laughs> yeah, simplicity is how I need to play this game, or I don't play it at all. This, uh, <laughs> but that's, that lines up this great shield to be really powerful um, in terms of slowing down the board development for Millie and Pop You're so dazzling. <laughs> Thanks, hon. It could be a dazzling great shield for sure. Um, I don't imagine they're gonna. Or oh, they are mm -hmm. hovering the Liad. It is the possible. Liad is pretty intuitive, yeah. You don't see yeah. what your opponent discards, so. As far as I know, so yeah, that's uh, they don't have the info on random effects. But let it, let's get ready to You're listen so in dazzling. on Million Potwasher because so they have a lot of three drops, and they're going. This is the odd going to be the odd turn going mm -hmm. into. The Evo the day of reckoning is nigh. Ooh, Did I mess up? Oh, jeez. I think I think the last turn was pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I think I it was okay. Quickly. No yeah, worries. the one three is really good. Okay, okay, uh, okay, okay. Discard choice, like maybe Dragon's Awakening, might have been more accurate, but mm, mm, mm. yeah, I couldn't decide which one. Yeah, yeah, it was really close. She... Um, this turn definitely whimsical mermaid. Mm. Definitely, maybe. Okay, let's see the card. RNG! Is that uh, good? Prime Con Flag. Okay. Um, it's a card. <sighs> we need to get a draw in somewhere. Yeah, we'll trade okay. and then I guess trade the 
Next turn, probably trade onto the board. Wait, 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 wait! Don't, 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 don't end, don't end. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, do need to get the oracle down, but honestly, yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of bad. Uh, maybe, maybe it's Dragon's Awakening for three next turn. If you draw Dragoon, it's Dragoon plus Dragon Oracle, and it's like really nice. If you draw like Tropical Mermaid, probably Tropical Mermaid Evo plus Dragon Oracle, and it's really nice. But no, mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I'm not sure. I think most choices are okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Dragons or, or Prime Conflagration is indeed a card. Uh, yeah. yeah, I like how the uh, a pot highlighted that turn was actually pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was a good decision, certainly not to toss the Brutal Dragon here, because that is a vital component to actually winning the game eventually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, recognizing that one of those buffs was probably needed to go, because these stats playing out, like the Whimsical Mermaid uh, after the 1-3, like all of this definitely matters. Um, mm -hmm. to help contest the board and minimize the damage that you're uh, taking. Yeah. Covering the Great Shield. I think she might be Put trying to buff the uh, Ding Dong, but Great Shield can only buff Swordcraft followers. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly weird interaction. Okay, she said oh, I'm yeah. buffing having, the having some followers be neutral is, is a tough thing to get used to. I was going to ask yeah. Joe, have you ever tried playing a recorder in between your matches? Do you think that's a good strategy <laughs> with this deck? That's honestly the only way I play. Um... Ooh, Makes sense. Yeah, it won't the play The second that one. brutal. You do have the option to use a brutal here to remove the Liha, but I don't think that's I don't think that's that demands your attention yet. So. Uh yeah. I mean, it's not terrible. That's for sure. Um. Yeah. It is a little bit annoying to remove, depending on uh, what Rosemi has. Um, if they if do. You... Play uh, Musketeer, for example, they would have to like play Porthos specifically, or they would have to like do a mm -hmm. weird trade. I think yeah, this is okay. The... Evo the Brutal targeting Leon? Oh, yeah. this is a really good improvised play. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, and, didn't mention this, right? So. And she did play out the tankier one. There, um, yeah, that that's really important because having more than. Yeah, and it's gonna land for five damage. Oh, yeah, the, oh, Gino. Oh, no. Oh my god, oh, yeah, yeah. that Gino. Ooh. Random evolved follower, but there's only one evolved follower on the board. That's oh. pretty rough. Ouch. Yeah. I think this is a slam dunk decision. Play the Gino, quick later trade into the Blazing. You can even. Are you ready? I wonder if you like, even trade. Like, you can just like go face if you want, or just not play it yet. Well, you have to have a follower to... destroyed to give Gino Storm. Right, so. Oh, oh, right, right, right. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's been a long day. Also, this yeah. card out. Yeah. This card, dude, the last time I saw this card. Well, I mean, I, you see this card sometimes in this deck for sure, but oh, the last time I saw a lot of it. Was, like, point. I like that. Okay, saving the evil point is actually not even for next game. It's just for the next few turns, which is yeah, well, good. That, that, <laughs> blocking, that and blocking Angel's Blessing, right? When you're on the right, game, you're right. That's actually very important. I'm not sure uh, how much they talked about that, but that's a big deal for sure. Um, especially when you see Dragon being forced to consume an actual evil point on turn four. Um, mm -hmm. Not something that always happens because usually they'll have like Tropical Mermaid um, or the... Dragoon that just evos for free, but being forced to play the Brutal there, it is a strong play on board, but not only does it get cleared really easily by the Geno, um, Angel's Blessing is not going to be on the table even if they top deck it. All right, yeah, they serve it. Let's listen in on Million Potwasher again. Oh, their... <laughs> their streak is on the line. <laughs> <laughs> and top deck something really good maybe like what uh let's see let's see dragoon like celestial dragoon let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go, let's go. Let's so... go. evil right <laughs> yeah and then uh, uh three, five. yeah dragoon trade is fine 
Uh, yeah, dragon shoot, dragon trade. Five three. Yeah, yeah. Stop and... this. No. Next turn. Next turn is honestly kind of hard. Yeah, if they go like, if they make a really big board, you can play Drock. That's a panic right. button. But right. if they don't, another option's like. Uh, another option is maybe Oracle plus mm. Brutal Dragonu Evo, or like Oracle Brutal Dragonu plus two, or Drock, mm. or maybe start with Dragon's Awakening, and then play like whatever you draw. One of the do Evo you know? Cards, uh, like do you know what these nuts joke or do you know what these nuts? <laughs> Sorry, I was random. Just, just wondering if you know these nuts. Oh, he's muted already. <laughs> oh. How is it every time? How is what? it awesome? <laughs> every time? Does she does she know the mute timing that well? <laughs> I I don't think she knows. This is just Millie's natural form. Yeah, I think it's. <laughs> Maybe it's not timing. Maybe that's just how it is all the time. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, and Rosemary in a tough spot to do this. This match is getting into a really tense place. That that uh, Celestial Dragoon top deck it will really clutch. Um, wow. Probably one of the few followers that resolves that situation. Okay, Rosemi is definitely making a power play here with the uh, Musketeer's Vow into Bumpkin. Bumpkin being yeah. buffed by. And Ooh. oh! That's interesting! A unique Evo. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's actually not gonna full clear. Yeah, I, mean, I think Porthos is the slightly better Evo, but maybe this is okay? Oh, okay. What is Millie going to do here? She has a lot of options. Track is a clean clear. Yeah. <laughs> Evo, oh, right. guys. Pop the panic button. You're gonna yeah. Evo the Drock oh, to make sure you can damage. deal yeah, the 5 damage get here. World. Yeah, that is definitely the better way to spend that. And because there's 2 on his left on board, this is not even just a panic button. This is a this is an I win button. That's, yeah. that's solid. That's wow. a solid turn. Yeah, that's really yeah. strong. So now, uh, Sword is set to 6. Um, Brutal Dragon oh. plus Conflag would be lethal, but let's get a listen in on Rosemi and PSOVD. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 11. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we could do... This is kind of scary because we want to make a lot of wards, but we also want to clear the board. <laughs> yeah. um, we, If we evolve Cat Admiral, then we are going to be unable to... Um, well, actually, uh, we lose the damage from Cat Admiral if we do that, but... I think we have to do... Regardless, I think we're going to play at least one Takatsumi and one Cat Admiral, so we can start off that way. Okay, I'll Let's get this party started. Takatsumi. Play the Cat Admiral. Right. We're ready to sail. Um, so then I think we can evolve the Cat Admiral. Move them later. Then let's play the Hero of the Hunt on uh, the Drache. Um, then we're going to trade into him with the Cat Admiral. Unfortunately, we kind of have to do that just to survive. Um, if we draw Victorious Blader or Val, we're probably going to be playing one of those. Um, otherwise, if you, we draw Erica or like Erica plus like, um, if if you think that we can get lethal, we do go for mm -hmm. that, but if not, just try to survive and stay alive. Okay. Move out. Annihilate them. Oh. Another interesting... Do we just want to jump yeah. listen to it? So yeah, let's cool. just... So, Prime Conflag isn't going to do anything, but... Uh. Brutal Dragonu Evo, uh, shoot the 4-4, four four, 
And then you can either play Dragon Skull like, or Tropical Mermaid for one. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah, like, Brutal Dragon who evolve shoot 4-4. Four, four. Shoot 4-4? Four, four. No, no Evo? Uh, Evo shoot 4-4. Four, four. Evo shoot 4-4, four, four. okay. Yeah. And then either play Tropical Mermaid, one of the right two cards, and trade into Tropical the Tropical Mermaid, okay. Yeah. And then trade. And then go face. Nice job. Time. Yeah, that was really well Two. played. Mark. So you do play. Oh. Yeah, well played, well played. So that was really good. You played the okay. the high health. You played the high health uh, brutal dragonu and brutal dragonu Evo, and it really forced them into an uncomfortable turn for them. And they did have a pretty good out for it, oh, yeah. but it it really disrupted them. And it was the best play with that with that hand for sure. Uh, that was a difficult hand to navigate navigate through, and I think I uh, made the most of it. And it was it's really good. Yay! Okay. Lily is smart. Yeah, she is smart. <laughs> we got ourselves a game here. I think this is the first time we've gone to game three all day. It is. Yeah. All yeah. Day. I... All day. <sighs> I got ahead of myself. I was like, "Wait, is this over?" And I mean, I think they're locked in the lead for the for the uh, point total. But like, I mean, let's see the last game. Jeez. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to see it. Millie's yeah. playing yeah. real smart. Real smart. There's also, uh, you know, second place on the line because as oh, things currently is. stand, uh, we we could see if we see a Rosemi win, then that team will be tied for second place, mm. uh, I believe. But it's just even the the points from lo from winning one game and then losing the set are enough, I think, to mm -hmm. have pushed Millie's team into first place. But like I said, the, the placement still matters, so uh, I'm excited to see how this goes. Plus, I'm honestly just interested to see how this plays out because both of them still continue to be playing extremely yeah. well. Yeah, game three, like in a tournament setting, when you get to game three like this, it's it is so it is so tense <laughs> like, so i get to that bracket. a lot in uh in my in my uh matches and i'm just like oh my goodness no more bricks please <laughs> 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 yeah. things have to draw so well i think the uh, the sword the sword deck really kind of got jammed up with the double cat cat admiral double takatsumi there at the end not yeah. really many options to to clear out from there yeah, but credit where it's due. That I think that was the best line to give them the best odds of surviving. But two yes, different rush sure. top decks there. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, the top decking has remained strong. Mm -hmm. Well, we're one-one here for the last game of the day. Let's see how this goes. Rosemi versus Millie. Potwasher will draw oh, the first, go first card. The uh, mixed blessing in this match. Oh my goodness, what is this hand? <laughs> oh, Ouch. goodness. That, that is a milli hand. If this I is a, a consideration keeper. for a full keep. Yeah. Full keep, absolutely. <laughs> that's, a, that's an easy full keep. And, and going first? Dragon Oracle. Yeah, on that's that's really nasty. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's disgusting. That's so good. Oh, man. I mean... Uh, a few decent cards for Rosemi as well. Um, mm -hmm. Probably nothing you want to keep uh, too many of. I think you might keep one of like just the victory blader, just yeah. to have it be the two cost two rally. Um, but you're definitely really looking for something on turn one, something uh, that's a little bit more immediate than the Liad. Yeah. I don't know this this matchup very well from the sword side. Is Evo Liad on turn four a good consideration? Um, it's okay. Uh, it, it really does comes down to so like what you're seeing from the dragon side. Um, if they are playing more like on board rather than buffing, then the Liad is really strong. But if they're focusing more on the buffs and just like ramping, playing like ideal dragon craft, you know, then. The Liad is not really going to be super impactful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Wonder if Potwasher is going through all the scenarios. <laughs> I'm curious what other options there could be for, for turn two, yeah. turn two yeah. on this one. So, you throw that Oracle, yeah. right? I mean, like, what else? 
Well, sometimes you want to immediately play the Blazing Dragon Newt if you don't have a uh, 2 plus 2 play point play. Okay, Especially sure, with sure. the Con Flag in hand. The Con Flag in hand makes it so you can turn 3 Oracle Con Flag, and it's pretty reasonable. And the upside of playing the Blazing Dragon Newt is that your entire deck becomes plus 2 buff, which means Fair. like any Tropical Mermaids or um, the uh, Storm Dragon Newt card, right? Those become less bricky when you draw them that way. So that's the that is the big consideration. So okay, you can play fair. Oracle into 2 plus 2 then it's better, but if not, Blazing Dragon Youth becomes worth considering. Right. Um, as if you don't have, like, two buffs in your deck, like, every card you draw after that point, it's, like, a potential brick, right? If we were to draw, right. like, exactly a 3-2 Windswept, that's not good. Although we right, do have right. the Conflagration, so you it's still not a big deal. Pop it back in there. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely a few things we're considering for sure. A oh. bumpkin off the top again, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or Rosami. Uh-huh. And we've seen the Bellringer Angel do a lot of work going second. Um, but this time, the Blazing Dragon Oop plus the Conflagration will be able to handle some of the board. Uh, I wonder if we can get a listen in on Rosami in case somebody see how they Two. want to plan out this early game. Regardless mm-hmm. of what they do, is going to be Victorious Blader. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess the only other situa- the other situations to consider would be if we drew Penguin Guardian, Bumpkin Knight, or uh, I'm sorry, Bumpkin Recruit, or like another Brick Blader, whether we would do those options instead. Mm. Um, I think if it's another Bumpkin, we could do Bumpkin plus Quick Blader instead of Victorious Blader. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's like the Penguin? If it's then... a Penguin, I think we would do Victorious Blader instead. But, yeah. Um, if it's Takatsumi, I think we still play Victorious Blader. Uh, Blader, yeah. Cat Admiral yeah. still the Blader. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Um, any uh, questions? What could they or... play? What could they play? You know, yeah, what else question. could they like, um, possibly? So they got the one cost that does three damage to our uh, to a follower, a random follower. Mm-hmm. Um, ideally, we want to try to make them use it before we play our Leode. Um, right. So just having a bunch of followers in play is going to help us with that. Okay. Okay. Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. Wow, th- this is okay. just like a high volume of good cards. <laughs> I Okay, I actually kind of like blazing pitch the con flag here. Pitch the howling con flag. The Howling Con uh, flag, right? Yeah, I I agree with that. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, Nilly. Oh, she wait, she's no, she she got rid of oh, she pitched Rowan. <laughs> oh no, <I'm> personally <laughs> insulted. <laughs> oh no, what the heck, Millie? Oh, uh, I, I guess, you're not all that <laughs> I guess <laughs> defeat is an option. Yeah. <laughs> She said chaos is her middle name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean it's it's a good consideration oh. because every card and every other card in the hand is immediately playable. Mm-hmm. And uh Rowan um is a bit slower. But with only two Rowan in the deck, that is a hard call to make. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um yeah. <laughs> let's, I, I, let's, let's I'd actually get a listen yeah. right now and see how your reaction. Paul, I thought. <laughs> Maybe we play Blazing Dragonoid over Oracle. Really? <laughs> It's kind of, uh, mm, I think it's like prime conflag and then toss the howling conflagration with the wait, wait, dragon. Play prime conflag first. Prime conflag. Yeah. <laughs> nice mm-hmm. snipe and discard howling conflagration. Dragonu? Yeah, dragonu toss the howling. So, drop is oh punished. Huh? Oh, that's punished. Did we misplay? No, I, I, I it's my fault. What happened? Huh? No, it's uh, it's better to have more play points if you draw card draw. Mm. But if we're going tempo, okay, one three trade into the left. And yeah. next turn, this one? Uh, left, left, left. Okay. And I think we play Oracle for sure. Next turn. <sighs> yeah. Ah, uh, Dragon's Awakening anymore. Or Oracle. Play Oracle. Okay. Oh, that 
that is tough. Yeah, that Tricky. was a rough one for sure. Yeah, Tricky. Um, drawing the the card draw right off the bat, off the blazing, is definitely kind of unlucky because, like as Paul mentioned, like if you play the ramp first and then hit the card draw, that's ideal. But mm -hmm. it's obviously a little conflicting if you're going more for tempo. And then mm -hmm. you don't really have either like the followers to follow up, and then you have like this mismatch of card draw and undeveloped ramp. So yeah. a little bit awkward now. The next couple of turns for Millie. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I think stream chat's probably going to be raking them over the coals. But you know, if we had chat vision of our draws, then we could yeah. also I, I mean, have vision oracle. like the thing is, like I don't even think it was a bad play, like on either no, I turn. Don't well. Well, I mean, besides tossing Joe, I don't think that was advisable, but uh, that aside, like, the double blazing, I think was fine. It was just, like, a little yeah. unfortunate that it panned out this way. Um, mm -hmm. They're still in a decent spot, though. Like, certainly not out of it. Um, the Oracle is there, the card draw is there, and Drak is there as the panic button. But it's only going to be available as a panic button two turns from now if they play the Oracle which is a very tough call to make because our hand has nothing in it. But at the same time, uh, this Leod makes the drag potentially a little bit more attractive to play the Oracle on this turn, rather, mm -hmm. to avoid a complete blowout on the Evo turn. Yeah. And, uh, oh, another Blazing Dragon. Oh, oh wow, a Blazing Dragon. But, oh, that's so awkward, though, because it's if they play awkward. the Oracle, they can only discard Dragon's Awakening, and you don't really want to do that when your hand you size is small. No. And obviously, but, like, you can't toss the Drac either. Yeah. Oh, this? Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. Hey, oh my goodness. The <laughs> aggressive play. The aggressive play. Oh, it goes bad. Oh, bad that. <laughs> Okay, I mean, this could still turn out okay. It's, we are uh, really- this is Dragoncraft to the max right now, so... We've played like a million buffs, and we have no cards in our hand. We are literally just on full top deck mode from here on out. Mm -hmm. That is insanely stressful for game three, too, of our final game. Yeah. That's Millie style, though. I think I feel like that's, that's that, gonna that be is the, Millie, though. The that, that's definitely oh, Millie in character. Okay. What an aggressive okay. play. Oh, no! Oh, okay. oh no! Arg. Uh, all right. We lost. Not the not stats. quite getting the full stats there for the Bell Ringer Evo, but to be yeah. honest, like I wouldn't have, I would have just Evoed face with uh, something else anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Or even like a quick blader is not bad because the thing is, if they have drop, they're gonna clear anyway. If you evolve the Leod, right? Yeah. It's... Hmm. Some decisions. The Drak is really nice here. Drak is tempting. It is a little tempting, but the problem is that this is going into the Musketeer turn. Now the seven-seven Drak is still pretty good, though. Um, yeah. They could full. No, it's close to a full clear if they make the seven-seven Drak here, or the seven. Actually, it's a seven-five. I think they they do full clear. Yeah, they do full clear. So. Interesting decision. And then if they do get the full clear on the uh, Aramis Porthos turn, just hypothetically, because they don't actually have a Musketeer, but if they do, that would leave Millie in an awkward position with Rowan and Whimsical going into the seven playboy turn. Um, tough to know where to start out like that. And then you wouldn't actually have a reliable board clear, but they are going to go you, for this because- You Evo for the damage here. You can actually choose I, not I to would, Evo. I would Evo. That's just, yeah. but that's just me yeah. because I'm an idiot and I'm aggressive. But well, that's, well, I mean, I would. No, 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 no. Like, like, like our hand size is still pretty limited. We did draw the mermaid, which is nice, but I think this goes well with us having yeah. Rowan in our hand. Um, we do want to win sooner rather than later, mm. uh, just with every matchup that this deck plays. So I like this a lot. It's uh, okay. Good, 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 good. Like good. This is very good. Okay, so. Keeping the 7 HP on Drac is so vital here. Um, yeah. Just in case there was no Musketeer, because now it's actually not a clean full clear anymore. Uh -huh. I, yeah. I wonder if we should get a listen in on KSLBD and Rosemary. We can clear Drache if we go Takatsumi and then we play Octras to take um, Drache's effect. Uh, which effect is it? Would I give the rush? 
Well, then. Yeah, and it gives you a strike. So if we go ahead and play Takatsumi and then um, Octris, we can think about the next turn. Let's okay. get this party started. Um, and then make sure we target uh, Drache with her. This yep. And then we're gonna evolve her. Okay. Um, and then attack Drache with uh, Octris. So it'll leave a 1-1, one, one, I think, but that's okay. Um, and let's go ahead and fuse the Gilded Necklace with the Remnant of Hollowness for now. Um, if we play Musketeer's Vow, we'll probably... If we draw Musketeer's Vow, we'll probably use that and pick um, Aramis and Athos, the guy that heals, and ideally try trade against a follower that has 5 attack or less. Otherwise, um, otherwise um, just try to stay alive, I guess. Just do your best okay. to survive. <laughs> <laughs> huh. That was a pretty tricky play, though. The Octrice to Yeah, the that's a that. nice interaction. I'm actually really mm -hmm. glad we got to see this one in that matchup. Yeah. Um, the reverse board clear coming in. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Who's on her own for this turn with the card draw? Okay. All right. Prime Con flag is pretty nice here. I want to see the prime the second mermaid or plus the bludgeoner. the bludgeoner. I think you can bludgeoner. just slam Bludgeoner's the bludgeoner and have that just yeah. be an annoying wall to deal with. The three six, um, yeah. not gonna really be able to be cleared by anything as long as she doesn't evolve it. Yeah. Good turn. Nice. Wow. Solid turn. This game super tense. Wow, wow, wow. And this is another coach me to turn for Rosumi. Yeah. I wonder how she approaches this situation, because it's so... This is super tough, right? Um, There's only two cards in Millie's hand, uh, but that 4-7, staking on board, because there's there's like basically no way that we're clearing that, mm -hmm. uh, is going to contribute a lot. And, and if there is a Rowan, that's going to turn into 5 damage or potentially uh, 7 damage on board. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> it can get, yeah, if, but I mean, things can get out of hand really quickly. Uh, they have the information that Millie doesn't run Rock Whale, so that's one less thing that can kill them. Mm -hmm. You can never count out the, the top deck Windswept Dragon Ood. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Your power is mine. I'll be back for round two. The Remnant, uh, gonna do some damage there. Oh, this is so tough. It's like, none of these cards are very good at clearing the board or developing Rally. Like, these are all yeah. just, like, damage or, like, like offensively oriented cards. Yeah, We're finishers. On seven play points, maybe it's Octress and hope she gives you, like, a goblet? Just to heal? Oh, the Geno. Uh-oh. The Geno Evo into the 2-5, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Oh, the core master. Oh, the core master that's just doesn't go. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh no! That's, no! That's, no! that's awful. Oh, that's a bad day. Uh, well, that is a bad day. Crap. Let's let's just listen in. This is over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so really, so, uh, evolve and toss the whimsical mermaid. Evolve. Yeah, evolve on board. Whimsical. Yeah. You ever like? Your skull's gonna make a great hammer. You ever feel? Like, hmm? You ever feel like um, you know, like You're a plastic bag? Blowing in the wind. <laughs> I don't know the next one. Your baby, you're a firework. <laughs> See the next one. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Huh? You gotta sing the next song, right? Guys, yeah. da -da -da. oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on, come on. It just... Maybe win first? What? <laughs> can, you, can you play the card? Please? The card? <laughs> uh, Baby, you're a fire. So you do play the I may be bad at fluid, but at least I know how to play a card game. Yeah, <laughs> nice job. I honestly <laughs> think... You're... 
really skilled. Like, not even ironically. I think that was very skilled. Compliment uh, me more, Senpai! Yeah. And <laughs> it just, like, ended up playing around everything. And it was it's really good. Yeah, yeah. It, uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Marco. That's good. That's good. Great job! Woohoo! <laughs> wow! What a... <laughs> <laughs> what a finish! Give me her own coach. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> what a finish! Oh, my uh, they really got locked up there at the end of that match for sure. Uh, there was a lo there was a lot of ways, a lot of ways that that uh, the dragon deck could have killed him there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh! Every honestly, it's just kind of unbelievable. Like everything that went down. I mean, that does kind of confirm our winner. But I mean, like the the, the thing that Paul Washer said at the end was true. Like Paul, I'm, okay, I, I need to reiterate this, right? Paul Washer is not only one of the best players, you know, in the world with with a, a huge history of knowledge, but Paul Washer is also kind of brutally honest, right? Uh, we love Paul Washer <laughs> sure. here, but he he is like how Paul Washer would never tell somebody they're good if they're not good. Like mm -hmm. the the way that he said that, it's like okay, yeah, it's actually true. And uh, Millie's just sitting there like eating chips, playing playing a recorder, and like just <laughs> imp impressing the one of the, the the strongest players in the world. Like it's just. So some some uh, random day, you know. I it's I it's really completely unbelievable. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> Let's take a look and see how that uh, all turned out on the scoreboard. Rosemi, fifty points. Millie coming in at eighty. Ike at sixty, and Frosted Flames at fifty-five, making Millie Smart Potwasher said so our champion for the twenty twenty-two Buddy System tournament. I I was, you know, there was like this part of me that was really wanted to see the three-way tie. And then there was a, this part of me that was just terrified of like, I don't know, like a wormhole was going to open and, and, and bring us all out. Yeah, it's uh, honestly, uh, I said this before. Uh, honest, this is a true quote. I was talking to my friend, uh, shout out to my friend, uh, Sachi Teclis, uh, who is a huge Ninja Sachi Ian fan. And I, I'm the end of the man, I said, I'm, I'm kind of scared of Millie. I, I actually said that in a DM. And then I, I messaged I messaged them again just now, and I was like, I was right to fear Millie. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's the end. It's, it's been an incredible run. It has been an incredible run. Let's talk to the champions here like of the 2022 but buddy like, system. Not as bad as game two, but mm -hmm. yeah. And our hand is probably around six or something. I think Pot it was washer. slightly higher. In the but Pot's not it, done, Coach. It wasn't even close to, like, max power. Posh, the tournament's was, uh, over. Yeah. <laughs> I think your your plays made that hand stronger. Like, it, was, so it was great. Posh, washer, hello. We're, we're in Pot the interview here. Thank special. you for your coaching. Uh, oh. <laughs> Are we in the... Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, no. Um... Congratulations! Oh, 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 we won! Yay! You did! You actually won! You won the whole day! Oh, damn! Does that mean I'm smarter than my most Niji Sanji EN members? I think it certainly means you're smarter than the title of your team uh, would indicate. You shouldn't have doubted yourself. Pot Washer was uh, right. Uh, you're a Shadowverse genius. This is how this goes. Thank you. It was honestly like <laughs> such a privilege to work with Millie and like it's it's so like all the hands. I think the round one was kind of uh, not to be rude, but that was like just steamroller, top deck everything. But this second round, that was that was all on Millie, I think. And I I used to cast buddy system, so I know like whenever you come back in game two game three to take it back that shows so much and it just says like you're that much more skilled than your opponent like i i honestly think so it's uh that was that was all all on her like yeah that was that was really great well uh we, we were, i quoted you earlier 
Yeah. Hi, hi, Mills mom. Uh, no, so okay, pa, pa, I, I quoted you earlier. You put, you wrote in this document, right? You said, "quote unquote." Millie has already shown off her elite top deck skills during practice. I'm sure we'll get to see it again during the tournament, and we did. So that first game, we were making jokes because that's literally all you wrote, and that is exactly what happened. So I gotta ask you, Millie, what did you do? What were the steps that you took to top deck like a god? What's a top deck? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your draws were extremely lucky, extremely good. So, did you did you perform any sort of unholy ritual to gain that sort of luck for your draws in the very first game? Uh, no. Uh, honestly, I still don't know how I won. <laughs> yeah. I. <laughs> I'll completely be honest with you. It's just, you know, um. Plot washer was just like, okay, do this, 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 this after turn. I like, he's the one who keeps telling me that I always think ahead. So I just follow his um, his uh, advice. And honestly, he he deserves more credit than I do because I just do unga bunga here, and he just like teach me what to do, and I just follow. It. Well, I saw a lot of yeah. very impressive unga bunga on the coach muted turns. You were playing like a pro. I gotta say. Uh, you're playing the deck that I'm the most familiar with, and that I, I, I think you would have beaten the snot out of me. Uh, you really were making some very smart plays without Potwasher, uh, and some of them were in situations where he hadn't foreseen them to coach you through them. So you really did a fantastic job on those coach me to turns for sure. Oh my god, I'm getting shy with compliments. Thank you. <laughs> can, can I go now? No, no, don't, don't. No, no. <laughs> No, oh, no, don't be shy. Don't be shy. I'm you shy. won. This is your big Bro, moment. This is, this is it. This, this is, is your moment. Yeah. You get to brag now. Now you get to brag over, uh, uh, you know, all of your, your other energy Sanji EN friends and uh, say that you're the champion. You can't be shy. Plus, you got to, you know, rep your rep your stream, rep your all, all your fans here. Of course. Oh, oh yeah. Um, I, oh, yeah, you're right. Because well, um, I, I would like to thank everyone who watched today. I still don't know how I won, honestly, but like, <laughs> thank you for praying. I guess they, they were, I think the chat is chanting right now. So thank you for the chant that gave me strength. They're not a cult, though. Yeah, not thank you for the clap. For Absolutely 100% not a cult. We just want to establish that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want the fame Seriously, anymore. though, you're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your your play was amazing, and we we all just want to make sure that you know that. But uh, congratulations again! Congratulations! Thank you so much for joining us. Great job! Fantastic job! Both you and Potwasher killed it today. Fantastic! Thank you. I had fun. Thank I you. had so much fun. Good. That's what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. I can't believe after all that, after all that, you know, honestly, I uh, I wonder, I wonder. <laughs> How much Millie knew that she was she was uh, getting listened in on during those turns? I know, <laughs> right? It's so funny after that whole yeah, after the entire atmosphere from before to be like, oh no, I won. What do I say? You know, it's like that's actually super oh, funny. She crushed um, it. I'm telling you, it's a big hustle. She's just telling everybody she's not good, and then she came in and cleaned house. Cleaned house. I, how, it has how, to be. It has to be. That play was too good. Yeah. How appropriate is it for you know the. Uh, the winner to be the dragon player in the group is saying that she had a lot of fun. Like, it just encompasses, you know, the uh, oh yeah, maybe another <laughs> shadow burst media right here. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that, that's exactly. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's good, though. That's what this is all about, right? It's all about the fun. And I'm really honestly glad that uh, Millie enjoyed herself. I hope all the other players enjoyed themselves, too. Uh, I know I certainly had a lot of fun just, like, watching them all be themselves and try out Shadowverse and honestly just seeing how smart they all were. Uh, for the fact that they really didn't get to practice all that much with their coaches mm -hmm. or beforehand, uh, I think that really we had quality players today because just like Paul Washer said uh, there have been a pretty wide variety I think of skill levels and like p players uh, attention to detail and attempts to actually play the game seriously and I feel like we got some really really high quality players with all the Nijisanji EN players yeah absolutely and that being said let's bring them all back in and say goodbye and thank you what a great day we had today in buddy system hey hey everybody welcome back Hello. 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 I won, guys. Take that. <laughs> if you didn't know that, it's really won. You already yeah, DM'd me smart. enough during our match. You don't have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs>
Did you guys have a good time? Oh, Was it a good time in the buddy system? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We had fun. I, we had fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was such a experience that I never think I'd, I'd experience, and I'm very happy to be part of it. We're yeah, happy. I think I, the highlight of my day was listening to you said. guys lose your minds during the team uh, the team battle. 4v4. Four <laughs> four four. Oh, highlight yeah, of my day, fun. absolutely. That was yeah. super fun. Uh, Loki, <laughs> yeah. Loki a little like, I don't think there was anything Loki about, about it, but it was, it was great. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. But yeah, I'd have to make sure you didn't get too unhinged there <laughs> no i think you were the perfect the perfect level of unhinged oh, yeah. we also wanted to say thank awesome. you to your coaches they did a fantastic job uh getting you guys ready for the tournament and coaching you through it um it seemed like you each had your own great level of rapport with them so uh thank you to the coaches and thank you guys for for coming mm. thank you thank you for having thank us you. Yeah, also thank, thank you, so you for thank um you. host uh thank you for how, what do you casting? What do you say that? Casting. Casting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for casting as well. Like your commentaries yeah. are really fun to listen to, and when we were not playing, it was really fun to just like see you guys analyze all the cards and stuff. So thank you so much for entertaining. Uh, yeah. Oh no, it was it was all of our pleasure. Our but pleasure. Before for sure. we go, uh, let's just each one of you, if you could just kind of tell us uh, in order, like where we can find you, mm -hmm. you know, where we can find you on social, and of course your stream. Uh, let's start with Rosemi. Um. So yeah, I have a Twitter. You can follow me, Rosemi underscore Lovelock on Twitter. Um. Of course, I also stream on youtube almost every day so if you're interested please check it out and subscribe i'd really appreciate it all right and millie our champion oh hi um i'm also Hello. on twitter <laughs> i'm also on twitter and i also have a youtube channel um i'll be very happy if you subscribe not just to me but everyone else on niji sanji and including Ike and shoot. That is all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a kind one. Sharing all right, the love. Uh, well, uh, just like the others, you can find me on Twitter at Ike underscore Eveland. And you can also find me on YouTube. I stream pretty much every day uh, as well. I have a day off every now and again. And uh, also subscribe to Shuya Mino. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh only Speaking of. Passing it around. Oh, but yes. Similarly <laughs> as everybody shoot. else. Um, you could check out uh, all of us on YouTube. I think our our channels are actually like in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, but also, I do have a Twitter, uh, Shu underscore Yamino. You could see whatever I'm thinking throughout the day in my tweets if you want to check that out as well. <laughs> all right. Well, excellent. Okay. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Thank you guys for thank coming. You. It was great to meet you. You all did amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for inviting thank us you, in yeah. Body System. It was such a fun, fun, fun time. We really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a so really, did we. Um, unique and really fun opportunity. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you, guys. Yep. Well, we're at that time, aren't we, guys? <laughs> yeah, it's we're been close a to long it. day, but that yeah. was... Uh, honestly, I've been involved with Body System uh, since it first started uh, back in 2019 and it's I mean it's always a great time but I feel like this one it really had just like a different level in terms of like the player uh, interactions that like they're already friends you know they already know each other um, and the level of play you know for a tournament like this was actually really high it was really good for uh, way better than I expected and of course you know, I just love that 4v4 team battle as well. Just so many highlights Fantastic. today. Um, definitely uh, really setting the bar high for next time. Yeah. And yeah, I mean... Gotcha. I, I mentioned it before, but uh, like I think the fact that they all know each other, that's we've never been able to get that before, right? Mm -hmm. And they're also that like level of knowing each other where they're they're friends who love to troll each other, and I think that's perfect. It, it, and plus, like you said, yeah, like ev everybody took it seriously. Everybody was surprisingly good. I still think, I mean, we all agree, right? Millie was scamming everybody, saying that she <laughs> yeah. doesn't know anything, doesn't know how to play card games. Yeah, that was I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it's a hustle. Yeah, it's a hustle. It worked. It worked. It did work. She crushed it. Yeah. 
All right, so I think we actually have the trailer for the newest expansion coming up, uh, in case any of you haven't seen it. It's just a release, I think, just a few days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited for this next set. <laughs> Joe, did you voice this? <laughs> I, I did. Uh, <laughs> they were playing it during, the, during the, the, the break, and like I, I, I saw this trailer, and then I came back and I saw Dawn of Calamity, which I also did, and I was like, what are you guys doing? Are you just playing stuff that... The, but I had gotten up in between. They were playing all the trailers which noir educated me so but yes i did in fact voice this trailer oh yeah and we actually talked about this so i actually haven't seen this i know it came oh, out right? the live wow. chef yeah. tears heaven quakes before its ruler calamity incarnate Catastrophe reborn. The end is nigh, but not inevitable. So stand proud, and we will weather this storm. Shed your tears, bear your blade, and don the hero's mantle. Your legend begins. Now make the world listen! The Godworm dictates creation and destruction. But we determine our destinies! The Hobbit, Supreme Dragon. No longer shall you desecrate our home! Roar of the God War. The call. Okay, to- there we have it. Oh, look, look Listen, they cool, they heard you enough, all right, Joe. Yeah, you I know. did not talk for the they next like, like minute and a half no, just to even it out. I'm out. I'm pulling. I'm pulling the ejection <laughs> handles. That's it for me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You you, you voice too much stuff, and uh, it's uh, it's great to to have you here. I was really happy to to have you here today. You know, it was it's fun. It's fun. I I love. Shadowverse, like I, I really, it was like, this was like the first game I booked in LA, period. Like I don't, I had like just landed and then was in the booth for this. I mean, maybe like three months later. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, a fun, fun ride. I am still looking for my original Rowan audition because it was German accented. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they asked for it. But uh, they asked. Uh, it was written in the specs that they wanted German, so I did it. And then, thankfully, when we got to the session, they were like, "No, oh, let's not do that German accent for this one." We're like, "All right, cool." <laughs> I wonder if they were going so, for like a Germanic legend, you know, dragon slaying hero kind of. Uh, I don't know. Kind of, I, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna find the auditions someday, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll tweet it or something like that. But uh, uh-huh. yeah, it's it's been awesome to be a part of the Shadowverse community. The buddy system tournament's awesome. You guys are, are your level of like skill and attentiveness to this game is is absolutely mind boggling. So it was great to have you guys here, kind of given the the skinny on on really like I feel like you have every card in this game m- memorized and how you should use it. It's just it's it's mind boggling. It's great. It's been awful, awesome to have you guys here. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's such a cool event, and I, I love just how much stuff there is for Shadowverse. You know, like like I said, the community is great, and there it's it's so cool to have events that are, uh, you know, like the the buddy system to go along with. Uh, like stuff like the Shadowverse Open, right? That's a little bit more serious. And uh, it's it's kind of this this like wide variety of stuff, which you don't always get in like card games. So I'm, I'm always, of course, a really big fan of it. And uh, also, I mean, you know, we, we didn't mention this as much as maybe we could have, but, you know, it's the sixth anniversary. We saw yeah. the event earlier uh, for the, you know, all the free packs every single time. I got to remind everybody again, you know, please, uh, please try the game. This is the perfect time to do it. But this is the sixth anniversary of Shadowverse. It feels like it, it's been only uh, a, a few, I don't know, months since the Shadowverse started. I remember it very fondly <laughs> at the very beginning uh, playing, uh, oh my gosh, game it was called. But 
of course, it is an anniversary, so there's got to be an anniversary stream. And look at those handsome gentlemen, Igni and Different Fight. You, of course, can check out the anniversary stream. It is going to be at SVO Esports on Twitch, SVO underscore Esports. Uh, and all the times are right there. Of course, it's a million different time zones because it's a pretty international uh, game, right? I mean, actually, I think uh, Different Fight's in Japan now, and Igni is, uh, I mean, it's all over the world, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody's all over the world for Shadowverse, but that's what's so sick about it. Yeah, uh, that sounds like an awesome. I cannot believe it's been six years. Like every time someone says sixth anniversary, I'm like, no, no, this is like we're like two years in here. Are you kidding me? It's it has been a a, a wild, awesome ride. Well, yeah, guys, so- uh, we've reached that time. We've reached that time where it's time to say goodbye. It has been a, a fantastic day. Uh, I want to hear you guys activate your last word effects. Noir, <laughs> what you got to say? Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy, just the lengths that we've come, just as a, a game, as an esport, as a community. Uh, six years now, uh, Shadowverse has been around, and with events like these that, like, really, like, I can't stress this enough, like, what other games are doing things like Buddy System? Like, it, it doesn't happen anywhere else, right? Um, so Shadowverse, like, it really is special in that regard. Um, and it's been, like, a big part of my life. It's been a part, big part of, like, I think most of your lives as well. Uh, it's just really fun to celebrate it like this and with, you know, the amazing DG Sanji cast, no less. Yeah, fantastic. Zones. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably like the biggest newcomer to the uh, being involved with the game and or production here. And it's like, I just feel blown away by it, having the opportunity to work with such wonderful talent, both, you know, you guys and the DG Sanji crew and mm-hmm. the coaches, you know, don't forget them, right? So everyone involved in the show, uh, super just like blown away by, uh, I think I said that twice now, but like, just, it's, it's, it's incredible to have this opportunity. And so thanks to the community, Psy Games, um, and the entire team here for making it possible. Absolutely. Chef, what are your thoughts? Well, I what just got to say, here? always, always my thoughts are that I'm so happy to be doing anything with Shadowverse. You know, I really just love it and the community so much. But also, I mean, I got to give a huge shout out to every single person who made this event possible. I really want to, like, nail down the fact that this is a ridiculously tough uh, event to coordinate and run. To have, we had a point where there was literally 13 different people all speaking, all on camera, or like, uh, well, some on camera, some not on camera, but all with open mics at the same time. To coordinate that level of uh, anything is ridiculous. So huge shout out to production, huge shout out to the side games for having this uh huge shout outs and to, to all the players and everybody watching of course because without you it wouldn't be possible uh this is just an incredible feat of fun at the end of the day and that's what it's about definitely that's exactly what it's about well i've got one more winner here that we need to give away some promo cards for all day you guys have been tweeting hashtag sv buddy system the last set of shadowverse promo cards goes to visual sadie congratulations visual sadie you get some very very cool artwork on some very very cool looking cards thanks for sticking with us all day guys it has been an absolute pleasure to share this four box with you thank you to side games thank you to the production team thank you to tempo i mean we're doing we're all doing this remote chef mentioned like the, the 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 technological feat that this required is monumental and you guys at home you saw none of it because they did a great job so thanks guys for coming around thanks for hanging out this is shadowverse buddy system 2022 thanks everyone <laughs>